been organized to mark the Golden Jubilee Year celebrations. Once again, I extend a very warm welcome to all our online guests, Dr. Sri Nivasa Varkedi, the inaugurator of this conference, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Gondwana University, Gadchiruli. Our chief guest, Dr. Avad Kishor Roy, he's from Bhupendra Narayan Mandal University, Madhepur Bihar. Our another guest of honor, Dr. Sanjay Thakre. I wholeheartedly welcome him. He's the Joint Secretary, Higher Education, Nagpur Division, Nagpur. Dr. Suresh Revatkar, Dean, Faculty of Science and Technology, Godwana University, Gadchiroli. Our another guest of honor, Dr. G. F. Surya, Dean Faculty of Commerce and Management, Gondwana University. Along with, we have Dr. Karnungo, Dr. D.K. Kavgate, and all those who have participated in the e-conference, I extend my wholehearted warm welcome to all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a gracious moment, a glorious moment, as you are connected to this conference at Dr. Ambedkar College, we are, which has a glorious past. This is a Diksha Bhumi premises visited in 1956 and initiated the Buddhism to lack of people. Today, we are feel very blessed to be the part of this holy Diksha Bhumi, where lakhs of people visit every year on Dhamma Chakra Anu Pravartan Day. Now, it's my pleasure and great privilege to invite our convener and principal of this college to deliver his introductory speech. Please, Dr. Rajesh Daigaukar, I invite you to deliver your introductory talk. Very good morning to one and all present here. First of all, I pay my obeisance to Lord Gautam Buddha and I pay my deep respect to Bharatna Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Honorable Arun Gotekar, Chairperson of the Inauguration Ceremony and the President of Dr. Ambedkar Memorial Society, Chandrapur. Honorable Srinivas Varkhedi, Vice Chancellor of Kavi Kulguru Sanskrit University, Ramtek and Gondwana University, Gadchiroli, is the inaugurator of this conference. Dr. Avad Kishore Rai, Vice Chancellor, Bhupendra Narayan Mandal University, Madhepur, Bihar, is the chief guest of this inauguration ceremony. Our guest of honor, Dr. Sanjay Thakre, Joint Director of Higher Education, Nagpur Division, Nagpur. Honorable uh, Dr. Suresh Revatkar, Dean, Faculty of Science and Technology, Gondwana University. Dr. G.F. Surya, Dean, Faculty of Commerce and Management. Dr. Amrut Lanje, sir, Organizing Secretary of this conference. Our special invite is Dr. D.K. Kapkadi, renowned paleo botanist, J.M. Patil College, Bhandara. Dr. Nikhil Kanungo, PG Autonomous College, Chindwada, MP. All eminent invited guests, invited resource persons, distinguished scholars and academicians, all the participants. First of all, I welcome you all to this international e-conference. I feel very proud to announce that Dr. Ambedkar College of Art, Commerce and Science is celebrating the Golden Jubilee this year. And this conference is organized as a part of the celebration. Our college was established in the year 1970. In the last 50 years, the college has achieved significant progress. The founder president of the institution, Barrister Rajabhav Khobragade, the deputy chairman person of Rajya Sabha, had a vision to educate the mass of underprivileged, downtrodden sections of the society. And he successfully carried out the, that mission till the last breath of his life. Since 1990, Honorable Arunji Ghotekar is carrying forward this mission as the president of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Memorial Society. The college has multi-faculty having PG, uh, 15 PG courses, 
currently the college as center of higher learning and research in the seven subjects the college was reaccredited with b double plus grade by the nac in the year 2017 today our college is known as one of the premier institutions of higher learning in gondwana university gadchiroli ladies and gentlemen our college has a glorious past the premises is known as diksha bhumi dr baba saheb ambedkar visited this place in the 16th of october 1956 and since then lack of buddhist visit this holy place every year the theme of conference interdisciplinary innovations in socio economic environment biodiversity conservation through sustainable development is very relevant in this context of today's rapidly changing climatic conditions consumption and distribution of natural resources all of us realize that there is a great need to conserve our biodiversity i hope this conference will provide a platform for researchers to disseminate their ideas and create awareness and addresses the latest trends in socio economic environmental studies and promote the sustainable development of biodiversity through its conservation i am happy to learn that the conference has attracted a large number of research scholars academicians i am confident that the distinguished resource persons of the conference would definitely bring advanced knowledge in the field of socio economic environmental studies and biodiversity conservation i express my heartfelt gratitude to all the dignitaries resource person distinguished scholars and academicians for their support and cooperation my special thanks to dr sivan manchester keynote speaker he has already submitted his presentation before the conference or during the conference and honorable dr srinivas avarkhedi vice chan gondwana university dr avad kishore rai vice chancellor bhupendra nayar mandal university madhepur bihar as a convener of the conference i extend my warm greeting to one and all present here and on virtual part platform i wish all the participant stimulating discussions and here i conclude my introductory speech thank you very much one and all thank you one and all thank you thank you very much sir thank you very much it is my proud privilege and honor now to invite honorable vice chancellor of godwana university dr srinivasa varkedi to have his views on our conference and formally inaugurate this conference over to you sir very warm welcome to you thank you please have your view on this conference i pay my respects and heartfelt regards to great son of our country our pride bharat ratna dr b r ambedkar baba saheb ambedkar who is the architect of this country on the eve of golden jubilee celebrations of celebration of dr ambedkar college of arts and science and commerce chandrapur the college is international conference on biodiversity diversity conservation through sustainable development i am happy to be part of this grand program while congratulating the management of the college and the fact my beloved faculty members i declare this conference inaugurated respected chairperson of the session honorable arun ji ghotekar 
प्रेसिडेंट डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अम्बेडकर मेमोरियल सोसाइटी चंद्रपुर चीफ गेस्ट ऑफ द प्रोग्राम डॉक्टर अवध किशोर राय ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर ऑफ भूपेंद्र नारायण मंडल यूनिवर्सिटी माधेपुर बिहार गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर डॉक्टर संजय ठाकरे जॉइंट डायरेक्टर हायर एजुकेशन नागपुर की नोट स्पीकर डॉक्टर स्टीवन मैंचेस्टर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ फ्लोरिडा यूएसए एंड ऑल माय एक्सपर्ट कलीग्स who are participating in this international event and deans principals faculty members and students i appreciate the efforts of principal of the college dr rajesh devankar devankar and dr lanjin ranjewar the convener of the program for organizing an e conference on such a very very important and relevant topic today india is changing the world has faced great challenges i think in the past 100 years we never ever experienced such a pandemic situation where whole world was caught into captivated into home the world became jail and people could not move out the experience of such pandemic situation is very new to this generation and this generation the newer generation fourth coming generation has to enjoy its due its peaceful life and a life without any challenges like this the topic of the day encompasses all such issues of course dr baba saheb ambedkar has laid down the foundation for these all issues he was an economist he was a sociologist he was a an expert of law international law and the constitution he has developed for india takes care of all these different issues of socio economic biodiversity challenges including sustainable development today we are talking sustainable development but what is development ultimately the development is not that just increase of gdp against the gdp of the entire world our economic study modern economic study may tell us that this growth of the gdp growth of the gdp may indicate the development of a nation no dr Ambe dr baba saheb ambedkar preached us informed us with a new definition unless and until the last person of this country very much unprivileged member of this society will enjoy his due we cannot say that our nation is a developed nation that means the growth of gdp is not really the development indicator of the development the real indicator of development is due distribution of resources and 
the uh, uh, the economic uh, conditions and opportunities given to each one of us is it is only the real indicator of development so today we are just discussing about the distribution one side and social upliftment on another side and we are discussing the problems we are not keeping the future in our mind india as a nation has so many resources and opportunities we need to change the change the narrative i really insist all of you to deliberate upon these problems these issues and sustainable development keeping the re, our region in central point our region gadchiroli and chandrapur have got a unique uh, unique kind of nature and we have great resources within our vicinity we never ever tried to explore the opportunities within the region for the sustainable development of the region we may have so many theories we may have international acclaimed theories for sustainable development and economic development but my repeat and request to the international internationally reputed scholars and professors to look into the local problems today the college dr ambedkar college of arts and science and commerce is situated in chandrapur and the primary responsibility of our college and our university is to look into the local problems and if at all we try to use the indigenous knowledge and wisdom which is available in our tribal community in our local farmers which is very very important to resolve the issues with the biodiversity conservation we need to look into that we need to bring them to the we need to bring them to the international uh, dais international stages international uh, level community so that is our responsibility as i told we need to change the narrative so we always say that these regions are underdeveloped or underdeveloped regions what is the development just construction of roads construction of bridges bringing uh, airports and bringing the facilities that are available in mumbai and pune or delhi no chandrapur and gadchiroli have their own unique nature we need to identify them and change the narrative we are equally rich we are equally rich to contribute to the world with this change of perception we can really contribute to the world in a great level uh, today dr baba saheb ambedkar college of arts science and commerce is celebrating its 50th year of establishment i uh, congratulate the management and other authorities members of the trust for creating an educational environment a wonderful place of learning in the uh, gondwana in the uh, uh, under the um, vicinity of gondwana university the university will uh, really support all your programs i also wish to offer you that there are good number of programs 
that are planned as part of 10th year celebration of Gondwana University, I, on behalf of the university, will offer you some sort of funds for taking a project on the socio-economic development and on the same topic and uh, this can be project of community project. Students must be involved. The brilliant students can be part of this program. Then we can really give a direction to the students. And I assure you, these funds will be given to the college as a token of respect to your uh, um, contribution to the field of education. I respect, I request Honorable President of the college to accept my offer and, uh, and the principal to execute such project uh, on behalf of the college and university will support this program. With these words, I uh, thank the international scholars, welcome them, and I also welcome Honorable Vice Chancellor of uh, uh, Bhupendranath uh, University, Bihar, for uh, joining us online and uh, for their presence. Thank you very much. Namaskar, one and all. Sir, you have to formally inaugurate the conference. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yes, Thank you very much, I, sir. I, uh, at the outset itself, I, I declared the, that this conference is inaugurated. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you yes. very much. Thank you very much, sir. Next, I would like to invite Honorable Joint Director, Higher Education, Nagpur Division, Nagpur, to deliver his speech. He has already got connected with us, but for a few minutes before, maybe he has call or anything else. Sir, if you are online, please, I request you to come up and deliver your speech. Joint Director, Higher Education, Nagpur Division, Dr. Sanjay Thakri. Okay. Next, I would like to invite Dr. Rajesh Daigaukar to felicitate the chairperson of this inaugural ceremony of this conference. Okay, okay. Before this, I invite So our chief guest also, Avad Kishore Rai, is unable to connect us along with Joint Director. Now I would like to felicitate Honorable D.K. Kapgate, sir, and Dr. Kanungo. I request Honorable Principal to please felicitate them with memento. हेलो हेलो यस ड्यू टू टेक्निकल ग्लीच द चीफ गेस्ट इज अनेबल टू कनेक्ट now i would like to felicitate dr mt sheka and on his behalf dr dk kapgate former professor and head will receive the memento at the hands of respectable principal dr rajesh daigavkar dr kapgate 
come up please yes it's a token of our respects for mt shake and on his behalf dr dk kapgate i request yes honorable chairperson and principal together felicitate yes dr dk kapgate is receiving now i would like to invite dr nikhil kanungo please come up on to the stage and i again request principal and chairperson to felicitate him with a memento dr nikhil kanungo from government pg autonomous college chindwada will be felicitated dr nikhil kanungo principal and convener of this conference felicitating him thank you now okay now again i would like to invite dr dk kapgate to come up onto the stage and he will be felicitated by the chairperson honorable arun ji goteka begins for him thank you thank you very much sir now i would like to invite the chairperson of today's inaugural ceremony of this conference to deliver his speech but before before that i request respectable principal dr rajesh daigaukar to felicitate him with a memento honorable chairperson the president of dr baba saheb ambedkar memorial society is receiving memento at the hands of principal thank you sir now i request all the dignitaries on the dais to formally release the conference proceeding the conference release will be soon formally released yes this is the conference proceedings yes and this is a formal release of this international e conference proceeding at the hands of honorable chairperson yes begins this is the formal release of our conference proceeding international interdisciplinary conference on interdisciplinary innovations in socio economic development biodiversity conservation biodiversity conservation through sustainable development now it's the time and my proud privilege to invite honorable president dr baba saheb ambedkar memorial society and the chairperson of this session please come up and deliver his speech dr ambedkar college is holding
International E-Conference. Sir, please come up. सर्वप्रथम तथागत भगवान बुद्ध आ महामानव डॉक्टर बाबा साहब हचार त्रिवार अभिवादन करतो आज आप महाविद्यालय आप महाविद्यालय सुवर्ण महोत्सवी वर्षानिमित्त आंतरराष्ट्रीय परिषदे आयोजन के लिए अनुषंगाने या परिषदेला उद्घाटक मनु गोंडवाणा विद्यापीठा सन्म्माय कुलगुरु डॉक्टर श्रीनिवास वरखेड़ी सर लाभले या परिषदेला प्रमुख अतिथि डॉक्टर अवध किशोर राय भूपेन्द्र नारायण मंडल विद्यापीठ माधेपुर बिहार तसेच या परिषदेला बीजभाषक डॉक्टर स्टीवन मैंचेस्टर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ फ्लोरिडा यू एस ए डॉक्टर रेवतकर डीन गोंडवाना विद्यापीठ गड़चिरोली डॉक्टर सूर्या डीन गोंडवाना विद्यापीठ गड़चिरोली डॉक्टर संजय ठाकरे सहसंचालक उच्च शिक्षण नागपुर विभाग नागपुर तसेच या आंतरराष्ट्रीय परिषदेला विविध विषया सखोल मार्गदर्शन करना सा डॉक्टर ए के श्रीवास्तव मजी शास्त्रज्ञ बीरबल सहानी इंस्टिट्यूट ऑफ फेलो साइंसेस लखनऊ डॉक्टर आशा गुप्ता मणिपुर यूनिवर्सिटी इम्पाल डॉक्टर एस डी बोंडे मजी वैज्ञानिक आगरकर रिसर्च इंस्टिट्यूट पुणे डॉक्टर धनंजय मोहबे नागपुर डॉक्टर सी मनोहराचारी उस्मानिया यूनिवर्सिटी हैदराबाद हे राहत या महाविद्यालय के प्राचार्य तथा आंतरराष्ट्रीय परिषदे समन्वयक डॉक्टर राजेश दहेगावकर या परिषदे कार्यकारी सचिव डॉक्टर अमृत लांजे या आभासी परिषदेत उपस्थित देशा विदेश प्राध्यापक व संशोधक विद्यार्थी या सर्वांचे भारतीय राज्य घटने के शिल्पकार महामानव डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर पदपर्शाने पवित्र या ऐतिहासिक चंद्रपूर दीक्षाभूमि अपना सर्वे मनपूर्वक स्वागत करता मला अतिशय आनंद होता है आमचे महाविद्यालय नेहमीच नाविपूर्ण विषया आंतरराष्ट्रीय राष्ट्रीय परिसंवाद चर्चा सत्रे आषदे आयोजन करीत परंतु या कोविड नाइनटीन का वाढ़ता प्रादुर्भाव लक्षा घेता हि आंतरराष्ट्रीय प्र परिषद आम्मी आभासी पद्धति ने घत आहोत महाविद्यालय पन्नास वर्ष पूर्ण जाए क्या पार्श्वभूमि ही परिषद होता है मला आशा है या परिषदे अनुषंगाने बदलत्या सामाजिक आर्थिक पर्यावरणा पार्श्वभूमि या परिषदे मधे सर्व अंगा विचार मंथन होविन्यपूर्ण से उपक्रम रा राबन सर्वांगीण विकासाच्या मध्यम जैव विविधते चे संगोपन करना की प्रेरणा मिले अभी अपेक्षा करू करो पुनश्च सर्वे स्वागत करून या आंतरराष्ट्रीय परिषदेला शुभेच्छा दी आराम घतो जय भीम जय भारत Thank you very much, sir. Now I would like to invite Dr. Sanjay Bale, sir, the Vice Principal of this college, to propose vote of thanks. Dr. Sanjay Bale.
Thank you, sir. A warm and graceful morning to our most valued guest, management committee, respected teachers, and dear participants, as well as one and all gathered over here. It's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. This conference is meant to disseminate the knowledge in the area of innovations in socio-economic, environment, biodiversity, conservation through sustainable development. I, on behalf of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Memorial Society and Dr. Ambedkar College Dikshabhumi Chandrapur, I extend a very hearty vote of thanks to the Honorable Chairperson of this occasion, of this function, our President Arunji Ghotekar Sahib, he trusts on us to organize the international e-conference. His company is the major sponsor to this event. He is a constant inspiration for all the activities in the college. I would also like to thank all the executive members of the society for their, for their contributions and guidance. I sincerely thank to our inaugurator, Honorable Vice Chancellor of the Gondwana University, Dr. Srinivasa Varkheti Sir, inaugurated this program. He is a person who speaks less and do many wonders. After having taken the reins of administration, the campus has achieved a new vigor and vitality. Sir, thanks for gracing your important works and sharing with us your findings and opinions today. Thank you very much, sir. I would like to thank the Chief Guest, Honorable Vice Chanc Chancellor of Bhupendra Narayan Mandal University, Madhepur, Dr. Avad Kishore Roy, for kindly accepting our invitation and gracing the inaugural function. I would like to thank the guest of honor, Honorable John, Joint Director, Dr. Sanjay Thakre, sir, Higher Education, Nagpur. Honorable Mohammed Rao Modak, Sahib, Secretary of the Society. Honorable Kunal Gotekar, Sahib, Joint Secretary of the Society. Respected Dr. Suresh Revatkar, Dean Faculty of Science and Technology of Gondwana University. Respected Principal Dr. G.F. Surya, Dean Faculty of Commerce and Management of Gondwana University, Garchiroli, for kindly accepting our invitations and gracing the inaugural functions. Thank you so much, sir. I am very much thankful to convener of the conference, Respected Principal Dr. Rajesh Daigaukar, sir, for continuous support and advices which have greatly helped towards the successful organization of this function. Whenever we contacted him for his functions of conference, he inspired us. Thank you very much, sir. I would like to thank the guest of honor, Dr. D.K. Kapgate, sir, professor and head of the Department of Botany, Botany Dr. Nikhil Konongo, sir, Government PG, Autonomous College of Chindwada, for kindly accepting our invitations and gracing the inaugural functions. I thank to all the Dean of Faculty of Gondwana University, Principal of the various colleges, and participants of this program for showing their interest in participating in this program. I sincerely thank to the members of the International and National Advisory Committee for their valuable suggestions. A big thanks to our friends and organizing secretary of this conference, Dr. Amrut Lange, sir, members of the local organizing committee, members of the joint organizing secretaries for their moral support and guidance. I am also thankful to Professor Bhalchandra Atkulwar, sir, for his efforts towards anchoring of the function, his own ideas and style of explanation of everything. Thank a lot to my colleagues, 
college administration in general for providing us with all possible logistic supports towards organizing this function. Thank a lot to one and all directly or indirectly involved in the inaugural functions. Once again, thank everyone whose contribution has made this program a successful. Thank you very much. Over to Professor Atkulwar, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's the time to go for our next segment of the program, that is keynote address. And for this, I would like to invite Dr. Stephen Manchester, Curator, Museum of National History, Gainesville, University of Florida, U.S. Dr. Stephen Manchester did MS Biology from Indiana University, Bloomington in 1979. He did his PhD in Paleobotany, Indiana University in 1981. He's an associate scientist, curator of fossil plants, Department of Geology and Botany, Indiana University. His major research interests are evolution and biogeographic history of extant flowering plant families in the Northern Hemisphere. He has published several articles, books. He has a research associationship to the University of California, Berkeley, Cleveland Museum of Natural History, Smithsonian Institution, Washington, D.C. He has participated in several symposia, conferences, organized field excursions, guided postdoctoral scholars, and he has been in recent services just as the president of International Organization of Paleobotany from 2016 to 2000, 2020. Foreign representative member, executive council, the Gondwana Geological Society, Nagpur, India, from March 2021, and he will remain there up to 2023. Dr. Stephen Manchester, I request you to deliver your keynote address. Over to you, sir. To discuss with you some of these amazingly well-preserved uh, Cretaceous fossil plants from central India, including the Chandrapur region, and uh, consider the biogeographic significance. Uh, let me begin with some acknowledgments. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. Um, Dr. Dahagan Kar, um, uh, I appreciate that invitation. And I acknowledge my collaborators. Um, Dr. Kapgadi has been especially helpful. And good morning. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. I'm Steve Manchester from the University of Florida in the United States, and I'd like to discuss with you some of these amazingly well-preserved uh, Cretaceous fossil plants from central India, including the Chandrapur region, and uh, consider the biogeographic significance. Uh, let me begin with some acknowledgments. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. Um, Dr. Dahagan Kar, um, uh, I appreciate that invitation. And I acknowledge my collaborators. Um, Dr. Kapgadi has been especially helpful, and uh, some of his former students, like uh, Chandra Kumar uh, Patil, here at your institution, um, Deepak Ramtiki, Bandana Samant, a palynologist, and uh, Selena Smith have all been very helpful. As you know, India has a an amazing tectonic history um, and biogeographically very interesting in that the continent, the subcontinent was once a part of Gondwana and uh, attached with Antarctica and uh, Australia. 
and moved steadily northward um, and eventually impacted Eurasia, became part of the Eurasian continent. During the late Cretaceous, uh, as, um, as seen in the lower diagram there, the continent was more or less uh, equatorial and included uh, um, interesting, uh, uh, was more or less equatorial and isolated from other um, land masses. So it's interesting to look at what fossils we provide, find preserved there. And the fossil localities, the ones I'll talk about are, uh, the fossils are coming from these sites that are figured in blue from the latest Cretaceous. They're mostly along the eastern edge of the main Deccan um, plateau of um, success, succession of basalts or traps that were extruded as lava flows uh, uh, in the late Cretaceous and early Cenozoic, 67 to 64 million years ago. The uh, chert is a silicified pond muck, you could think of it. It, it's, it forms very hard rocks that can be sliced open with diamond blades or cracked open with hammers to reveal the fossils that are inside. Uh, now we can also use micro CT scanning to have a look at the contents of these cherts uh, non-destructively. And from uh, these fossils, uh, there are various questions we can address. Like what were the uh, flora and fauna like uh, when India was isolated at that time? And what are the relationships uh, biogeographically with other land masses? What uh, attacks are shared in common? Uh, uh, can we validate some examples of uh, radiations that were came out of India? And the evolution may have begun in India and then uh, uh, subsequent radiations were into Eurasia. Uh, the fossils may help for understanding these patterns. What were the local climatic conditions at that time, at the time these fossils were deposited? Um, and how did these organisms uh, respond to climate change across the Cretaceous Cenozoic boundary? Well, the first step in uh, conducting biogeographic analyses is to identify the um, constituents of the flora. What are these uh, plants? And um, uh, once we have a sense of their relationships, we can look at where their, their relatives are, occur today uh, to give us some sense of biogeographic connections. Uh, we have relatively few that we have high confidence in the identification of modern families, and I'll go through some of those now. The palm family is well represented, and this um, that you see here, the globose fruit, about the size of your thumbnail, is... Um, uh, found in most of the Deccan um, Maastrichtian localities. It's, um, our phylogenetic analyses have placed it as a sister to um, Satranella and Bismarckia, both that are um, today living in Madagascar. So it's an interesting uh, relationship with, with uh, Madagascar. Uh, here's another uh, presumed palm. Uh, this, this is a well, one that uh, was described here locally from the Patan locality, but it's now known from uh, various um, sites in uh, the Deccan uh, paleobotanical sites. It has an opercular um, opening at one end. We don't know exactly where this fits among the palms, but uh, the research is, is still going on with this. There are other strange monocots. This is a trilocular or three-seated a uh, structure similar to a palm, and um, we find them in these elongate infructescences with multiple fruits, each having three locules. It's not like any living palm, and we don't know if it is a palm or an extinct, uh, another extinct group of monocots. Uh, very distinctive, and apparently this was uh, confined to India. Here's Momordio carpon. Uh, fruits of the ginger family with well-preserved seeds with embryos intact. And these seeds, here they've been um, digitally isolated from micro CT scans. So this seed here shown in the digital section is the same as what you see on the right here that's been reconstructed 
to show the surface, although the specimen remains buried inside the rock. Um, we do find these isolated seeds at most localities of the Deccan traps, uh, the Mestrithian ones. This uh, particular seed type was only recently published and recognized as a new genus um, that seems to have been endemic to central China. We don't have these kind of tabular seeds from either living today or um, found from other fossil localities, but it does have the opercular apex and uh, position of the embryo uh, corresponding to that um, of modern gingivaceae family, the gingers. The lily family has been recognized. Uh, we have another strange uh, genus of monocots here with globose heads and hexagonal fruits. And here you see an example on the left from, these are various sections from the Deccan localities. And what we thought this would turn out to be an extinct genus confined to, to India, but we actually found the identical genus present as a fossil in the Campanian Late Cretaceous of Mexico. That was a surprise. And so we have a disjunction between these two um, areas of North America and uh, the Indian land mass. And this suggests to us that this must have been more widespread uh, at one time. We just haven't found examples at other fossil sites. It's interesting that we've found the oldest known grapes or grape family by Tassie in India. And these are fossils of the fruits on the right. You can see the seeds intact within the fruits in those sections. There are five seeds in each fruit. And the seeds match uh, quite closely with those with these prominent ventral infolds that you see in various genera of modern Vitacity. And uh, so this is telling us that the grapes have an ancient fossil history in India. In fact, the oldest known fossils are Indian, and perhaps India was the source of the initial radiation in the family, or at least the southern hemisphere can be thought of as the source. And from India, they may have radiated out, and so the rest of the world may be able to thank India for uh, grapes. And sorry about the wine there, I know that's not permitted in Chandrapur. Uh, Harisocarpon is an example of Malvaceae family. So the Malvaceae were pretty uh, common and well represented in these beds. And here's another example, Dobrocarpon, that um, was originally published based on uh, nice, uh, nicely preserved sections and peels of the specimens. But we didn't have a 3D, uh, three-dimensional um, understanding of these fossils. We now have been able to isolate the three-dimensional capsules from the chert from using the um, micro CT scan x-ray data. So these are cross sections, digital cross sections through a fruit that you can see here and surface view and here made translucent to see the, a seed within each chamber. So the, the CT data is helping us in augmenting the information we got by other methods before. Here's an uh, extinct genus of the Lithraceae family and the Martales, quite common in these beds. Uh, here's the oldest known Philandaceae. It's a sister genus of the Euphorbiaceae. Um, and you can see two seeds within each of the three uh, vacuoles of this uh, fruit. That's a distinctive feature of Philandaceae. We are just now um, uh, working on U4BACE, or working on uh, presenting U4BACE uh, fruits and, and the intact seeds um, that were not recognized before. Here are modern uh, fruits by CT scan for comparison. And we recently recognized that the family Torricelliaceae has uh, representatives in these Deccan shirts. And these, this specimen here, and these across the top of the right panel, they are about two millimeters in length, and you can see there are two main seed chambers in each specimen, and there are also empty chambers um, uh, in the same specimens. They're very distinctive, 
but depending on the orientation of your section, you get, can see um, a different number of chambers and a different geometry. And this has led to different generic name assignments, but we now can tell by um, adjusting the plane of section in CT scan studies that all of these are really coming from the same um, same genus, same species, and the oldest name is Pantocarpon uh, by Kapgadi and colleagues. So these other names uh, need to go into synonymy. So um, despite the excellent preservation and distinctive morphology that we see in a lot of these, many of the specimens um, uh, remain difficult to place um, to the family level. Some of them were quite, are quite clearly monocots or particular clades of eudicots, but placing them uh, to a higher level is still difficult. That may be because of that many of them are representing clades that went extinct um, and we don't have close relatives today. Here's an example, uh, Saniocarpon, its affinities are still uncertain. I've shown this because we now have new um, three-dimensional reconstructions from micro CT scanning. This Bacato carpon was uh, common at many of these localities. It's also a very distinctive uh, fruit structure. These are about uh, half a centimeter in length. And here we're seeing for the first time the three-dimensional morphology um, as opposed to just sections that we get by fracturing the chert. And here you can see the different sections that you can get depending on the plane that you take through the orientation of the plane and the level of the plane on which these uh, specimens are sectioned when we use the digital method with CT scan data. Here's another um, extinct genus, Gaviola carpum. Um, I think Dr. Patil has been working on this. And here is uh, Cupria novoides, another example. Uh, part of the point here is that India has a, a rich history of biological diversity and, and botanical diversity that we're looking at here. And that uh, much of it, of what we're seeing, appears to be extinct at the generic level and some at the family level. Um, and that, those extinctions were not due to humans, <laughs> but we're now facing a situation where uh, with, with uh, climate change that uh, we are experiencing now, we have a chance to do something and maybe save some of the current biological diversity that was, is now um, at risk, uh, which is something to be discussed in this conference. Uh, here's uh, one other example, a wedge, what I call a wedge fruit. I think that these wedges were probably coming out of uh, a capsular fruit or schizocarpic fruit, with, and you could, from the geometry, you could guess this is a, my hypothetical reconstruction um, from the CT scan data that there would have been six of these per fruit, six of these wedges per fruit. We still don't know, but it looks like it could be a 4 bac So there are biogeographic scenarios that we can envision from this material. Uh, one of the patterns that it seems to be common is that we have dead-end lineages, uh, examples of, of uh, plants that uh, became extinct and did not spread to other continents as India uh, moved uh, forward and uh, merged with, with Eur Eurasia. We have a few examples of taxa that may have evolved in India or India plus other parts of the Southern Hemisphere that then radiated into Eurasia um, after the tectonic merger with Eurasia. And the grapes may be an example. We have some elements that show um, relationships with other Gondwanan land masses. Um, for example, Hyphene Karpan um, relates to Madagascar. So we can conclude by saying we have some biogeographically informative fossil plants, um, but many of the taxa still are in need of additional research to determine their affinities and then to look into the relationships uh, with other um, geographic areas. So far, we've seen that South America, uh, Mexico, Eurasia, Africa, and Australia all have examples of taxa that are closely related to 
these uh, Deccan uh, latest Cretaceous fossils. So there's no one single story to explain the relationships of all of these taxa. Thank you. And this is a picture from uh, my last visit to Chandrapur. I want to thank you for inviting me and taking me into the field where we were able to collect more of these great fossils. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your very valuable talk. And we definitely hope that the researchers will carry out their research work, getting inspiration from your talk. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the time for high tea. And after high tea, the next session, technical session one, begins sharply at 11 a.m. You are all requested to attend technical session one. And I invite you all for tea break. Hi, tea. You enjoy tea and be back by 11. Thank you. Thank you once again. They don't, sir.
I also offer, I am offered, I respect to the Vice Chancellor <coughs> Varkhati Sahar. Excuse me, sir. And sir, there is one instruction. Sir, excuse me. There is, you use it, sir. Then it will better sound. Which one? Use headphone, sir. Please use headphone, then it will sound better. Okay. And in the meantime, please uh, use uh, screen share. Screen share nahi hua hai. Sir, please carry on. No, screen is not sharing. The screen share is option okay, is sir. open. Please we can open. share our screen. Please share the screen. It is written now. You have disabled it. Sir, please carry on. No, no, that is there, but the screen share is not coming. I am thankful. I am very glad to see that uh, Professor Varkhati uh, Saab, Vice Chancellor Gondwana University and Madhepura University, Dr. Roy, they have all participated in the inaugural session. And our, uh, I uh, I am very glad the inaugural session was very nice. And now I will, uh, uh, Professor Manchester te Technical Session, and his lecture was also very good. And I, I am very much thankful to Dr. Rajesh Dahegaonkar, Principal of the Ambedkar Science, uh, um, Science College, Ambedkar Science College, Arts and Commerce, <coughs> for inviting me to deliver this lecture. Now I will uh, deliver my lecture. I request the organizers to share the screen because I am uh, from my side. I am, it is not sharing, and it is written that host disabled participant screen sharing. Make the screen sharing option. Okay, sir. Please go on. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now oh, you are the host, sir. Okay, okay. One minute. You can now you can share. Yes, I'm doing. Okay. Okay, sir. Please start. Is it uh, visible? Yes. Yes, sir. It is visible, visible, sir. Please start. Okay, I have chosen uh, this topic: re ecosystem restoration and biodiversity conservation. This is a very bad. Uh, this uh, ecosystem restoration is a very, very latest thinking of the UN, the United Nations also. And this year, uh, Environment Day function was also marked with the ecosystem restoration then as a topic and main theme of the eco <coughs> ecosystem restoration. A global undertaking means to repair billions of hectares of land greater than China or the USA to access the food, clean water and jobs, to rejuvenate plants and animals from the brink of extinction right from mountains to sea. Restoration boosts with small actions, growing trees, greening our cities, rewilding our gardens, or clean our trash alongside rivers and coasts. Now, everywhere you see the forest is being degraded, there are a forest, uh, there are forest, uh, fire is there, River is extremely polluted and flood situation is something very hard every time. Every year we face this flood situation. The situation is very bad in the Bombay and in Mumbai and even I have heard that in Nagpur area also uh, there are such uh, problems. And even uh, this epidemic also shows, uh, made us to think about there is something wrong with the ecosystem. And uh, this has been damaged uh, profusely for the last many years, and they, this has resulted in the so many problems, natural calamities. <coughs> so, in the... With this aim, on June 5th, 2021, World Environment Day, on the World Environment Day, the UN officially launched the 
UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration, which runs from 2021 to 2030, because we have seen, we have identified this time as humanity's last chance to prevent catastrophic climate change. This climate change and this is all catastrophism are in the nature has mainly due to the due to the bad or damaged or degraded ecosystem. <clears throat> Restoration, eh, it is a, now it is a global world, a globally rallying cry for everywhere, from government to corporations and citizens. We are also facing, because of this uh, degraded uh, problem, degraded unplanned development of urban urbanization, you can see in Chennai and Mumbai, these are all the result of the degradation of our system, our degradation of how to make the urbanization, how to pollute, how to check the ocean damage, ocean pollution, river pollution, and the irrespective growth of urbanization. That is the main thing which has been responsible. While a decade, we can think, although the UN has taken a 10 years, and we can think that this is a long time, but when we come to the matter of most in preventing catastrophic climate change and bending the curve on biodiversity, it is not much. The timeline also overlaps with the UN decade of action to achieve the sustainable development goals by 2030. Ecosystems are our lifeline. I think most of the uh, between now and 230, estimated to restore 350 million hectares of degraded terrestrial and aquatic system ecosystems to generate 9 trillion US dollar economy. And restoration may remove 13 to 26 gigatons of greenhouse gases. The economic benefits may exceed nine times the cost of investment, whereas inaction is at least three times more costly than ecosystem restoration. So we are, we, 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 we do the things, we are in a process of getting something good and we will, uh, we will be beneficial. <laughs> what is the ecosystem? An ecosystem consists of all the organisms living in a community as well as the abiotic factors with which they interact. Ecosystems range from a microcosm such as an aquarium to a large area such as a lake or forest. I think most of the students are here of the biological background and they know uh, this, what is the ecosystem. I will just briefly go about the uh, salient points. The ecosystem is the structural and functional unit of ecology where the living organisms interact with each other and the surrounding environment. In other words, an ecosystem is a chain of chain of interaction between organisms and their environment. The term ecosystem was first coined by A. G. Tansley, an English botanist in 1935. This is a very a, 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 a very good sketch to show you the way. Actually, I am uh, uh, during my MSc, I, I was a student of Professor R. Mishra, founder of the ecology in our country. And he, he, he has just given a very simple information. He, he, it is about the ecosystem. It is the functional unit of biosphere, where the interaction of biotic and abiotic factors take place. Biotic factors, everybody knows about the producer, primary consumer, secondary consumers, and tertiary consumers. And then there is a microorganism that is made the disintegration. These are the uh, our uh, this biotic chain. And in our biotic chain, you get the changes in the uh, 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 atmospheric changes and uh, like uh, all this light and uh, uh, <coughs> rays and all these things, they are all. And there is an integration of that. There are many types of uh, ecosystems like forest ecosystem, grassland ecosystem, tundra, desert, freshwater, and marine. These are the different, I have just given a photograph forest, this is a grass, and this is desert, this is a prairie, and this is a desert also mountainous and sea, ocean, and river, and all these things. 
down. Now, what is the ecological restoration? It is the process of assisting the recovery of an ecosystem that has been degraded, damaged, or destroyed. It is an intentional activity that initiates or accelerates an ecological pathway or trajectory through time towards a reference state. It is just, I have, I, I have also given the background also, this is the system to restore the degraded, damaged or destroyed ecosystems that we have to make it. <clears throat> now, what is the restoration ecology? It, it, it is a, actually the iterative process. It is a continuous process. It is not only once. But we have to be very alert. Always we have to be alert how the things are going on, why there is a blood, why there is a catastrophism. We have to all examine. We should examine pre-existing historic and current refresh conditions prior to designing the plan for how to uh, and developing a race to developing a race to of, and we should get permission to, to do the work. Implementing plan, although complex, that is hydrology soil and plant energy, we should make a perfect plan how to end there is an integrated plan we should develop and the monitoring of the sites should be very strict. Now, just an example to show degraded uh, ecosystems is resulted into this type of tracking. And uh, there are a lot of animals and uh, they are affected by this. Rates of destruction, just to show the havoc and catastrophism, over 4.7 billion hectares of forest and area larger than Denmark are lost every year. That's one football pitch every three seconds. Over half of the world's wetlands have disappeared in the last century. This is the ironic situation. And we have to do something for to overcome such type of catastrophism, such type of environmental and ecosystem degradation. The emergence of COVID, which we have very much faced and facing still, has also shown just how disastrous the consequence of ecosystem loss can be. By shrinking the area of natural habitat for animals, we have created ideal conditions for pathogens, including coronaviruses, to spread. <coughs> These are the different types of ecosystem. Okay. <coughs> and the damaged ecosystem, you can use the mountain, this is desert, this is a river, coast river area, this is the forest with the fire, and this is the see the conditions in our media. You can see such situation in uh, any city or metropolitan, you can see. And here also the all cutting of the forest uh, trees. These are the, here the seashore, seashore you can see, a very pathetic condition. If you go to the China or even in the Mumbai, you will find such type of very pathetic situation. Here you can see the oil spill. spill. It is ONGC. Uh, recently we have been also faced in Mumbai, ONGC uh, ship because of the, uh, of the damage. Oil has been spilled in the ocean, Bombay Ocean. These are the different this is a city. You can see a lot of traffic. This is from the Sikkim. This is the Chen uh, Chennai at the time during the time of uh, uh, flood situation. You will see the high rise building and the water is there already. And in the slum area developed, that has also created a habit in our urban life. And this is the traffic situation, how this wire uh, you can see. So no maintenance and nothing like this. All this shows about the conditions of the degradation or <coughs> of the ecotropical eco ecosystem. And how to do this? Ecosystem re re restoration, that is reclamation, that is the general process of repairing damaged ecosystems. If there is a water logging, you will just reclaim it and you can do something, put some sediments or something like that and you raise the, raise the level, you can do something like that. Restoration, that is a very important aspect. Rehabilitation. You, shift, you can shift the person from one place to another place. Replacement. No, uh, so far it is, there is no attempt to replace, to restore what was lost. Here we replace the original ecosystem with another one. Recovery or neglect. Here we allow nature to take its course. 
depend upon natural processes of seed dispersal and germination to start plants natural dispersal of animals to population area and there it should be an enhancement activity to design the improved ecosystem even if the change is fairly minimal at every level we have to design fresh design fresh condition and rivers and streams dryland and desert old agricultural field prairie and savannas and wetland forests they need special attention for the ecosystem for their restoration and what are the techniques which is it actually we there should be indigenous interventions we should uh, we can see in our country and now we in big cities and we see such type of things and disturbance regime should be understandable what are the damage and causing agent and planting native vegetation and removing invasive species as a botanist and as a biologist i would just suggest as a town planners and all the persons while by taking the forestation activities or something please be uh, be uh, prepared to put only native vegetation to spread the native vegetation to inculcate the habit of uh, planting the trees of native vegetation and invasive species outside species which has come to our country they should be avoided because that gives a different type of flavor here yeah. these are the uh, you can see one uh, just a photograph to show how the reclamation of the plants has been is on there there is 67% of percent of restoration projects are considered we cannot do 100% because of there are many limitations and all these things but if you are more than 60% project is perfect or undertaken that did we we can say we have reached and post after that we have the three the post project project appearance what how type what type of things to work and there should be a positive that is a very important aspect there should be a positive public opinion they should public should feel that they are living in a they have come to the new environment they have come to the new surroundings and they should feel happy and uh, their health conditions their uh, atmospheric condition is with, uh, good and 90% had measurable goals we fixed 90% goals but the success criteria but we should be happy with the 60% pre and post monitoring is efforts are lacking and at the moment but we should take all these things how uh, how the, the monitoring efforts will do the things i will come to, to this uh, the restoration of different types of people. i will just go to the i think uh, most of you must have understand how to the restoration of what is the restoration process i will just go to the different types of this uh, this is a forest this is a degraded forest where the tree and everything is removed they have to cut every time and now that has been restored this is the restored photograph that's a uh, when the farm far this is a farming farming house and here you can see that this was a very all everything was finished and they have it has been restored with a <coughs> similarly there was a, 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 a tree felling and all these things along the river that has a river was very very bad in condition that has been restored to this type of uh, plants and restored the now this is the the desertic condition and here also you can see the for uh, grassland and savannas you will be uh, these are the degraded portions now you can see there even the animals are coming uh, if when you degrade the thing when you maintain the things you get them. and this is a mountainous region here it was a barren a barren mountain low vegetation that has been restored as a very good but this type of activity i have come to know in dagaland they have done very good such type of uh, restoration ecosystem the mountainous ecosystem this is another this is a plateau type or something like, like that in nagpur you can see such thing 
that has been restored with the plant vegetation, very beautifully restored. Now this is a seed, Dugha seed. Earlier it was a very, very, very polluted and very damaged as a tree post to everyone. But that has been restored and there is a very good uh, 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 tourism also of the object. You can see here this part of the tree at the sea coast, at the uh, river coast, river canal has been just very good, very bad. Plantation has been divided. And in a uh, Urban area, I was telling you in Mumbai, Chennai or metropolitan cities, this is a havoc. Back every time you will, you will find there is a river full of uh, uh, filth and full of uh, uh, this uh, unnecessary material that has been kept, all polythene or something like that, which is full. And that has been restored very beautifully, a better, a beautifully here. That. <coughs> and it should be like this. Now, I am, I am sure your Chandrapur person have faced a lot of problems about the coal mining activities. And mining plantation, mining reclamation is a very difficult task, but very important in our Indian culture because we are using, we are using coal in many areas, even in the uh, West Bengal, Asansol area, and your uh, Chandrapur area. And this type of if reclamation is taken under this process, it will be a very super. Although they are doing a lot of work, I have come to know that water is sprinkling is there and every time they are making plantation drive and all these things and lot of situation, situation has greatly been improved. But still we look like this. And after reclamation, this mine structure should look like this mine area. And it is a very good, very plantation. Now, there are six basic steps, I will come to them. Set a goal first, and then determine a strategy and method, how, what to do and what to, what to actually should be taken, and remove the source of the image. First, we should check what is the source, why it is so, and then we should restore the physical environment, and restore the biota. Biota which has been finished because of this degradation should be restored, whether it is a plant or animal, it should be restored because in every area has a specific type of biota and they have the advantage over that area. And be patient, restoration takes time, yes. And now restoration serves as a rallying call for the protection and revival of ecosystems all around the world for the benefit of people and nature. Sir, excuse me, can it's you hear a, me? a very simple thing. Ecosystems are not only more complex, but than we think. Ecosystems are more complex than we can think. This quote is very, 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 I like it, and so I wanted to that I should share. I, <clears throat> now I will be coming to biodiversity conservation aspects and what are the biological, what are the official obligation India has made. And with this, before this, I would like to tell you, I have chosen two areas of Maharashtra region. One is the Chikhuldhara for ecosystem restoration purpose, and I am highly impressed with the Chikhuldhara uh, activities. They have done a lot of things. When I came here, I mean, when I visited Chikhuldhara in 1977, it was a, just a very casual uh, area. Just here, one is Sir, excuse me. Where, 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 that was the spot only. But now I have come to know, I will show the photograph. And now I visited but two, three times in the recent time. It's a very marvelous. That will, I will show uh, to the restoration process. Sir, I request you to sum up the session. I will be this. Sir, I request you to sum up the session. Okay. Now, there, there are many uh, legislations which we have, India has adopted. And now the, these are the uh, green cover of India, where the total forest cover is uh, 80.73 million hectares. And then these are the Karnataka, Andhra, and Kerala. They are the states showing the increase in forest area. And Madhya Pradesh is the most uh, uh, highly forested area. And there in India, we have the 102 par, uh, park, national park. 
520 wildlife sanctuaries, conservation reserves, 57. These are the different, uh, at the biosphere, we have bi very good biosphere reserves and Ramsar wetland, wetland area also that has also been protected. And there are 14,000 square meters were cleared over the last three years. The largest area was given. These are the forest land has been transferred time to time. We have also heard that uh, we have seen that every time, sometimes in the trees are given. Now I, I will come to this your Chikal Dhara area. I, I have seen personally from 77 to, till today that it has just a very good restoration activities has been taken place. And I think there is a, some nurseries also there. You can see. Somebody came to this and asked you what, uh, what is there in Chikal Dhara. Then the, the person who is sitting here, he said, Aap, aap, aap Chikal Dhara pahle aaye ka? To bolte, haan, aap pahle aaye hai. Tab wo pahle, he brings him, they, he brings him here. So Chikal Dhara is now a very beautiful place. These are beautiful roads. Forested area also has been improved. And this is a very good scenery also in the Chikal Dhara area. This is all recent built up, I think. This is an old structure has also been beautifully crafted, beautifully demonstrated, and beautifully vegetated, uh, maintained. And I, I have, I, I have given just photograph of this tourist is uh, Baglo. I am, I am sure it is there. Uh, it is from the Chikal Dhara. And near that, you get the very good uh, tiger results, male guard tiger results. That is a very, uh, you can see that there are lots of animals also there. They are preserved there. And now I will coming to, I, I, uh, I pay my respect to Vice Chancellor, Gondwana University, and I, with a uh, humble request, I will, I, I, being my paleobotist, I will just request him to take up this study, Varadham Forest Fossil Park in Chiracha area. In Chiracha also, I visited in 1977, and there are a lot of, they were not uh, under care. It was just uh, lying in on red road. These are the areas that have been now protected in the Badadham uh, Fossil Park. And there is an activity, outreach activities in Gondwana University also, where we can get, get this such type of work, conservation of the uh, plant uh, fossils and other things. And university, uh, Gondwana University has got that type of program. I will request Vice Chancellor Sahab to, if you have anything, you can just uh, take up this conservation of the fossil sites in the Sinocha Garchiroli area. Professor Dorlikar of the geology department, he has he is in my touch and I'm I am I think he will be this he will he is interested to be stored the geo heritage site in Sirocha under the guidance of the Gondwana University. Now this is a, that area and Garchiroli area, this is the border of the Maharashtra Chhattisgarh. Beautiful scenario you can see. Such type of things we are here in the in India and especially in Maharashtra. This in route in uh, river section and this is another thing. And, and uh, regarding that uh, uh, fossil park, I would like to tell that Babar Sheikh and Rusrat Sheikh, they are doing some work and they are collecting lot of fossils from that area and they have made some uh, uh, collection also. That should also be taken up and uh, if the uh, activity is being made. Thank you very much. And just uh, to show that Loris, this is a uh, uh, wild uh, this uh, endangered species. It was in the northeast interior part, but now they are visiting in Assam also. And this is owl. This is also very endangered owl species. Thank you very much. Now this is Hello. I am thankful to Rajesh Daigaukar, uh, Principal Ambedkar College of Art, Commerce and Science, Chandrapur, for inviting me to participate in the international uh, e-conference on interdisciplinary <laughs> environment, biodiversity, and development. And I am also thankful uh, to Bhagavad Ji uh, for deputing me uh, to act as a chairperson of the session where my life part 
delivered at top thank you so much and uh, i congratulate uh, you for uh, organizing such a uh, good conference in uh, these uh, uh, bad times thank you so much Any question or any observations? If you have anybody, okay, you, I will be happy to answer that. Okay, I am thankful to Chairperson Dr. Rashmi Srivastava Ramudacha informative talk. Now, what of thanks? I am very much grateful to Chairperson Dr. Rashmi Srivastava for giving her a valuable time. I offer my sincere thanks to Mr. Person Dr. Ashwini Kumar Srivastava to enlighten us with her talk, which gives us new direction to our study. At last, I am thankful to all the participants and person who directly or indirectly help us. Thank you. Next session starts without break and technical session two will be, two will be conducted by Dr. Vimal Lakne. May I request Madam to please start your session. Hello, hello. Very good morning to all. And warm welcome to this e-conference of Dr. Ambedkar College Chandrapur in technical session two. It is my great privilege and pleasure to welcome Honorable Dr. Nikhil Kanungesar, Chinwada MP, and Honorable Dr. Asha Gupta, ma'am. First of all, I express my sincere gratitude and pay homage to Lord Buddha and Bharatratna Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, myself, Dr. Vimal Dakne. We have two eminent personality with us, Honorable Dr. Nikhil Kanungesar, and Honorable Dr. Asha Gupta, ma'am. Welcome to both of you, sir. So physically present, Dr. Honorable Dr. Kanunge, sirs. It's my proud privilege to invite Honorable Chairman Dr. Nikhil Kanunge, sir. I would like to request I would like to request Dr. Sanjay Gauri, sir, to welcome the Honorable Dr. Uh, Nikhil Kanunge, sir, offering the bouquet. Let me introduce Dr. Honorable Kanunge, sir. It is my proud privilege to introduce Honorable Nikhil Kanunge, sir. It is a professor and head department of Botany, Government Autonomous PG College, Chinwara, MP. He has got Best Presentation Award in 2013. He is a member of Journal of Contemporary Sciences. He has published number of the research paper in national and international journal. The technical section two speakers, the speaker of the technical session two, Honorable Dr. Asha Gupta, ma'am. We are extremely fortunate to have an eminent resource person in our midst. Honorable Dr. Asha Gupta, ma'am, she is a renowned figure in the field of ecology. She is retired professor department of life science, Manipur University, Impal. She is a prolific writer with publication in journal of repute. She has awarded higher education fellowship 
from Ministry of Higher Education, USSR, and obtained DSc from Moscow University in 1990. She has visited Russia, Finland, France, Japan, Thailand, Italy, Australia on academic program. She is organized of many international and the national conference workshop repressure and the orientation course on environmental issue. She is an editor of 14 books and she published his editorial board of journal like Botanic and the Bioglobia. 17 research scholar got PhD under her supervision. Also, she is the author of the monograph of the Lemnaya in Lontic Environment of Manipur, Northeast India, published from Germany. She is a life member of the Indian Science Congress Association, International Society of Natural Scientists, and International Society of Ecology and Environment. Her name is notified in the Gazetteer of India as an expert, a state environmental appraisal committee from Manipur from the second term. She is a principal of investigator in different projects, funded by government of India, DST, DBT, and she was elected fellow of Asiatic Society, Kolkata in Science in 2018. Now, I would like to request Honorable Dr. Asha Gupta ma'am to deliver her presentation on her hot topic. Over to Madam. Over to Madam. Madam? Am I audible? Yes, yes. Madam is online join. Please present your presentation, madam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are audible. Okay. And my presentation of PPT will be presented by Anjali Moyang. Audible. It is there. The slides will be visible, uh, shown by Anjali Morangthim. Please see Anjali Morangthim. The slides PPT will be shown by her, presented by her. Organizer of International AA Conference on Interdisciplinary Innovation in Socioeconomic Environment, Biodiversity Conservation through Sustainable Development. I'm extremely happy to be with you this fine morning. Uh, uh, Honorable Chairperson, Dr. Nikhil Kanunbo, uh, anchor, Dr. Vimal Dakhane. I know her since long time. I was there for PhD viva of her in Nagpur University long time back and dear participants. Honorable, respected um, audience who are there. I can see so many. I cannot take the names and uh, I'm very fortunate to be among you this uh, day. Uh, we do reverence and regards to Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Bharat Ratna, Framer of Constitution. I will start my lecture. The title I have chosen is Biodiversity Conservation Sector Groves of Manipur. Uh, biodiversity conservation, something is already talked by our previous speaker, Professor Shivastav. We know the importance of biodiversity. And now uh, I, I will try to focus here that how the traditional institutions, how the traditional people, they are um, paying uh, attention to, they have paid attention to it, how it is important and their model can be followed elsewhere. And then uh, how we have linked the scientific aspect to the traditional aspect and we have known the scientific merit of it, which they are doing through their traditional base of conservation. So we know the biodiversity is the variety and variability among living organisms and ecological complexes. Can you see the slides? Hello? Are the slides visible? Yes, madam, yes. You are visible. Okay. Ah, yes, madam. Okay. So the variety and variability among living organisms and ecological complexes, this is biodiversity. It has different levels, we know. It is genetic diversity, species diversity, and ecosystem diversity or community diversity. It is a biodiversity science now. It is a multidisciplinary, which is getting input from evolutionary biology, taxonomy, genetics, ecology, and population biology. Next, this term was constituted by Walter Rosen in 1985. There is an international program of biodiversity. It is called Diversity 
and it was given under unesco it is international non government program where they have talked about objectives like discovering biodiversity predicting its changes assessing the impact of biodiversity changes on ecosystem functioning and services and developing science of conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity we are ma'am hello excuse Next. me ma'am sorry to interrupt but uh, can anyone give me the presentation rights to share the ppt madam your yeah, ppt uh, not visible here anjali, anjali is sharing hello anjali is sharing the slides anjali you are there yes ma'am i am there but i did not get the rights to share the ppt i'm not able to share the ppt allow her to share the ppt organizers please allow her to share the ppt anjali moring can please screen. please be allowed to share the ppt organizers anjali moring them be please allow to share the ppt dear organizers allow anjali to share her ppt hello 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 anjali hello, can you allow anjali to share the ppt anjali moring them is there to share the ppt please allow her sir wait for her to okay okay fine डॉक्टर श्रीवास्तव सर हेलो हाँ बोलिए सर वीडियो लिंक ला होस दिया तुम्हें वीडियो लिंक ला होस दिया मतलब होल्ड है इन्हें ऑर्गेनाइजर्स को होस्ट बनाने को बोलो ना अंजलि मैडम को अब देखिए ये बंद कर दिया हाँ बंद हो गया हाँ आप बंद करिए सर वो उनको शेयर करने को लगाएंगे ना अभी बंद कर दिया नाउ प्लीज शेयर मैडम पीपीटी अंजलि प्लीज शेयर पीपीटी स्टिल आई एम नॉट एबल टू शेयर मैम इट्स रिटर्न होस्ट डिसेबल पार्टिसिपेंट शेयर स्क्रीनिंग इट्स रिटर्न मैम नाउ ऑर्गेनाइजर्स हैज टू अलाउ फर्स्ट ऑप्शन लिंक इज टू मेक द होस्ट श्रीवास्तव सर हाँ बोलिए ऑर्गेनाइजर लिंक को आप होस्ट कीजिए होस्ट के एक्सेस आपके पास है आप उसको वीडियो लिंक को एक्सेस कीजिए कर दिया नो सर अभी भी आपके पास है एक्सेस वीडियो लिंक पे जाके राइट लिख कीजिए सर ये अच्छा रुकिए हाँ वीडियो सेटिंग यस सर वीडियो वीडियो सेटिंग पे करें सर पार्टिसिपेंट लिस्ट में फर्स्ट नेम वीडियो लिंक अच्छा पार्ट एक मिनट हाँ इनवाइट है इनवाइट इन ऑन द कल्चरल एक्टिविस्ट एंड uh philanthropist singh kirti and he said that the traditional aspect of conservation it has to be linked with system of knowledge practice and this slide next slide i will skip because here we are showing about the hot spots i will come to this forest types of manipur and india you see manipur has only 22390 square kilometer area but how many different type of forests are represented in this physiographic unit which has got a lot of hillocks uh, wetlands rivers And then the side here we are uh, having the uh, international border with Myanmar. Very very good thick forests are there. So next, 
the different forests they have got very specific elements which are there in them and then i will just skip these things the tropical wet evergreen forest tropical moist next tropical moist deciduous forest next subtropical pine forest next tropical dry deciduous forest next mountain wet temperate forest these are the major forests which are there and here the different elements which are there they are protected in different groups can you imagine the conservation which is there by the traditional communities where we know that the poor people they, they the onslaught is there on community because of the pressure because of the requirement of food fodder fuel etc but here in this grove these various elements they are protected because of the conservation ethos because of the ethos which is linked with the culture and therefore uh, they are protected over there now next here you see the map where you see small small flags these are showing the place where the groves are there here 364 groves are there in 364 villages and in the valley and here they are depicting which we have worked out they are depicting very typical germplasm when we are comparing the inventory from one group to the other the uh, the the combination is such that the uh, very less uh, similarity is found so the similarity coefficient uh, when we are worked out the similarity coefficient it is very less what does it indicate it indicates unique germplasm which is present in these groups next now we see here the some sites are there location is there now the dt is different in F, next site the dt is different the dt is different and they are next line double bonus theek hai ye room jaane pehle sunna ha parking ka kyu kar टाइम <laughs> and the community which is there they are there at different times okay. uh, they are uh, they are practicing this so the now kaisa hai matlab at different times right uh, practical exam submit ke liye kar lo we have na? complete the well, groups anjali madam function mute hai, all hai, the hai, participants hai, hai, hai. from your side someone is talking i mean online ko ha theek hai some is discussing kitna dur the ho hello Hello. Please discussion stop. Hello. 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 Anjali madam, please mute uh, hello? all participants yes, from yourself. Hello. Sorry ma'am. Mute your hello. participant. Apurile. From that side. From your side. Yes, request all the participant to. mute dear mics and then let's show the next slide hello anjali show the next slide well i will continue the we have compared the groves we have compared the groves with the uh, subtropical forests which are there in the region and what we are finding in these patches the trees per hectare they are almost comparable the basal area it is almost comparable the diversity index it is reaching about 3 which is considered very good very high soil type is sandy loam and loam soil nutrient storage up to 1 meter depth is uh, before this it is 18 ton 18.9 ton in another 33.5 ton Uh, the liter fall it is 6.61 ton and 6.34 ton in another row nutrient return it is 492.77 kg per hectare and then 446.6 what does this indicate it indicate that the traditional row they have protected and they have all the characteristics which are found in the intact forest system subtropical forest system in the manipur we have worked out the hydrological cycle and this table which is shown here it show the input output ratio what is input ratio what we are getting the nutrient from the precipitation what is the output ratio when the spring is spring water is checked and how the nutrient ratio is there so you see just for total nitrogen and phosphorus which are very important nutrient the value is more than 
what does it indicate it indicates the valuable nutrients are protected by the little soil system microbial system which is over there in that forest and therefore these conservation system they are suppose they can serve as a model for other parts of the world which are traditionally protected these are now simple uh, next these are simple simple uh, uh, constructions not very gorgeous structures next which are there very fast i will go next very uh, these are the uh, plants which are there medicinal next some important medicinal plants i am showing next come to socio cultural importance the plants which are of socio cultural importance a number of plants cynodon dactylon uh, dactinocalin egypticum even the fern is there um, the lycopodium phlegmeria and so on so forth so number of plants of socio cultural importance then let us see the myth taboos the people they believe that the gods i mean the in olden time it was believed that they are of very much significance and even the kings they used to travel 60 to 70 miles to seek the blessings of deity to the famous springs and tunnels at the hills plains and hilltop and oh taking still it is binding on the people uh, to the people on of these umang lies and the number which was earlier 16 and 7 of gods and goddesses it has spread to 364 because even the persons who have done good work for the society who have done knals and done good work uh, done good work they are uh, considered as a deity in the place we have we, uh, manipur is the inventor of polo we are also boasting as inventor of polo it is always winning uh, when the contents and contestants are there in different parts manipur is the uh, in assam the first club was formed uh, when the britishers had seen some young boys to play polo polo there over the small ponies and the small hockey stick so uh, the god is there who is inventor of polo and then there are uh, different deities which are there in different parts they are considered as the gods of direction and an uh, annual festival which is very important it, it is it is thinking that it keeps away illnesses and misfortune and this is considered with the evolution of universe how the culture believe that evolution of universe has taken place how the creation of earth has started how the human society has evolved and the different cultural social activities these are all depicted through a number of beautiful songs pictures etc uh, these are some of the uh, very fast anjali you pass on the animal species which are protected these are the groves where the taboos restrictions are there Uh, the groves where the tribal should also be present to show the coherence in the society the very uh, the traditional instrument pena should be played if the uh, if the uh, i mean the old branches uh, removed are destroyed then it is believed that the old person may die like that some taboos and avoidances are there which has kept protected very good flora and fauna in the region and then this this uh, any any belief is such that if anyone follows such type of uh violate such type of rest restriction he may die the okay. many many plants thorny plants sometimes it is not offered in some other places red lotus which is fruit is but so on so uh, forth uh, some sort of division uh, is seen uh, because of this so in different parts of groves different type of species are protected so uh different dry yielding plants fiber yielding plants and really very fast move oil yielding aromatic plants very uh, important medicinal plant fruit different type of fruit species they are there this is the structure which is there uh, of the grove the um, uh, traditional chinkaba that is the on the new year day people they uh, climb the hill top uh, have the flags uh, on the in the grove uh, i mean in the grove yes uh, you are seeing that But these are the beautiful colorful dances which are performed before the deities next please go on go on fast so uh, these you see the colorful red and black things which are there in these festival they are obtained from the traditional dye which is bixa oririna from the fruit of it red pulp is obtained red color is obtained from it it is made so these beautiful dances these things they are uh, evolving from that grove only and it is associated because with the that traditional belief so still they are protected so uh, because the time is short i will just skip all my other slides i and i will say that in order to uh, stop the germ plasm erosion which is taking place we have to protect our uh, heritage our natural uh, uh, capital which is biodiversity and we we should understand that this scientific aspect of preserving biodiversity it should be linked with the ecological function in terms of conservation and protection which is offered to valuable forest wealth 
it cannot be uh, interpreted in terms of western science but when we talk of value to it when we give economic value to the various utility point of view for various species we understand that how much big food security is there how much big environmental security is there how much big health security is there in these groves where the important germplasm is protected so neglecting this management is so system it will result only in weakening the sense of responsibility the community has owed since prehistoric time and accelerate the pace of internal degradation so the cultural knowledge and belief system it should be linked with the traditional management system in order to understand the conservation of whole range of biodiversity so i will just um, shorten the speech and then uh, this is the message that this model that where the traditional people they are conserving the biodiversity it should be followed elsewhere uh, we should respect our traditions we should respect our system because they have observed these things and they know the value of it so let us take this ecological ethos along with cul cultural ethos in the society and we will be able to protect this society uh, without even the legislation people will take on their own this conservation so with this word i will thank you this is the uh, endemic lily shirohi lily of manipur found only in manipur thank you so much thank you the organizers for giving me opportunity and uh, thankful to uh, professor uh, Rag rajesh dahi gaonkar for giving me this support thank you now i requested honorable dr nikhil kanungwa sir for technical session to to give your remarks about the session respected madam gupta we are really sorry for the inconvenience due to some unavoidable circumstances we are unable to hear you for some time respected madam has presented a beautiful scenario of yeah. conservation of sacred groups of manipur community oriented initiatives are very well explained by the madam because other honorable speakers are really ready with their presentations and due to lack of time the session is declared as over on behalf of dr ambedkar college chandrapur and organizing committee to extend really hearty vote of thanks to dr honorable kanunja sir he accept the chairmanship of this technical session to thank you sir and again to extend really hearty vote of thanks to honorable dr asha gupta madam speaker of the technical session to to her beautiful presentation on the topic of biodiversity conservation in sacred grove of manipur her presentation is definitely to enrich the knowledge of the participant madam really i enjoy your presentation and her presentation is very informative thank you madam thank you thank you thank you now i invite to respected dr gauri sir to hand over the mic for the next session anjali ma'am please uh, click the video link
now next session will be start at uh, 12:30 okay so please bear with sorry for inconvenience we are late by half an hour Uh, all the participants are requested to wait uh, for one two minutes. Uh, as soon as the uh, Professor Manohar Chari sir has joined, we will start the session. Uh, I request all the participants to be remain connected.
tiene, tiene, tiene. प्रोफेसर बहुत मनोहर चारी हेलो सर सर प्रोफेसर मनोहर चारी सर गूगल अकाउंट का चाहिए पर उसका कोई टेंशन नहीं ना प्रोफेसर प्रोफेसर मनोहर चारी सर प्लीज एडमिट यूर सेल्फ I can't. I can't. Oh, uh, even my link screen disabled. Yes, sir. Unmute. Unmute. Yes. Professor Professor Manohar Chari, sir, can I start the session? Can you hear me, sir? Hello. Professor Manohar Chari, sir, can you hear me? हेलो हेलो प्रोफेसर मनोहराचारी सर अनमिट यूर सेल्फ सर हेलो सर सर कैन यू हियर मी सर प्रोफेसर मनोहराचारी सर हेलो सर प्लीज स्पीक टू म्यूट बटन सर सर प्लीज स्पीक टू म्यूट बटन कैन आई ओके सर कैन आई स्टार्ट द सेशन सर यस प्लीज ओके ओके थैंक यू सर थैंक यू मैडम गुड आफ्टरनून एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर संजय गौरी Head and Assistant Professor in Department of Physics, Dr. Ambedkar College, Chandrapur. At the outset, I bow my head before the Lord Gautam Buddha and revolutionary stalwart Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. So, for this te uh, technical session, we have two eminent personalities. We have two eminent person personalities. One is. डॉक्टर काबगते सर एंड अनदर इज प्रोफेसर सी मनोहराचारी सर आई रिक्वेस्ट दी प्रोफे डॉक्टर डी के काबगते सर टू ऑक्युपाई द चेयर ऑफ दिस टेक्निकल सेशन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमिटी ऑफ डॉक्टर आंबेडकर कॉलेज of arts commerce and science chandrapur i welcome all of you in the international e conference on interdisciplinary innovation in socio economic environment biodiversity conservation through sustainable development we are now in the third technical session for this technical session we have two eminent personalities in this technical session one is honorable dr dk kapgate sir he is the chairperson of this technical session he is a retired professor from department of botany jm patel college bandara i would like to request honorable dr uh, dk kapgate sir to chair this technical session the another personality uh, another uh, eminent personality in the technical session is honorable professor c manohar acharya sir he is the speaker of this technical session i uh, i request dr vimar dakhne madam to welcome the uh, today's chairperson uh, dr dk kapdagate sir by offering the bouquet
Thank you, ma'am. I heartily welcome both of you, sir. It gives me an immense pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Honorable Professor C. Manohar Chari, sir. He is going to talk on the topic biology to biotechnology. He is a former professor and head department of botany, Usmania University, Hyderabad. He has served for 45 years as dean, principal, head, chairman, and director in Usmania University, Hyderabad. He also served as the vice chancellor of Oriental University, Indore. He has guided 50 students for the PhD and published 640 research papers in reputed national and international journals. He has also published the 30 books. Out of these 30 books, five books are published by Springer. He described the 20 new genera and 82 new species. He did his postdoctoral at UK with professor in USA and Germany. He got a DSc degree in 1999 from Mysore University, Mysore, Karnataka. He is a recipient of five national awards. They are Dr. E.K. Janki Amal National Award, J.C. Bose Award, Best Teacher Award, Outstanding Award, and Young Scientist Award. He served as a president of MSI, IDS, IBS, IMS, and MSI. Uh, he served as an expert for the UGC, DST, DBT, CSIR, TERI, ICAR, and UPSC. So these are the different uh, bodies on which he has served. His contributions are in biodiversity, taxonomy, conservation, biotechnology of microbes, fungi, and lichen. Presently, he is serving as uh, NASI senior scientist. This is all about the introduction of the speaker of this technical session. Now, I request Honorable Professor C. Manohar Chari, sir, to deliver his presentation on the topic biology to biotechnology. Over to you, sir. Over to you, sir, Professor Manohar Chari, sir. Hello. Sir, please mute, mute, unmute yourself. Professor Manohar Achari, sir, please unmute yourself. Is it okay if I see you? Is it okay, TG? Over to you, sir. Okay, sir, you are audible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. You are audible. Now it is okay, sir. Hello. Yes, screen is there. Ah, you are audible, sir. I am audible, but screen. Uh, ah, host disabled participant screen sharing. Bol ke likh diya na. Screen sharing. Host uh, screen sharing. So uh, all control it with you, sir. You can share uh, the screen from your side. Person you are trying to reach is unable to take your call from Please try later. Manadankar no nar ne control arda. Yeah. Host ever internet. Yeah, wo no. Tiye the wo aage chahi screen. Host disable yes sir. Unmute yourself, Anubhav. 
हेलो हाँ यस सर यस सर ये आपके पास होस्ट डिजेबल्ड से स्क्रीन शेयरिंग आ रहा है ना हेलो ऑल कंट्रोल विथ यू सर यू कैन शेयर दूर स्क्रीन यू कैन शेयर इट ओके अरे मौर्या चूड़ वाणी टेक्निकल <laughs> रा <laughs> 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 स्क्रीन शेयरिंग अच्छी हेलो सर यू कैन शेयर द स्क्रीन यस यस यू आर स्लाइड इज विजिबल सर यू आर पीपीट इज विजिबल सर प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर राजेश my academic friends dr gonde dr ashwini srivastava and uh, dr Ma madam also professor and all other colleagues of your department and uh, all the participants for having given me this tiny fungus an opportunity to talk to you on biology to biotechnology some of the glimpses now this is the topic which is relevant to everyone to all biology students and therefore i have chosen this particular one so biology all of you know that it deals with uh, life and its activities and uh, to talk about life it is referred as biological science it is the scientific study of uh, the structure the function growth origin evolution distribution and classification of all the living organisms besides that it also describes the organisms how they look both morphologically and as well as based on the molecular aspects also and their functions and how the species came into existence during the course of evolution and the interaction that they had with all other uh, organisms and as well as the environmental factors there are four important unifying principles from the which form the foundation for the modern biology they are cell theory evolution genetics and homeostasis now cell theory all of you know that it is a very important cell is the fundamental unit of the life evolution is a must for any organism from that of unicellular to multicellular including human beings and plants and then the gene the dna forms the basis for all these uh, unif uh, organisms and therefore we have to deal with all these unifying principles so homeostasis also now as far as the knowledge goes there is a common descendant 
and ancestor is there from which these organisms have arisen they that is there is there might have been a gene pool common gene pool for the uh, evolution of all these organisms so the life might have started around 3.5 or 4 billion years ago and the most important aspect for the life of any organism is the genetic code which gives the evidence in favor of the universal common descendant theory so now we have got four three groups of organisms one is bacteria and other is the archaea and the third one is the eukaryotes so these are the three groups of organisms now we have to depend upon this particular theory gene theory because the biological form and function which are created in this particular structure they are passed on from one generation to the other generation only by the genes so there are two um, natural selection theories one is darwinism and other is lamarckism so lamarckism deals with different organisms share this uh, same basic machinery that copies and transcribes the dna into proteins this is the modern approach that has been uh, given to to the understanding of lamarckism and for example bacteria with inserted human dna will definitely correctly yield the corresponding human protein so that is the recent trend in the molecular biology that has happened with reference to lamarckism and darwin all of you know that natural selection theory and therefore and genome deals with the total complement of the genes in an organism so this is the phylogenetic tree whose has uh, described this particular one and he has given that the common ancestor has given rise to bacteria archaea and eukaryota and different phyla are there under each heading under bacteria and archaea and eukaryota so the this is the hypothesis that has been proposed by carl wolf and based upon uh, that is rrna evolution to see exact relationship of these three of these three domains are still under debate and uh, uh, conclusions have not been reached because this is in the case of evolutionary process the things are entirely different so in the early 20th century mendel's work has given us lot of scope to understand the genetics and then later on thomas hunt morgan uh, along with his students laid the foundation for the understanding of population genetics and then came all the aspects have been covered by many of the geneticists and that comes under neo darwinism synthesis and that is the new science that has developed from that of the uh, mendel so new disciplines have rapidly developed because the wonderful material that has been created and the structure that has been proposed by watson and crick of the dna has given us lot of scope to understand molecular biology without dna there is no molecular biology so the establishment of central dogma and the cracking of the genetic code these are largely split between the organism and biology and so on and so forth and therefore dna forms the foundation for the life now in recent times two important fields have been uh, understood and created in other words in biology one is cellular biology and other one is molecular biology so by late 20th century new fields like genomics and proteomics now in this particular area at the end of this particular 20th century metabolomics also i come into existence so these are the three omic sciences which form the foundation for the life and as well as the evolution so they 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 have been concerned with the organism biology using molecular techniques and cell biologists have been inter investigating the interplay between the genes and the environment and also as well as the uh, the genetic reactions that are going on in the natural population of diversified groups of organisms now coming to this particular one i must tell you that this is um, the habitat conservation india is uh, one third of global biodiversity is in india and whether you take insects fungi bacteria plants or any the kind of organisms one third of global biodiversity is in india biodiversity is the resource material for biotechnology without biodiversity there is no biotechnology without microbes without plants 
without fungi, without scientists, there is no molecular biology. There is no genetics. There is nothing like that. So biodiversity is the resource material. So we have to conserve all the bio, these habitats, the substrates, where in which you will find millions and millions of organisms which could not trace out. Though we have got lot of capacity, mind capacity and mother capacity, we could not investigate or describe the organisms which are existing in different habitats of the globe. So the nature has given a bountiful of microorganisms, plants and animals, and so on and so forth. But we are unable to find out where they are found and how we, how we could investigate them. And this is one example I just have shown that we had to conserve all these ex situ and in situ conservation of organisms is important. And the habitats have to be conserved in nature also. That is more important for us for the future sustenance of agriculture and as well as biotechnology and also for human existence. Now, biodiversity means all of you know it, but it is the variation among living organisms from all sources, including terrestrial, marine, and other aquatic ecosystems and their ecological complexes. It is a basic resource that sustains human resource. It also includes diversity within species, within genera, and also between the species and ecosystem, between, between the genes and also various other um, metabolic processes like physiological changes and as well as biochemical changes, so on and so forth. So this is the biodiversity broad definition of the biodiversity. Well, I am now coming to the biodiversity status because uh, I told you that biodiversity is the resource material for biotechnology. So microbes include microscopic organisms like cyanobacteria, viruses, actinomyces, bacteria, mycoplasma, and chlamydiae, archibacteria, prions, viroids, and also protozoans, and some fungi. Microbiology doesn't want to include eukaryotic organisms in their group. Therefore, some fungi which are of economic importance like yeast, they have taken the advantage of including them under microbiology, that is uh, because it is ultra microscopic. So all these organisms come under the microbiology and microbiome. And microbial existence was unknown until the uh, discovery of the microscope, invention of the microscope. What I want to say is in 17th century, the crude microscope was discovered. So all skills are important, instruments are important, and scientists are important. Workforce is important. Without all these things, nothing can happen in science and technology. So in 17th century, the crude microscope was discovered. Therefore, later on, improvement has taken place in all the microscopy and a number of organisms could be discovered. So these, is, these are some fungi, which I would like to show how biodiversity exists among the fungi. The first slide in the upper side is in Entomophthora is the insect colonizing fungus. This is the housefly where you can see the dust like talcum powder mass that is the Entomophthora fungus. It kills the insects. Entomophthora is, is known to kill number of insects and insect pest can be controlled. Then right side, upper one is the saprolignia. Saprolignia shows the diplanetism that is two kinds of zoospores and as well as uh, two times uh, there will be movement will be there, the flagellation will be there. So that is called diplanetism. And then it also shows pharyngeal proliferation. See, the beauty of the organism is that it doesn't want wasted space and ATP energy. See, that is the beauty of all these organisms. Down left side is the ascomycete, the pleospora. These are the, some of the ascospores, slipper shaped ascos. Nobody has asked them to be. Uh, slipper shaped ascospores. It is a genetic makeup of the organism. So this is biodiversity. Saprolignia is different. Entomophthora is different. Ascomycete is different. Echinoderms are different. Why I'm showing echinoderms? Because echinoderms are very important in the case of um, cancer therapy and as well as in cosmetics. And uh, you can see a number of fungi and bacteria will colonize these echinoderms. That is the beauty of the organisms and echinoderms. Now you can see on the left side, upper surface is the neurospora. 
which is the bug of uh, genetics, microbial genetics, fungal genetics, and um, six Nobel prizes have been awarded who has worked on this particular one. One gene, one enzyme theory was proposed by Tatum and Beadle, and 2,864 research papers have been published only on Neurospora crassa. Please let me know, let me tell you, this is one single organism that has created the science. And around 18 books have been published only on Neurospora crassa by academic press in the United States. What is that we are doing being scientists? Organism has given a scope to understand the science. Organism has produced a lot of literature, but I think our brains have to be sharpened in near future and youngsters have been trained in that particular fashion. And in that right side, again, you can see Chetomium globosum, a fungus which is very common on litter, which is common in soil, which is common in many of the habitats, but it, it gives tons and tons of cellulase. Cellulase production is very high and this cellulose is employed in textile industries. And it is employed in the case of uh, diamond industry, where the precious stones in Surat and other places, the shining of the diamonds and other stones that are used in the ornaments is because of the cellulose enzyme given by this particular fungus. And then lower down left side is the pythium. You can see the juice pores are produced into a vesicle. Nobody has asked it. Uh, the juice supposed to be released into the vessel. This is biodiversity. And you can see on the right side, lower side, it is um, bioluminescent ascospores are released by a particular fungus called ceratocystis. And otherwise, I could have told you a lot of things about all these fungi, but there is no time. Now you can see beautiful fungi are beautiful. Microbes are beautiful underneath the microscope. Algae are beautiful. Many plants are beautiful. Plant flowers are beautiful. We think that our faces are only beautiful. No, it is the microorganisms, it is the fungi, it is the bacteria, it is the plants and the flowers. These are insects, they are beautiful than us. You can see on the left side, upper surface, it is Amanita, Muscaria is a poisonous mushroom. But it yields a lot of alkaloids, which are of medicinal importance. It cannot be eaten, but it yields a lot of alkaloids, which are of uh, medicinal importance. And it is also, associated with the roots in the forest area. So the root and the fungal mycelium of this particular fungus combines and forms a symbiotic association called mycorrhiza. And this mycorrhiza taps all the nutrients from the soil and exports to the plant upper surface. See, that is the beauty of the mycorrhizal association. This is an ectomycorrhizal fungus. On the right side, you can see Marcella escalenta gucci. It is an edible mushroom. It grows under apple orchards. And nobody has cultured this particular fungus till today, when neither in this country nor in any other country. And every year, India is exporting and getting 4,000 crores out of this particular fungus. And you tell me or show me any, any particular uh, product, biotechnology product, getting 4,000 crores every year for India. See the beauty of the organism. That is more important than us. And when that organism was existing, that mushroom was existing, and that ascomycete was existing, therefore people have worked on that. If it was not existing, then nobody should have worked on Nature is bountiful of organisms. Then the last slide is Dictyophora. It is a poisonous one. Uh, you can see the beautiful net. It is a natural secretion, you can see. And whenever the insect sits on that, it immediately uh, it is killed. That is the nature of this particular organism. So you can see uh, such kind of biodiversity. These are all different types of fungi. You can see Helminthus worium, Nigrospora, Aspergillus in the middle, Ketomium, and then last one is Pencilium, from which Pencilium notatum and Pencilium chrysogenum and all that, and Pencilium. Pencilium has been produced from the genus uh, Pencilium. So these are all some of the fungi which are very common in nature. These are some of the important fungi that I have uh, described. Now, uh, this fungus is uh, left one, is very important fungus. This fungus I, I, we have isolated from LV Prasad Institute eye infections. Uh, 200 patients were admitted into the hospital and we have isolated this particular fungus. The reddening of the eye is because of this particular. See, don't think that fungi and microbes and all that they are our enemies. 
they are not at all our enemies only thing is they don't have chlorophyll and some of the fungi and microbes they have become parasite absence of chlorophyll has enforced them to become either saprophytes or parasites never they were thinking of doing any harm to anybody but like us we don't have any chlorophyll we are dependent upon wheat and rice and so on and so forth therefore the fungi also they don't have some chlorophyll therefore they have to become parasitic this is a weak parasite and uh, uh, reddening of the eye but we have developed a 0.01% of sodium chloride solution as a drops to control this particular fungus now mycorrhiza are symbiotic and uh, they help in the uh, the transport of mineral nutrients uh, and uh, besides hello right, huh? hello continue sir please continue uh, besides helping the plant growth and also uh, it improves the immunity of the plant also now these are the types of mycorrhiza ectomycorrhiza or vascular mycorrhiza ectoendomycorrhiza arbutoid mycorrhiza monotrophoid mycorrhiza ericoid mycorrhiza archidaid mycorrhiza even if you take one mycorrhizal uh, group life is not enough to study all these things i don't want to go into the details but uh, german scientist frank botnist he has this they uh, described all these groups of organisms in the year 1885 nowadays mycorrhiza are used as a biofertilizer in the plant growth now you can see these are all different mycorrhizas and i have shown you and uh, these are this is the right side branched one is arbuscular mycorrhiza they are arbuscules and all other mushrooms are only ectomycorrhizal associations now coming to the next group of biodiversity some disturbance is coming see lichens uh, you know that a stable and self supporting uh, group that is combination of mycobiont and algas photobiont is the symbiont that is the lichen and as on today we have got around 1800 lichens reported from india and then uh, around the uh, uh, 2200 2200 from that of uh, uh, asia and then 25000 lichens from all over the world they may be crustose folios or protozoans but i would like to emphasize more on this particular one that is 700 chemicals are very unique to the lichens every year lichen grows only 0.01 mm and what i am showing is is a 100 years old lichen in the photograph so even while removing the lichen also you are removing some 30 years old lichen for your research or for industry or for some other purpose so lichen growth is very slow but you can see that lichen chemicals that are extracted from this are pigments toxins antibiotics medicines perfumes and also your ph paper which was discovered earlier that is from that of the lichen rasella and uh, this is algal diversity i would like to emphasize algae are abundantly found in water humid soil rocks leaves and subaerial pods and plants and other habitats they belong to different diversified groups and by technology of this particular algae includes bio fertilizer cyanobacteria blue green algae is used by the farmers uh, in the rice cultivation and especially as a bio fertilizer it is also used as a feed and uh, many algae uh, sea algae is used as a feed for animals and also as a sea food and uh, spirulina tablets are available in the market that is from that of the algae spirulina and ceramic industry is dependent upon most of the items are useful in this particular industry in defense also the chlorella biscuits are supplied and also in the space they use this particular in the cosmetics algae is used in the cosmetics and beta carotin uh, is uh, from hematococcus and porphyridium and all that and actually be, beta carotin is now used in cardiotherapy and the productivity of ecosystem is because of algae algal blooms of course some of them are my, you know, toxic is toxic like microcystis is toxic and fouling and biocarism is also because of the uh, algae and for they are also pollution indicators and chlamydomonas is used to understand the genetics antibiotics are produced from uh, a number of algae in aquaculture prawn culture and all that algae is used and for bioremediation is also used now these are some of the lower plants which i would like to show this is the left one is the 
Ophir glass in the upper surface, and you can see that cone and all that everybody can understand. Ephedra, ephedrine is extracted from this, and then the secondary colonizers after microbes, and then after uh, bacteria and the lichens and all that, the other uh, colonizers of the rock uh, to form, to make the soil is the uh, bryophytes, liverworts. And uh, of course, now you might have heard a lot of things about plant fossils. And uh, fossils are remnants of prehistoric plants and animals buried in deep in earth, in the layers of sedimentary rocks. I don't want to go into the details, but uh, ginkgo biloba is a very important plant, which is the living fossil. And it is used in uh, many of the control of the many diseases and also in giving the uh, boost for the immunity also. And uh, we, Cycus revoluta and uh, Metasequia exequiodentron gigantium. These are some of the living fossils which are now uh, very few are available. And the age of the earth is around 4.5 billion years ago. I don't want to go into further details. These are some of the uh, early life forms which were described earlier. And uh, William Sonia, Sivardiana, and so on and so forth. This is the Birbalsan Institute of uh, Lucknow. I was the member of this particular RSE of uh, Birbal Sahani Institute for five years. And um, this is, uh, is, is, is the person, the dyan of uh, paleobotany. And I must say that he was the head of the department of uh, the, uh, Allahabad, the department of botany, Allahabad University. And uh, he was the close friend of uh, uh, late Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru also. And he did a lot for this particular nation. And you know, fossils are very important from the point of so many things. I would like to uh, say that, uh, I don't know why this slide has been shipped, but I would like to say, uh, I, I will tell you later on, that is in the case of sea and ocean for petroleum industry, for example, uh, that is very important. And to find out the age of the earth and all that, so many things and the rocks and other things also, it is very important. And plant age also is de dependent upon plant fossils and micro fossils and fungal fossils. And of the more than 80,000 spe species of edible plants are known to exist. Humans cultivate and only about 300 of them. But the whole, uh, especially India is dependent on 12 crops. That is what I, why I would like to show this slide is because now agriculture land has become reduced and because of uh, industry and as well as for the housing and all that, urbanization and so on and so forth. But uh, if you go on decreasing the area, agriculture land, then we have to suffer a lot in near future because by 2050, India is going to be number one in population than China. You should be worried. Everybody should be worried about this particular one. We are not able to give COVID uh, vaccines to all the people because the major problem is their population. If, of course, population means it is a workforce also, but workforce is very important to us. But at the same time, we have to provide the food and uh, that food security and health security, environmental security, all these securities are very much essential. Production is of course uh, is important, no doubt, but at the same time, it is also important to see that we produce uh, the product, our agriculture production has to be increased. So uh, we have to expand our many wild relatives into modern crops. And uh, the, finally, I suggest that in the scientists to learn what important genes are actually contained in the millions of plant specimens and housed in gene banks around the world. And that should be taken into consideration and hybridization has to be done. These are some of the plants which are existing in the Himalayan region, Geranium valicianum, Artemisia. We, we have studied this particular Artemisia. It, is a, it yields a, a energetic tonic. And uh, we have grown this in tissue culture. We have planted in our garden also. And it is a very, very important plant for us. And it is fetching uh, money also. Erythrina variegata. And this is one, is, these are the fruits of a forest plant which are in Himalayan region edible and Lavateria cashmeriana and the Clianthus farmosus. This is a lichen. And then Sericides campanulata. You can see a number of orchids also exist in this. And Lithrella and uh, Flame of the Forest. Rhododendron has become very big industry and export is done in India. And uh, uh, many things are there. 
like Cycus Rampi and Rasula Emetica, it is ectomycorrhizal. And Napoleon, see the beauty of the flowers that is existing in nature. Biodiversity means this, and orchids, and so many other things. So uh, IUCN says that there are 20,000 species, and we have 1,200 species with 177 genera. 6% of world orchids in India, and Eastern Himalayas has got 870, Western Himalayas 290, and Peninsula, Andaman, Nicobar 380, and uh, tropical countries are rich. And in the whole world, we have got 1.5 lakhs of hybrids of the, these ones. And you know Thailand, uh, which uh, uh, with only, uh, I think around 450 orchids, it is making a business, a very good business. India with 1,200 species is not able to get the business from outside world on the orchids. These are some of the orchids that we have collected Dendrobium, Vanda, Epidendrum, Acanthophyllum, and all that from that of Eastern Ghats. And we have studied these my orchid mycorrhizae also. Pale knowledge is very important. Pollen grains are produced in anthers, the male reproductive parts of the flowering plants, and the morphology and scanning electron microscopy, they are very important. Uh, pollen grains will give us vegetational history and uh, gives us paleoclimate also because pollen grains are preserved in the form of fossils facing the history of the plant, plant evolution based on fossil pollen grains, radiocarbon dating, archaeology, biostratigraphy, petroleum exploration, oceanography, and then honey palynology, aeropalynology, system allerg allergic diseases can be understood because of the pollen grains and fungal spores, and then phylogenetic classification of the plants is based upon the pollen grains. So plant morphology is a neglected area. Nobody studies the plant morphology in our country and the possible ways are considered as intelligent plant morphology with our other biological fields. I don't want to go into the details. There is no substance so important as DNA. It has provided basis for the evolutionary process. It has generated millions of different life forms and gene consisted of all of you know, I don't want to go into the details, ATGC. And then uh, this is the genetic code. Genetic code is important. And you know, each code is the uh, language that uh, a particular genetic Hello? code speaks. Me, and for every individual, for every plant, for every Hello? micro, for every insect, this is the very important me, one. Sir? And the genetic code forms the backbone. And then now Hello? I'm coming to cytological developments. Hello? Chromosome structure was Excuse understood me, first. Then chromosome number was understood. Then cytogenetic maps were prepared. Hello? Then afterwards, they have gone to the DNA. And then DNA partition. Then differentiation Excuse of me, the sir? chromosome, heterochromatin, and uh, all that, and banding techniques, and fish techniques was developed, and DNA sequence has been understood, molecular markers have been developed, and then they have molecular uh, cytogenic maps they have prepared, and chromatin structure they have developed, and then histone variation has been observed, genomes are studied, gene sequence has been studied, and also uh, barcoding and other such kind of things CRISP technology and other things are coming out and epigenetics is now uh, the recently uh, that has come into existence that epigenomics. Now this is only to show that DNA is the DNA, DNA is the uh, hereditary material in the case of bacteriophages. You can see in the bacterium it infects and then the bacteriophages are, uh, they are produced here. You can see that the DNA is the material there. And then this is fungal biotechnology. Uh, here, the uh, $16 billion worth of biotechnology products are sold in the market, whether it is food application, useful products or other processes. Baker industry is dependent upon fungi. Brewing industry is dependent. The whole world, if at all the economy that is uh, acute, is because of brewing industry. And uh, yeast is the 50% of biotechnology is from that of the yeast. Cheese making, cheese ripening, mushroom cultivation. It is a multi-billion dollar industry in the whole world. And uh, I don't know why it has not taken up in India. And uh, we think that it is growing on the dirt, therefore one should not eat. But nowadays, I understand that many people are eating. And mushroom cultivation will fetch us a lot of uh, uh, money. And also, uh, you can build up economy. Oriental food fermentation, when you go outside, they will be supplying many of the food materials, where the fermented uh, food material, fermented grains 
and so on and so forth. This is because of the fungi which, which are used. And then single cell protein is from that of the yeast and, uh, and also fusarium alkaloids, ergot alkaloids. And the, there are 160 antibiotics from that of streptomyces also. Streptomycin, Foxman has discovered and got Nobel Prize. And ethanol enzymes, gibberellins, seedless grapes are produced by spraying gibberellins, immunomodulator, cyclosporin. No organ transplantation is done by any doctor without cyclosporin. Excuse me, sir. Organic acid, polysaccharides, Hello? vitamins, Excuse me, sir. paper industry, and biological control, bioremediation, coal stabilization. 180 Excuse dyes me, are sir. Produced I by request you kindly plants, sum up the session. Micro encapsulation and also mycorrhizal inoculation. That is uh, uh, what I want to say is the biofertilizer technology, steroid bioconversion, waste treatment. Throwing is our business and cleaning is the business of the microbes, fungi, and others. So these are some of the fungal enzymes of commercial importance, aspergenase, amylase, catalase, cellulase, and these are all produced by these different organisms. You can see glucoamylase, glucose oxidase, hemis lactase, and these are the microbial uh, biotechnology. Microbes are used in microbial genetics, in genetic recombination, and in fermentation, glucanic acid, amino acid, vitamins, antibiotics, steroid conversion, enzyme production, proteins, baker's yeast, all these things are from that of the food industry. Food spoilage is by means of lactobacillus, candida, bacillus, clostridium, aflatoxins are very dangerous. Uh, if time is available, I will come to this water quality, E. coli test, diary quality is dependent upon streptococcus and lactobacillus, and sewage disposal is done by pathogenic bacteria. Waste disposal is because of cellulomonas and bacillus. You know, this is the biotechnology product. Unfortunately, this, uh, 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 this particular animal has died because of TB, tuberculosis. And, uh, and what Swaminathan has said is, tools of biotechnology have increased our capacity to reduce costs and enhance the efficiency of production. Developing countries with numerous small and poor farms stand to gain and from advances in biotechnology that offer the hope for increasing agricultural productivity and income without adding to the cost of production. So biotechnology has become important. But before biotechnology, biology is important, morphology is important, taxonomy is important, identification is important, conservation is important. All these things are important. And this is only to show about the population and then this is the biotechnology involves the use of manipulation of Excuse living me, organisms sir. and uh, you can get the uh, useful products Hello. out of this. Excuse so, me, sir. Hello? Hello? Excuse me, sir. Huh? I request yeah? you to kindly sum up your presentation, sir. Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, just a minute. So new biotechnology developed with the progress in gene science and then this is the, these are some of the techniques which we have got to discover of PCR reverse transcriptase, gene sequence, gene synthesizer, microchips, and other things. And then this is the single cell protein. And achievements in the field of agriculture, medicine, industry have proved usefulness of biotechnology. And this is gene engineering. And that is you can transfer the gene from one organism to the other organism, and also from one region to the other region. And genetic engineering is done. And this is a number of aspects of biotechnology, tissue culture, plant regeneration, Meristem culture, callus and cell culture, anther culture, embryo culture, protoplast culture, you have to preserve the cryopreservation. And then this is Artemisia, we have grown under stages of tissue culture. And there are number of uh, bioactive natural products which are there. The plant tissue culture provides practically viable technology for the production of commercial important bioactive natural products. And uh, here plasmids are also vectors of this particular technology. These are the omic sciences, which are very important. And then proteomics, if you want a 3D or 2D page figure, you can get from that of the proteomics technology and so on and so forth. And also this is the proteomic analysis of some of the uh, rice varieties that we have done. And two, 200 chemicals are there in the case of neem plant. And we have forgotten about the neem. And then we have to enhance human nutrition because there is malnutrition in India and aromatic. 80% of inhabitants of the world rely chiefly on traditional medicines. 
whether it is a product, chemical product, or whatever it is, even tablets and everything, they come, the alkaloid comes from the plant. So 80% of inhabitants of the world are dependent upon the medicinal plants. And uh, see, these are the countries which are dependent upon the traditional medicines, in, including India. And then these are some of the medicinal plants, Adetodavistica, Allianzetaium, Antigraphis, Pangolite, Artemisia, Bacopa, that is your memory capsules are prepared, sent, and then Central Asiatica, psychotropic diseases, cataracts, anti-cancerous, uh, that is cataracts, rosaceous, and then curcuma langa, all of you know, the turmeric powder and all that. See, from that of all these drugs, uh, we are getting $60 billion global market is going to be there. And by, 2020, by 2030, it is going to be 600 billion. And global medicinal plant wealth established is 30,000. These are some of the plants and roll up bound. Allelopathy is also existing in the case of the plants and it is used against pest management. And you see bioinformatics is very useful in understanding biology about the plants and microbes. For example, based on latex only, the plants have been classified. And this is the one important information. And acomixis and also parthenocarpi, they are very good examples. Plant breeding is important. And then the metabolomics is very important. And advantages of metabolics are the gene expression and so on. And recent slide is the bioactive natural products are from that of 2 lakhs 10,000 um, natural products are there in the form of alkaloids, in the form of crystal forms, in the form of pure form that is available. And out of these 33,000 are from the microbes and fungi. Recently, 2018, um, the New Zealand people have isolated uh, nephrology peptides from aspergillus and lacy diplodin from that of the lacy diplodin. It is used against as, as an antioxidant and also against hyper, hypertension. This is used. So, satellite imaging is used as very important role and my bioremediation and biological uses of non technology. I don't want to go into this. Transgenic crops have come and then genetically modified plants are going to be. Uh, on, the, on the table in our food in years to come. And then uh, biosafety considerations have been taken while developing the transgenic plants. Technology transfer is very important rather than understanding only theory. And then this is uh, marine and coastal ecosystem gives us millions and millions of rupees, but we are not taking care of this. And then this is green belt program, clean and green is very important because now we have 395 million hectares of land, which is, which is wasteland. And we are now, after um, uh, independence, we have added a single acre of the land uh, for agriculture. See, this is Panchakavi are used as a biofertilizer. And this is pollution uh, abatement is very important. And then these are some of the scientists who have given us a lot of scope to understand the biology. Swaminathan, Ranjan from Delhi University Plant Physiology, SC Maestri, Morphogenesis and Tissue Culture, CV Subramanian, Mycologist, AC Mehta worked on weight loss for 24 years, Sada Sivan worked on enzyme theory and um, fungi, Mundukar laid the foundation for the present IARI, Indian Agriculture Research Institute. And Professor H. Y. Mohan Ram recently expired, his Encyclopedia of Botany, and uh, Chaturvedi sir is from that of uh, Alga, uh, Agra, he is also a great botanist. And then Professor uh, Rang, Rangaswamy from Coimbatore is a very good, uh, well-known mi microbiologist. Is no more. So, what my what is that particular uh, biology? Nature composes some of her loveliest poems of the microscope and the telescope. Science is simply a common sense at its best. And what Abdul Kalam said is, we are in a meeting together, a noble mission with a strong vision to build a great nation. This is what I want to convey to all of you. And uh, we have to revive from that of the village level to that of the city level. Don't forget the village. Thank you very much. Thank you, every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, sorry, we cannot uh, give you much more time uh, because of no. the, uh, we are lagging behind the schedule. Sorry, sir. No, you can go ahead. So because of the time constraint, I will uh, skip the question answer session. Now I request okay. uh, Honorable Dr. D.K. Kapgide, sir, 
the chairperson of this technical session to give yeah. to give your remarks about this session yeah okay sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you welcome sir welcome namaste sir manoj sir sir namaskar sir namaskar hello hello how are you sir fine fine, sir. fine. yes sir yeah. uh, thank you professor manoj bhai sir manik sir how is your health yes sir it is fine how is your family my family is also fine here sir so in the department everybody is okay Yes, yes. In the department, everybody is okay now. Tvika sir is the head of department. Oh, uh oh. -huh. Yeah. Good, I will go to the department for teaching. Oh, you are going. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that person I submitted thesis from um the college, yes, Shivaji yes, College. Yes, yes, yes. Submitted and awarded. Awarded. Oh, congratulations. Yes, yes. And now he is professor. Yeah, you have to be congratulated, not he. Yes, yes. I will congratulate you from on your behalf. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sir, how about this, sir? Bola ata tumi. Yes. Okay. Thank you, uh, Professor Manoj sir, for your nice lecture on that the biotechnology and its application. You had very well explained about the biology, its four, four principles. Then you have also explained about the phylogenetic uh, tree of life, biodiversity and its conservation. then uh, you give best information on that the fungal biodiversity you are also add uh, information about the fossils and work of uh, paleobotany uh, of uh, bilbal sahani then you had also explain about that the plant biodiversity algae biodiversity you mention about that the pelvinology its application uh, mycology mycophora and fungal biodiversity also and lastly the applications of biotechnology in agricultural sciences so thank you sir for your nice information about this the uh, biology in the biotechnology thank you sir again okay thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank you now i take manik this sir, opportunity take okay thank you manik sir Hello. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Rajesh, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. I am very happy that I have seen you today. Yeah. I take thank this you. opportunity, Dr. Rajesh, sir. Thank to you. To propose the vote of thanks on yes. behalf of organizing committee of Dr. Ambedkar College of Arts, Commerce, and Science, I would like to thank Honorable Dr. D. K. Kapgate, sir, chairperson of this technical session, who gave his vital time from his busy schedule and graced us. with his presence and guidance thank you sir i am very much thankful to honorable professor c manohara chari sir speaker of this technical session for enlightening us on the topic biology to biotechnology your presentation is very informative and interactive your presentation will definitely help us to enhance our knowledge we all the participant enjoy your presentation sir thank you very much sir last but not least i thanks all the participant for patience hearing thank you once again to all of you now i request dr ns ramteke sir to conduct the fourth technical session over to you sir i request uh, professor manohar achari sir please professor manohar achari namaskar please uh, click the link or uh, video link so that we can have a control please click the video link please click the uh, name of the college so that we can have a control शेयरिंग बंद करिए सर मैडम
मैडम क्लोज यूर शेयरिंग मैम प्लीज री होस्ट टू अवर कॉलेज Yes, now it is there. Post. Yes. Good afternoon to all of you, dear all. I, Dr. N. S. Ramtekhe, welcome you in this technical session of International E-Conference on Interdisciplinary Innovations in Socio-Economic Environment, Biodiversity Conservation through Sustainable Development. For this session. we have with us the eminent personalities honorable dr surendra manik sir as a chairperson and honorable dr suresh bonde sir as a resource person on behalf of the organizers and also the participants this meeting is being recorded i heartily welcome both the dignitaries I would like to request Honorable Dr. Surendra Manik sir to chair this technical session. Thank you, sir. I chaired. Thank you, Manik sir. Honorable Dr. Surendra Manik sir is professor and head of Department of Botany, Santa Gargay Baba, Amravati University, Amravati, Maharashtra. Now it's my proud privilege to introduce Honorable Speaker. Dr Suresh Bonde sir is a paleobotanist super annuated as scientist from the well known Agarkar Research Institute Pune he is active in research work in the field of paleobotany he is intensely associated with the Birbal Sahani Institute of Paleobotany Lucknow a well known international paleobotanical research institute since from 1975 he has served the birbal sahani institute of polity botany as a scientist and later on as a member of the research advisory committee he is a life member and fellow of the indian botanical society also he is a life member and fellow of the paleo botanical society of india lucknow and executive council member he has served as a executive council member of the international organization of, of paleo botany london and his representative to india for two terms sir has delivered large number of invited lectures keynote addresses and chaired sessions at number of international and national conferences in india and abroad he is a member of botanical society of america he is life member of coal science foundation National Botanical Research Institute Lucknow he has visited Singapore Malaysia Indonesia Australia New Zealand and Europe and studied extant and extinct palms he has research experience of 30 years in the field of paleobotany phylogeny taxonomy and anatomy and his specialized area of research is morpho anatomy of fossil plants deccan intertrappian flora and living and fossil palms he has published 67 scientific papers in national and international journals and established 16 genera and 24 species in fossil to new science he has written number of popular articles in local newspaper presently he is associated with the theme park palm park established at pune by pune municipal corporation this is a brief introduction of the resource person dr bonde sir now i request honorable dr suresh bonde sir to deliver his presentation he is going to present on the topic fossil plants as an indicator of past environment and uh, honorable dr manik sir is presenting this session so over to honorable dr suresh bonde sir over to you sir please
Um, may I start my lecture now? Yes. Okay, you are audible, sir. Please continue. <laughs> so, uh, at the onset of my lecture, I would like to thank Dr. Rajesh Dehgaukar, principal and the convener of this international conference, of the uh, Dr. Babasaheb Ambedkar College, Chandrapur, for the invitation to deliver this invited lecture. Due to the time constraint, I will deliver my lecture. I will deliver my lecture without slides. Please okay. bear with me. Keeping in mind the theme of this conference, I have selected the topic on fossil plants in the past environment, which will benefit young research students, teachers, and environmental environmentalists uh, during this uh, region. It is a well-known understood fact that the Earth was originated about 4,500 million years ago by detaching itself from the sun. For the sake of understanding the evidences, life of Earth has been divided into four major geological eras as one, pre-Cambrian era, Paleozoic era, Mesozoic era, and Cenozoic era. The Pre-Cambrian era has been divided into two periods as early Azoic period and later on as Proterozoic period, where severe earth movements thus formation started on molten earth which resulted in the formation of oceans and rocks during the Cambrian period. During the Proterozoic period, or later Cambrian period, first life on the Earth originated about 3,500 million years ago in the form of a spheroidal alga and bacteria like microorganisms the biota increased in the sea water in the later uh, Cambrian era. This increase in aquatic biota continued in the early Paleozoic era also, being the Cambrian and Ordovician period. However, the first land plant came into existence during the during the Silurian period, about 425 million years ago. The, during this period, the sea depressions were filled. New mountain ranges were formed. First appearance of a land plant in the form of Rhinia, Horniophyta, Hickelangia, that phyllophytalian members, and that increase in the Silurian Devonian time. During the Devonian time, the mountain weathering started, or it continued, and deposited in the deltas. Rapid evolution of land plant took place during this period, and also amphibians were originated during this period. In the later geological period, known as Carboniferous period, about 3,035 million years ago, the climate got changed, and climate became very warm and humid. And because of this, there is a, it happened to be a diversification of land plants, seed plants, and sperms were found. During this period, huge or gigantic plants like Lepidodendron, Lepidophilia, Sigillaria, hostels, all hostels were originated and they over the entire area within a very short period of Carboniferous period. During this period again, the reptiles and orthopods were originated. Carboniferous period is known as the period for the best coal. And whatever the depositions are there, we get best coal known as anthracite coal, which is formed because of the Accumulation uh, of these all uh, humid climate you know, plants. 
Now, after this Carboniferous period, there came the Permian period in which the earth movements became maximum. There were heavy glaciers. During this period, ferns, conifers, and seed ferns, or the what we call them as pterodosperms, they became abundant. During this period, the plants were also diversified. Now, during this period, the biota increased, the plants becoming uh, diversified in the form of glossopteris, gangomopteris, paleovitaria, and so on and so forth, composing the old depositions in India known as bituminous type of poles that we get from the deposition of all these plants. Now, after the Palisade period, there were severe changes in the earth crust. In the Triassic period, the base level in the Mesozoic era, about 235 million years ago, the climate was warm and cold. There were heavy glaciations, and it was because of this type of climate, Earth's conifers became restricted to certain pockets, and reptiles became diversified. At the same time, the psychedelian type of plants originated or also got diversified. Jurassic period, later period, about 180 million years ago, it is known because of the drifting of one land. The climate became warm and humid, mountain reduced to low hills. Because of this Gondwan land drifting, drifting which causes the cleavage uh, of the polar earth in the form of two land masses. Earlier it was a single land mass, Pangaea, it was known as, and covered by a universal uh, ocean known as Panthalsa. It did cleavage into two mainly first as the Laurasian continent and Gondwan continent. Later on, this Gondwan continent also got, got cleavage into a number of land masses belonging to Australia, New Zealand, Indian subcontinent, uh, then uh, Africa, uh, uh, South America, so on and so forth. And the, uh, during this period, the flora uh, uh, get diversified and that so uh, 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 magnify, uh, magnifying the conifers and psychedels were dominant. And during this period, again, the, some, some of the plant groups like Pentoxily originated, and they are the very important plant groups as far as evolution of gymnosperms and origin of uh, what we call them as the angiosperms in the later period. The later geological period, known as Cretaceous period, which started about 135 million years ago, the climate was again modified, changed. The lava was erupted on large scale, and mainly the then sea, known as Tethys, got shallowed. This is the main reason because of which the Angiosperms or the flowering plants came, uh, came into existence. And that is the main group for which the uh, uh, evolutionary aspect is responsible. At the same time, mammals were originated. This is the period which is also known to common man as the extinction of dinosaurs. Later on, <clears throat> In the, uh, in, in the later geological periods, the climate again got changed and angiosperms became diversified. In today's flora, what we see today, the two bacteria, there are 4,000 species, protesta as 80,000 species, there are biophytes, about 24,000 species, pterodophytes, 1,000 species and gymnosperm 
which are known as the living fossils in a general group, about 900 species only. And the major bulk of the floral composition goes to angiosperms, which has about 200,000 dicot species and 60,000 monocot species, mainly uh, belonging to uh, the uh, palms uh, and, and other groups like that. Because of this changed environment, we get fossilized plants in all these strata, which are indicator of all these geological horizons. Now, as far as the pelagic plants are concerned, the evolutionary aspects they are seen in phylloxera, which give from a single uh, un, uh, um, undivided plant of rhinia, it becomes diversified, it grows branch, branch, it forms number of cones later on in uh, Icoxida group, lipidodendrilis. The evolution started in two directions as orogenic evolution and the uh, vegetative evolution. And that's how there is a spread in all the plant groups, like Opsida and Spinoxida. Late, later on, the Spinoxids, they had a blunt line. They could not survive. Only, only uh, 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 some plants are living today, uh, and majority of them, they have became extinct. Later on, in the Mesozoic period, whatever we see as the psychedelics that we get preserved, they got diversified in the Triassic period, and the conifers, which were dominant in uh, Paleozoic era, they also became a little bit uh, restricted to certain areas. The Mesozoic period is supposed to be the period of the, the gnosperms, and later on, which in the later geological period, the Cretaceous period, gave rise to the group known as the angiosperms, which is diversified and which also became uh, 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 throughout the, all the uh, geological and uh, uh, continental uh, regions. In aquatic region, in, uh, in land conditions, alpine regions, everywhere. So uh, today, after the uh, Precious time, the angiosperm got dominated, which suppressed almost all the other plant groups known as the pteridophytes and the gymnosperms. Some of the gymnosperms groups, they are known as the living fossils. Say, for example, uh, Gingo biloba. It is uh, it has large number of representatives in the fossil, but today only one genus and one species is there. Many of the groups like Pentoxili, Decanovascalis, Vaginovascalis, they became extinct. And because they are supposed to be related to the origin of angiosperms. The angiosperm got diversified in the, in the, in the, in the uh, 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 Kinozoic era, and later on, they also got migrated using different geological, later geological. Uh, yes, a uh, Paleocene, Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene, Pliocene, and recent periods. Today we see the major of the Cotlidonus groups, they are uh, found in almost all the geological horizons, and we, uh, they, are, they are seen in the fossils also, in the uh, Laken Intertrapian horizons as fossil palms, dicotyledonous plants, um, as woods, as, uh, um, as they are preserved as uh, flowers, fruits, seeds, and pollen grains, like that. Uh, not only the preservation in all these groups is such that we can get even chromosomes preserved like this. The chromosomes in Pentoxylan have been discovered. 
we uh, our group at um, Agarthar Research Institute. That is the, for the first time the chromosomes have been noted from pentoxylon in the form of a metaphase stage. Means we can count, we have counted the number of chromosomes ranging from 13 to 18, showing its showing its uh, resemblance or uh, affinity with the psychedelic, uh, psychedelic plants and conifers. So the pentoxylis were the gnospermous group. They had a relation with uh, almost all the gymnospermous groups, psychedelic, benetitalis, coniferalis, and so on and so forth. They are marching towards this. They became extinct, but they, during that time, they must have given rise some clues towards the origin and diversification of angiosperm in the Cretaceous period. Thank you very much. And uh, 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 I, I will sum up my lecture, the uh, Lord Buddha saying, which he said about 2,600 uh, years ago. He said, believe nothing, no matter where you read it or who has said it, not even if I, I have said it, unless it agrees with your own reasons, and your own common sense. This is what Lord Buddha said about 2,600 years ago, which is applicable to all the scientific branches and uh, all the scientists. Thank you. So, thank you very much, Dr. Bonde, sir. So, shall I give the conclude the session, sir? Yes, sir. Ah. Dr. Bonde sir has started with the geological time scale right from the Precambrian, and then he traveled through the geological past right from the Silurian and how the different plant groups, right from the Tedophytes, the Gymnosperms, and the Angiosperms, they evolved in the geological time. And he has said that the Angiosperms have diversified in the Cretaceous period, and now we can say that the Angiosperms are very much a dominant vegetation. and as he has said, that climate and the plant vegetation is intricately associated with each other. Climate is dependent upon the vegetation as well as the modification or the evolution of the vegetation is depending upon the climate. So both of these are very much important. And as we say that these plants are the signatures of the past vegetation, he has spoken very eloquently on the role of vegetation in the evolution of the past climate and how the climate has changed right in the geological past and we are finding how the climate is now being changed with the vegetation also and it is very at most uh, necessary that we have to understand the role of vegetation role of the plants as well as the diversity as such in the control of uh, climate and uh, we have to conserve this plant species this is this of the message he has given that uh, diversity of the plant uh, has to be conserved. And uh, as the earlier speakers have said, that this conservation has to be taken as a challenge and we have to think on these particular lines. So on behalf of the organizing committee, I'm very much thankful to Dr. Bonde, sir, who has also been a very good friend. He has uh, uh, given more of his years, uh, earlier career years in the Birbal San Institute of Paleobotany now known as the Birbal San Institute of Paleo Sciences. And uh, he has been very uh, associated with the contribution of uh, on the farm, fossil farms. And you know, he has uh, also developed a new species as a juvenile farm. He's very much known as a, which is known, known as a baby farm. So he has contributed a lot in this and still he's continuing his research, his research work. So I'm very much thankful to you, sir, for accepting the invitation of the organizers and I am also very much thankful to the organizers for giving me an opportunity to have a chairperson of this particular session. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am particularly thankful yep. to Dr. Yep. Gaukar, sir, Dr. Yep. Kapgat, sir, who are my best friends, and uh, also the very colleagues uh, of my Birbal San Institute, Dr. Ashwin Kumar Srivastav, Dr. Rashmi Srivastav, and all other fellows who have joined in this particular 
a virtual session thank you thank you very thank much you, sir. sir thank you very Dr. much mani yes sir I, i would like to add the thing that yes. baby palm which i have discovered yes yes is, is named after my professor professor mahabali mahabali yes yes it is yes mahabali yeah yeah it is mahabali yes thank you sir thank you i take the opportunity to propose vote of thanks on behalf of dr ambedkar college chandrapur i would like to thank honorable dr surendra manik sir chairperson of this technical session who gave his vital time from his busy schedule and grace us yeah. with his presence and guidance thank you very much sir i am very much thankful to honorable dr suresh bonde sir for enlighten us on the topic fossil plants as an indicator of past environment your presentation is very informative and interactive we all participants enjoyed your session thank you very much sir also i am very much thankful to all the participants for taking active participation in the session again thanks to all of you now i request dr mitani sir to conduct the next session thank you thank you once again okay good afternoon everyone the one who have joined this uh, really uh, very late session a pre lunch session i know it is quite late but uh, due to some technical niches we have reached so far now so better to start the new session here that is the fifth and the pre lunch session we are going to start here we have with us the chairperson for this particular session is uh, dr sushma bahade who is from the institute of science nagpur she is associate professor in department of botany she will be here with us as the chairperson of this particular technical session and the speaker for the today's this last pre lunch session is dr dhananjay ba mohabe the dr dhananjay mohabe is a renowned geologist a senior geologist in the geological survey of india who has retired in 2013 as the senior uh, senior geologist in the geological survey of india who completed his education from nagpur university that is rtm nagpur university nagpur he joined geological survey of india in 1977 as a junior geologist then he completed his doctorate in 1993 and was appointed as senior geologist in the geological survey of india he continued till 2013 and now also he is a retired senior research scientist in the geological department of geology in rtm nagpur university nagpur so better to uh, hand over the session to dr mohabe rather than giving more information about him as his word would prove what he is and what he was and the knowledge what he has better to have knowledge from the person than to know about him okay so i would love to have dr mohabe with us to continue this session over to you sir if it is possible unmute yourself yes, and hello sir Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Huh? Uh, hello. Thank you so much. I would uh, just like to share the screen. And before uh, I start, uh, I would like to thank the organizers, especially Dr. Rajesh Dagar, for giving me this honor of uh, sharing whatever uh, little knowledge I have on uh, dinosaurs. And it's a, indeed a pleasure for me. So I think I can share the screen.
Hello, can you dis, uh, please uh, enable that? It is host disabled participant, please. Sir, you... Yeah, yeah, it is host disabled participant screen sharing. You make me the host, I will open it. You have to host you. Huh? Now you are the host, sir. Ah, right now, you right now. You are the now. host, yes. sir. You can yes. share this. Now you can share. Stop there. Hello, can we listen to me? Yeah, 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 we can listen you. Yeah. We can hear you. Okay, thank you. Thank you much. Uh, today's uh, topic uh, which I have, uh, I am already presenting before you, it's on the dinosaurs and contemporary Indian reptiles. That is 67 so million as that, your screen their habitat screen. and diet. You know, because uh, uh, we have heard very illustrious uh, lecture by Professor Bonde sir and uh, uh, um, Ashwini Shivasta sir, and they have spoken about, uh, including the Professor Manchupuri, uh, who has spoken about the uh, um, extent. Uh, so sorry uh, to interrupt you again and again, but your screen is not visible. I'll be sir. throwing light amount. The late Cretaceous, that is 67 million years, because we have also. A very characteristic uh, diversity, biodiversity, they are uh, paleo ecology there, but that time the life was uh, entirely different. Here, as I told you, Bodhisattva just now uh, uh, told us, here you can see uh, those earth originated 4.5 million years back, but then the life really started appearing some 3,000 million years today. And in course of evolution, this life, the first vertebrates, they appeared as fish here, and then from fishes they evolved to amphibians, to reptiles, to birds, and the mammals. So most of my topic will be confined to here around uh, 70 Dhananjay, to sir, 65 sir, million. Sir, hello. We are not receiving your screen, sir. You are not receiving my screen. So you'll have to share the screen, sir. Yes, sir, sir. Share screen. Now you can see it, sir. No, sir. Now, okay, okay. Now we can, we can, sir. Now we can. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, so I'm sorry, earlier slide also you could not see? What did you say, sir? Pardon, sir. Ah, no, no, sir. Hear. Okay, sir. Now it is visible clearly. Now we can continue, sir. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, okay. Please do continue. Okay, okay. Thank you. No problem. So I was just telling you, I would be speaking mostly because the, since the Earth originated 4.5 million years back, going to the various evolution, because mostly I would be speaking about the vertebrates. The first vertebrate that was appearing, it is here, from fish, to, then it evolved to amphibians, to reptiles, to birds, and to mammals. My, most of them have focused in this third history, will be around here, that is around 70 to 65 million years. That were called the uh, late Cretaceous to early, early Paleocene period here. Why is it Why it is so important that late Cretaceous in the intensity of it? Because it has witnessed many important events. You can see it was a uh, world of varieties of reptiles and plants that time, and it was a very paleobiogeography. I am talking of 67 million years back. 
Indian Peninsula separated from the South Gondwana land masses, and then it was floating as a separate isogram, and then ultimately it collided with Asia 1599 max. So that was very important effect. It was a very dynamic field geography. Then in course of its migration, after separation from Gondwana land till it collided with the Asia, it has some endemism of biota. And then in between we have a very large scale Deccan volcanic eruptions that very drastically affected the biota, both plants and animals. And then at that time, uh, before the eruption started, we had, uh, during the, what we call it the limit or infotropian time, we have witnessed a very semi time climatic conditions with a strong seasonality. And it is during this time that we have reptiles like dinosaurs, snakes, turtles, lizards, and even crocodiles, they were there. But it's a typified by the absence of birds there. We do not have any Cretaceous birds. Of course, that time, it's a contemporary plants. They were dominated by angiosperms and pteridophytes. And my experts on plants, they already given you a very good idea about that. I hear if you look into, into that, because if you uh, recording the dinosaurs in India, the first uh, you start getting them in the Triassic period, around 229 million. Years. What we get with the Gondwana dinosaurs here. And then, but as we continue, there are stratigraphic gaps. We do not have any record of any dinosaurs in between. We are here, and then you can see gap from here to here. And then we have in the lower Cretaceous and dinosaurs from Nimar side of, and then we have this Titanosaurus, Tabulosaurus from late Cretaceous, and this late Cretaceous sediments also. They are mostly terrestrial sediments. They are associated with Deccan volcanic sediment. So here, because my focus will be here on the Deccan volcanic eruption associated uh, sediments, which are full of dinosaurs, reptiles, and 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 plants. So I'd be my story would be evolving around here only. And that's why we do not have any continuous record of evolution right from the the first dinosaur that appeared in the subcontinent. But we have a very uh, glaring gaps in between. Now, uh, from this, uh, the most uh, well-known uh, dinosaurs from the Gondwanas, what uh, you, you are seeing here, is the uh, uh, oldest one is Vakeria malarensis, that is from the Triassic. These are the oldest dinosaurs that is known from the malaria formation. And then we have that uh, from, uh, by, discovered by Indian Statistical Institute, they are coming from uh, Jurassic sediments, that is uh, Parapasaras. Most of these Gondwanan finds, they are coming from the Pranita Godavari Valley in the bordering state of Madhya Pradesh and, and, and Maharashtra. And we have another year, Kotasaras, that is again from the Jurassic Formation. This is by my friend uh, P.K. Yadgiri South from Geological Survey of India. So till today, though a lot of work has been done in India, but the only two mounted skeletons are there. They are only from the Jurassic. One is Kotasaras, which is there by GSI in the Hyderabad Museum, Villa Science Museum, and another, a Barapasaras, is in the Indian Statistical Institute, Calcutta. So they are the two uh, mounted skeleton from the Kurnanas. Now coming, just to give you some idea, when I uh, speak about the Cretaceous dinosaurs, here you can see it here. I, I am trying to show you uh, whatever sediments are there. Uh, I mean the late Cretaceous mastichinous sediments with dinosaurs and uh, those contemporary plants. They are associated with the Deccan trap. Now this Deccan trap, they, it, it's a, it erupted right from uh, uh, 67 to up to 62 million years, five million years duration for the eruption. And between, because it was in phases, we had hiatuses there and we have deposition of sediment at different stratigraphic levels. So before the first flow go, because in different areas, the Deccan volcanism appeared at different times. The sites was different, source was different. So it doesn't that all the lava flows, they came together along the entire subcontinent. Mm -hmm. That's why the infratapian or sediments just below the trap, before they were being sediment deposited, they are time transgressive. They are deposited in different basins in different times. And so the arrival of the traps in different times in different provinces. Here I am showing you this is infratapian or so-called limiter sediment that is just before the arrival of the local flow. And in the Deccan volcanic sequence, these hiatuses, you get what we call is the intertrapian sedimentary bed, and then the red bowl beds and the edge beds which are the lava flow. These are these intertrapian sediment for this 
uh, which is uh, a, a topic and the focus for most of the uh, my very learned uh, field botanist here, which have focused on the Deccan intertribal sedimentary beds, and that too mostly from the central India. Now here, if you look at the distribution of the dinosaurs, here again you can see it starts from this uh, South India. It has nothing to do with the Deccan volcanic sediments here, but the Deccan volcanic sediments, they they are what we call it the area of the upper the basin are there, and then you see uh, these are Gunwana here all along Pranita Godavari, and these are Kota formation, and then actually from here you can see how. This could have, this uh, occurrences of late Cretaceous dinosaur occurs. This is anti basin rock form Pizdora. These are southernmost, then Nagpur, Jabalpur, Sagar. Then you go to Gujarat, and then to Doha, then Bag, and then uh, in continuation of this, Jabua, you are getting Jalut, Kreda, and then we have them in uh, uh, Anjar, Kach, and then we have some in Corbett. So this is the story of the distribution of dinosaurs in India, mostly in the Jurassic, or they are coming from the late Cretaceous. And here you can see most of the dinosaur fossils in the Cretaceous. You get only skeletons in the uh, uh, Gondwanan sediments, but in the uh, uh, Cretaceous sediments, you have, and other than the uh, uh, very well preserved dinosaur skeleton instruments, you have eggs, you have nest sites, you have some suspected uh, tracks, and most important, it's the interest of paleobotics, you get dinosaur dunks, which are full of plant tissues. Now coming here, to just to just to show you what I'm trying to designate and intertype. And here you can see, just I'm trying to show you some deconic volcanic sequence. This is the limit of formation in hot event sequence, plus the arrival of the first drop. And in between, you have different intertapians deposited in different stratigraphic level. So if you want to track real changes in the flora, along with the reptilians or any other uh, flora and fauna, you have to go along the different stratigraphic levels in different provinces. Whether it's Andy Basin, whether it's the Mandla, whether it's a Chandwala, or whether it's a Malwa, or you are going to uh, Saurashtra, or you are going to Kachwa. So generally, we follow uh, the volcanic stratigraphy, which is uh, well constant, uh, well dated with Argon, Argon, Iran, Pelu Magnet. Here you see, when I say intertapens, you can see here these IT sediments, uh, they are well sandwiched between the two lava flows, what we call it the intertrapen. And here, the limit or infratrapen, you can see just below the first lava flow. And then the gate is resting over the basement, which can be either Gondwanas, uh, or it can be the Precambrian basement, or it can even be any any Archean basement. Now here, just to show you how, when I say paleontologists or anything, we are trying to look for the uh, fossils. They are mostly vertebrates or even plant fossils. Of course, plant fossils is not my focus. Here, just for example, I am showing when this is the ND, what we call it in an Art Nogarga basin. This is around 700 square kilometers. You see, and you can see the, I am trying to show the limiters here. And these, these are all the Deccan traps here. And then within this, you have a number of fossil localities. You can see the nest, the bones, the coprolites, and uh, over here. So they are associated with typical Deccan volcanic associated. And it is, it is the only area in the basin because the limiters, they are deposited in different basins, in different areas. So here, you see, this Tandungarga basin, you get a very good limnic deposits here. Here you can see, around 67 square kilometer of plate. You get a beautiful biota here. So here you get, if you go for a sub-environment there, you have elevated places, you have channel places, you have ore bank places, you have limnic clays, you have, you have peludal flows, and all the different places, they are characterized by presence of different uh, uh, vertebrates, and their own uh, 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 taxes over there. So this is, you can see here, this is just in the Dongar of Sitra. And this area is very important, Pizdura. Way back uh, since 1857, so now onwards, still we, we get all the first dinosaurs uh, uh, from the Islam band board and uh, after, uh, of course, after Jabalpur, after Sleeman's discovery. This area enjoys a, a lot of things because it is in the limiters that we get the base plant preserved here, uh, here. Uh, Dr. Rashmi Shavasto is there. I think she has been working with us for some time in the uh, fossils which collected from the infratrapping. The problem is whatever plants we get, they are they are not very well and they are not as prolific what we get in the Deccan intertrapping there. But we have very good records of 
palm cells some other ngos palm cells some pteridophytes from this demeta sediment uh, from this nand nagar gopati of course jabalpur but we have few the best mega flora it comes from the intratepinal limita from this nand nagar gao basin only here now you when i say dinosaurs are replaced what they are mostly is when i say fossil they are either skeletons they are either nests and they have foot tracks and this is very important this is what we call it the dinosaur dung mass or we call it a reptilian dung mass or it can be what we call it a coprolite now in india i just have it tried to get you as since the discovery of first uh, dinosaurs way back in 1828 not many sauropods and theropod species were established but uh, more than 20 but right now these are some of the valid species uh, which has considered to okay? be others are normal domain you have sauropod they were big herbivores quadrupedal dinosaur uh, they were plant eaters uh, we are titanosaur in this case but they too have been revised and out of this really we have two today dinosaur and lyosaur and they have a smaller and uh, big theropod species over there and most of the work on dinosaurs 1933 it was mostly by uh, mm, matty c matty 1933 and because these are some of the dinosaurs So we get in Jabalpur. As I told you, we are not still able to. We are able to give some description, but we are not really don't know how these dinosaurs, titanosaurs, or any other uh, dinosaur, titanosaur, they really look like. Because uh, because they were prey. This is one of the nearest, but not even 30 percent of the skeleton from Dongarga. By the statistical institute, by Professor S L Jain, Pamela Robinson, and Saswati Bandopadhyay, it was from Dongarga. and uh, these are the artist reconstruction but still we don't know how these animals they really look like because we hardly know they are very fragmented and incomplete dinosaur bones now uh, because there had been a lot of work it was only in the year 1981 that uh, we were able to discover we and my colleague jayan divedi we were able to discover and report for the first time the very prolific uh, dinosaur sites in the kheda district that is place is rayonis district and the most important for this was this was the first time when we discovered the dinosaur nest in india because the dinosaur skeleton remained known since 1828 it was only 1981 so it provided a very good opportunity and it was a need era for research because we are getting the nest site nest uh, their nest eggs along with this skeletal remains and that real provides an opportunity to show what was the nesting behavior what was the social behavior of the dinosaur there we hear what you are seeing is the what we call it the rajasaurus but this rajasaurus you can see it's not a complete one we will show a lot of skeleton there you can see the skull here you can see uh, uh, some maxilla you can see some brain case here and uh, you can see some jaw bones here and some some vertebrae here and but based on that only the skull has been detected and animal has been detected so we really don't know that for rayonisaurus also another theropod there so there are some problem as far as the really knowing how the dinosaur during late cretaceous they uh, they really look like okay, this is the story of a small theropod other than a very big uh, theropod like rajasaurus and rayonisaurus they are small theropods also of the size of, of the almost like a sheep or lamb you can see a small vertebra you can have but these remains are uh, also very very less but important is that uh, their presence we have we have recorded not only the skeletons but we have also noted presence of their eggs and you can see these are the eggs uh, you can see as i told you theropods nest how the theropods eggs they look like they are very typical within the theropods also we get a variation because there are more than two three species so different species which give broadly they will be the same uh, the, the family but species will be different So these are the theropods. You can see uh, some sort of bear shape, egg. entirely different. Their uh, microstructure will be different, and how these eggs were laid. And uh, here you can also see these are the sauropods, mostly laid in spherical eggs. And all these nests and eggs, they were invariably laid. You go anywhere in India, right from Gujarat, then later on we found in Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra. They were all these eggs. They are invariably very, very laid in this sandstone. So these always dinosaurs always prefer to lay their this the salt river and back you don't get them any other lithology when i say the nest sites the nest site it may be few square meters it may be 80 square meters or it may be 60 square meters where you get the individual nest like this 
an individual less you get the disposition of x like that you are not able to get any systematic pattern where you can really say that dinos this dinosaurs after leg they they are generally saucer shape but they are not really manipulated to see so they occur in any shape they can be uh, some sometimes they are linear arrangement some some circular arrangement and it is in such that some we are able to get even in some of the nest we are getting very good snake and some of the baby dinosaur so this is just to give you an idea how a nest site when i say you can have this scale here and then you can you there are the different nests here so it may be uh, less than 40 square meters where you are getting this nest and this mating but in one nest site you have in individual nest you have the x of a one oop species type only so that shows that it was laid by a particular species of a dinosaur only but you can say this is a dory dingrey you can hear see x over here six they occur like that it is and then you can see they it can be a nest of six eight eight and when try to dig out you can see how the complete spherical x come from that this is a nest of a sauropod dinosaur and then what i showed you along with the uh, dinosaur nest and all it is very rare because we have recorded in 1987 i was able to find in one of the nest i had some partial skeleton in one i was not very sure about it i but i know there was a uh, it's a mixed skeleton where there was some vertebra that gives characteristic of a snake but it had also some other structure that gave a some sort of a juvenile bones of some sort of part later on after 1987 we had a collaborative study involving professor jeffrey wilson of university of michigan and then uh, we had a uh, preparation of the specimen was removed lot of problem because government of india won't permit but then it was permitted and then we were able to prepare this specimen completely and based on that you see we were able to reconstruct the specimen out of that came a sanaja indicus and it is the first time that it gave the in the world the evidence that this Uh, this cetacean snake which was named as sanaja indica it was predating the dinosaur sauropod babies in the nest because we get very frequent multiple association of the snake dinosaur babies and eggs in that particular site so that was a very unique evidence and this unique specimen is there in the geological survey of india and this is the reconstruction by killer feller of that snake you can see a snake you can see here it because it it coiled around as uh, 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 spherical egg and then you have a baby's uh, skeleton falling over here and it is one of the nest so the, these were some of the contemporary one other sanaja and then we have other as i said you pizura also there are some very good snakes coming over here but we uh, i think 2011 paper i tried to describe it what i call a medsite is it was another medsite snake here. so it's a very good association dinosaurs Uh, along with the dinosaur we have snakes mates so it's snakes here you can see here we try to most of the because snakes uh, it is very difficult to get these skulls but still we get here but most of them they are represented by by the vertebral series and then along with the uh, along with the along with this snake go wow, crocodiles here you can see the some fear uh, this uh, femur uh, some ankle bones we have some armor here so these were the that because dinosaurs were not alone there in the ecosystem we had a whole group of reptiles which was dominating so not only dinosaurs snakes crocodiles lizards and uh, turtles we have other varieties of fishes well preserved fishes and i said because we have lake deposit we get dozens of those beautiful intact well preserved fishes there we have some frogs the frogs are very pragmatic but among the reptiles these are the best which we are getting i along with uh, wilson and we are working on this crocodiles here to see here they are beautiful skull elements and things like that and it, because the similar of it because that time india was not india only it was the indian subcontinent pakistan was a part of that so with kari formation and other things and thing bolicher we have also some uh, uh, dinosaurs and some other reptiles which are similar or other sister types of what we are getting in indian limit of elements And here, see, these are the turtles. This is again from the Dongarga at Puzala. I think many of my fellow botanists, uh, including Dr. Bande, uh, Dashmi Shivastav, Dr. Kapgate, and they have seen this area. Look, prolific areas. There's the most beautiful areas. Still, we can see see those areas where still uh, after the rains, if you go specially, you get a big catch of those uh, skeletons and the uh, eggs and the tongue masses. And you can see how beautifully the turtles. They are preserved here, intact. 
these are from dengar to pizza so it's a beautiful association so the dinosaurs were not alone we have to also see that what reptiles were there but then this with the increasing uh, arrival of the deccans and uh, with the uh, volcanism they were adversely affected other than that you see my friend mr uh, anu bhobre his this day is work we are recovered a lot many uh, lizards from this area not only from pizora uh, dongaga but here also in the malwa where we are working together we are getting where you can see beautiful many by lizard books so we have all types of different groups and families of reptiles why that diversity was there so oh yeah then after this extend i will just try to because it may be special interest to my belly botanist friend because i don't work on 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 the plants i have a little idea about it because these dinosaurs you know coprolite dumba they are reported since uh, 19 uh, uh, 29 by metley and all but he reported four to five of of coprolite of which the largest one based on some dinosaur bones he said that they can be um, uh, they can belong to the sauropod or pycnosaur dinosaur but it was strongly objected by many other because there was nothing inside the coprolitic mass there was no plant tissues and nothing so we were not really able to prove to what type of uh, animals or reptiles this fellow but it was fairly big but based on the association only methi tried to describe the type a say coprolite dinosaur it is a you know say a dicere pizora where it is over by taken to have your dinosaur bones and reptiles these are the limit are import type in sediment and you have a gonara sediment where you get plants and all and it is uh, the field where you can see every year they kill it before the onset of the monsoon and the big catch of this coprolites and bones and eggs comes from this so you have to ensure if you want to make a real collection you have to ensure that during the summer only when they till the field you have to go and but this area is a large attraction for the students you can really go make the collections measure the state uh, this measurement state collect your own specimens and bring to your lab these are some of the coprolites which are fine it was in the uh, 1986 88 while working on this pizora dongor gawa i i came across uh, some coprolites which had really plants inside them so it was the first time that i was able to find that it was 98 that this coprolitic mass is described by mcclean uh, 1929 they had plant tissues and that i was really not knowing how how best to study then uh, i tried to prepare to thin section they were giving up and my pale botanist friend said that uh, they are not preserving good the same structure is not there and they are not solidified Now, but then in the way I tried to prepare the very polished uh, diamond polished section, and then I scanned them under very high resolution, 800, 1200 resolution, and there I was able to see many of these plant tissue inside the dung mass. You can see here, this is cut along the transfer section. You can see the plant tissue, and if I prepare the polished section, I am getting the this plant tissue. My fellow botanists, friend, they have been trying to help me uh, with the identification of that. you can see how these coprolites and different shape or different type were there and i am telling you because we are getting plant in the uh, in the dung mass coprolite but the but the problem is as i said you in the nandongarga uh, is the only basin where you are getting a lot of peri, um, uh, this mega flora there and then in pizora mostly we get from the polga that is the base section here you can see varieties of palms are there and some angus palms are there some brachy palms some arachnids like things are there so this is the mega which is coming from there but then uh, the sediments like it are sediment they are very scarce you are not really probably present this plant tissues are mostly concentrated only in the dung mass uh, uh, by, by, by what is uh, getting along in the limita sediment because the dinosaurs they ate these plants and they were concentrated in the dung mass and there is also a story when you like to look at that Uh, these are some of the plants because uh, this is given Manchester and Tom Cattis uh, and others who are working in that because they have shown some of these slides. This uh, whatever mega you are seeing, they are based preserved in the intertrepid sediment. Such sediments and preservation and diversity of the flora is not there in the limited times because in the intertrepid there where things were trying to be humid to some humid we also get uh, many red balls and the bauxite and things that uh, so there was a shift in the climate. and that's why uh, you have a lot of diversity and new plants appearing so jo diverse the uh, deccan volcano is in affected diverse uh, adversely the affected but it had also favorable for growth and diversification some of the flora especially of the angus palmate flora and you see some of this i think of that is 
you can see the attack reconstruction, what was there in the thought at in time before the arrival of the attack. And you can see these some of the mega flora and because they are they are in a better position to tell me. So the intertrapeans, they are better after the arrival of the traps because the humid conditions, things were there. They were good hydrated and they, all these sediments and lakes, they were deposited to fresh lava surface to be covered by, to, by another lava flow. And you see, when I said the dung mass, whatever we get, sauropod like many complex herbivores, as you see, whatever you see in the present day mammals, who are typical herbivores, their dental mechanism is very strong. But here you, you can see, it's a very weak dentition as far as sauropods. But our titanic sauropods, which to attribute with, with these uh, tongues, you see they are very weak dentition. They cannot chew, they cannot masticate. So because of this, they lack many complex herbivore adaptation of contemporary on the herbivorous dinosaurs because they had some other type of design. They were not, their skulls were not specially designed to masticate all that. And here you see, now if you look at that dinosaur, those, Plant tissues which we have been trying to study, of course, the real part of my paleobotanist. Said. Now, this titanos are preferred dropping soft tissue. We can none of the dumb masses we are getting any woody, hard tissue. Preferred tissues of higher plant is their solid diet, included angiosperm, conifers, and periopite. Hard tissue also not compatible with that jaw mechanism. We are getting flowers, we are getting spongia, we are getting soft tissues, all things are. You can see here, it will never support. And uh, throughout their uh, the life, this dentitions or teeth, they were under the replacing status. So you are getting with the soft tissue. So their jaw mechanism never supported. So they were just cropping the soft tissue of the higher plant and it was their preferred habitat. And of course, some of them, uh, uh, also along with this, uh, because also along with the dinosaur tongue, we, we also reported uh, along with the Vandana Prasad uh, of Pili Botan Institute and later on also, uh, uh, we also record presence of grasses, grass phytolage within the dung masses. So that shows that with based on the DNA dating, that was dated at least 100 years before the today. So the origin of the angels, especially the grasses, goes back even to late Cretaceous and even to early Cretaceous, where the grasses, what we call it, a Poachy family was there, and within that also, uh, we have the rice family. Uh, I really don't know, I think, it, I find it that they call it Oraiji family, or Iraji something, that shows up. But this, uh, but earlier it was a concept that dinosaurs were never a grassy family. But some of these things, they can be ingested through the water and things like that. So we have presence of grasses. That means the entire world in the, in the Cretaceous times also, it was full of diversified angels from. So it was not only that, only CT plants were present, during the dinosaur plant, but also the uh, grasses which were they were including the rice memory. And it was for the first time the, we recorded the rice uh, from the late Cretaceous, uh, the as old as late Cretaceous from India, and that was the oldest recorded from the in the world. And I think that's all. And thank you very much, organizers, especially Dr. Rajesh Dayakasa and all the others and all the participants. Uh, for giving me this honor and uh, share with you whatever I have acquired in course of my uh, 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 work and research in Geological Survey of India. Thank you so much, sir. Very good. Thank Dr. you so Bhavan. much, sir. Very Thanks a lot. Lecture, now, you, after you, seeing very your presentation, I could clearly understand why Dr. Kabate, Kabgate, sir, and Dr. Rajesh Daigaukar, sir, were not uh, willing to leave this hall unless and until you deliver your lecture. I was asking them to go and have lunch, but they were not ready to do so. That is really, that can be clearly seen in your presentation. It was a lovely presentation. Thank you so much for being with us, Thank sir. You, sir. You can clearly Man. understand why you are <coughs> said that, it is clearly said that he is the man behind the Jurassic Park of India. Thank you. <laughs> A national Thank award winner is with sir. us. Thank you. Very uh, much. With this, I also like to thank you, thank uh, Dr. Sushma Borkar, ma'am, for being with us and chairing this uh, whole ah, session. Thank you so much. I would, thank you so much, sir. I would thank ask you, Dr. Borkar. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It was it nice was to very, see you. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I, I would like to meet you, sir. I would love to have some work. It's my privilege. Yes, yeah, it's yeah, my yeah. privilege. Yes. 
Ma'am, I would love to have some words from you uh, yes, on this yes, particular yes. session. Uh, at the outset, let me first thanks to the organizers, especially Dr. Rahegaonkar, for giving me this unique opportunity for chairing the session. As far as the Dr. Mohabe's lecture is concerned, it was an excellent disposition, and it is a scientific refreshment type of delight, sir. You have reported unusual concentration of the dinosaur dung fossil uh, in and around the village of Pisdura in India's western Maharashtra state, and you also highlighted this fossilized waste has helped to conclude about the biology of the animal and backdrop them. These are fascinating fossils provide insight into the diet of extinct animals and the paleobiology of the Cretaceous period. A number of fossils of coprolites contain plant evidence. This is unique and provide undoubted evidence of the dietary habits from the remains of the plant in the dung mass coprolite. This conclusion were further strengthened when the study of the teeth and the jaw mechanism of this species was found to support the herbivory theory. The fossilized remains of 67 million year old snake found coiled around a dinosaur egg after of a rare insight into the ancient reptile dining habits and evolution. Further, your presentation provides the first evidence that the 11.5 uh, foot long snake fed on eggs and hatchlings of sauropod dinosaur, meaning it was one of the few predators to prey on the long naked herbivores. From your presentation, the study opened a world for the paleo paleontologists, ecologists, paleobotanists, and enthusiasts of era when mammoth creatures roam the planet. Most of all, it provides insight into the ancient food chain that could help clear the enigma surround the evolution of snake. They are thought to have appeared towards the tail end of the dinosaur epic reign. Again, I would like to compliment Dr. Mohabe sir for his comprehensive and tireless work create research te temperament among research scholars, beginners, amateurs, students of paleontology and paleobotany. Exploration of fossil site and collection of sample is hardship and tireless job. The talk which you have delivered, sir, not only inspired the researcher, but it also infused every listener. So thank you very much, sir. And so I'm grateful to Mohabe sir for delivering the useful and unique lecture. So thank you very much. Thank and you, Dr. Now, thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. You have perfectly Over summarized the session. You have perfectly summarized the session in a brief manner. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. You have perfectly Over college on the behalf of the organizing committee of this international thank conference. You. I would love to thank Dr. Mohabe sir for being with us and his patience presence over here till from since 9 a.m. in the morning and delivering such a sweet lecture with us. I would also thank uh, ma'am that Sushma ma'am for being with us. Uh, she is also with us since morning since 9 a.m. in the morning. She was so patient that she also waited this lack of timings also, but it is my sincere apologies for that late starting of this session and I would like to thank you all. Thank you all the participants who have been with us. I would uh, like to inform you that you still have to be with us and continue to be online That's so that we can continue the next session without having any break now. We were uh, supposed to have a lunch break, but uh, to compensate the lack of uh, that lost time during those uh, technical niches, we will continue the presentation session after just completing this session. Uh, I would like to uh, invite Rangari yes. sir to continue the next session. Thank you, everyone.
good afternoon everyone on behalf of this session it gives me pleasure to welcome every delegates participants research scholars and student to this sixth session of e paper presentation in one day international e conference on interdisciplinary innovation in socio economic environmental environment biodiversity conservation through sustainable development 2021 organized by dr ambedkar college of arts commerce and science chandrapur myself asset professor anju rangari from the department of electronics dr ambedkar college of arts commerce and science chandrapur धनंजय मोबे सर इज देअर एज ए होस्ट सो आय रिक्वेस्ट हिम ही शुड लेफ्ट फ्रॉम होस्ट in this session research scholar and academician are invited to present the best paper our organizing committee had selected eight best paper out of which the four paper will be present in this sixth session and remaining four will be present in next session that is in session 7 so before to start the presentation i would like to introduce and welcome the chairperson of this session honorable dr anil n korpen vasar he is a principal in rashtrapita mahatma gandhi science and arts college nagpur district chandrapur maharashtra he has a teaching experience of 28 year he is a recognized supervisor for phd student in botany and environmental science in sgm university sgm amravati university amravati under his supervision seven student are registered for phd and two student awarded phd he published more than 45 paper in national international journal and presented 42 paper in national international conferences and seminar presently he is a chairman of board of study botany in gondwana university gadchiroli he is also the senate member in the same university he is an executive member of international journal a journal of a journal for research student so i welcome dr korpen war sir i think he is there okay uh, he will join very soon so for the presenter there is a, there is a little bit instruction which is provided by the organizing committee dear presenter we must follow the protocol as allowed by the organizing committee i mean the time allowed 
to this session is 50 minutes. Each presenter will have 10 minutes, out of which 7 minutes will be given to present the paper and 3 minutes will be for question and answer. So those who want to ask the question from the participant, they should raise the hand and also mail the question in chat box at the end of each presentation. So we start now. So we will start with So to start with this session, uh, I will call in sequence, the first I will call to present their paper, Dr. Sachin Bahadesar, followed by, that means next person, Miss, uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Sagar Mahalesar, I think he is there, then Firtos Karim ma'am, and lastly, S.B. Nagdev Tesar. So this is the sequence. And through this sequence, we will give you a chance to present their paper. Okay, uh, honorable chairperson till is not joined. So I request all the participants to wait for a few time. As soon as he joined the session, we'll start the presentation. So please consider.
Hello. So here, all the presenters are requested here that our chairperson is not joining the, due to some uh, technical problem. So we will have again some time to join him. So please wait for some time. Sorry to say here, Mr. Sorry, 
uh, Dr. Korpenwar sir is not able to join this session as a chairperson due to some technical problem and hence uh, uh, for this session I substitute as a chairperson Dr. S.R. Gauri sir from Dr. Ambedkar College Chandrapur. So I request him, uh, please get, a, get the chair. So as per the sequence as already given to you, that means all the presentation presenter are request to give their give their presentation as said by me before this so before that i welcome dr sr gauri sir to welcome him I request Dr. Dr. Madam to please hand over the bouquet and welcome him. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. So to start the presentation, I request Dr. Sachin Bahadi, sir, assistant professor from Department of Electronics, Nabira Mahavidale, Katwal, Maharashtra. His title of the paper is Investigation of Structural and Optical Properties of ND dope SN2 nanoparticle by soul gel root. So please, Bade sir, I am request you to join and have the presentation. Thank you, sir. Please share my screen. Please share my screen, sir. Screen, screen. <coughs> Bade, sir. Please share my screen, sir. I am requested. No, I requested. Thank you. Kela hai. Bade sir, screen share. Please share my screen. I am not uh, able to share, share my screen. Because I am not a uh, participant, not uh, able to share, share the screen. Sir, sir, scre sir, please screen share pe aap attend ki kar diye na. So, host disabled participant screen sharing. There is a message, host sharing. Okay. Now I am able to share the screen. Bade sir, we already yes, hosted sir. you, so yes, please yes. share your screen. Yes, uh, screen is visible. Ha, now it is ready, I think. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, once again. So, um, myself, Sachin Bahade, uh, from Department of Electronics, uh, Nabira Mahavidale Katol. Uh, my presentation topic is investigation of structural and optical properties of neodymium dope tin oxide nanorod by soul gel root. So uh, to make this uh, material, I synthesize by using the soul gel root. And uh, to synthesize that uh, nanoparticle, I taken the 8 gram of tin oxide, uh, tin fluoride dehydrate, 
to the ethanol 100 ml ethanol solution then i stirred for the 20 minutes after the 20 minutes as per the doping concentration 0.8% 2.8 or 15 i added the neodymium oxide then after adding the neodymium oxide again i stirred for the 30 minutes after stirred at the 30 minutes i added ammonia solution drop wise and after adding the ammonia solution drop wise uh, this ammonia solution i added up to the ph reach at then after the ph reach at so immediately the white gel settle a uh, white gel is a form uh, and then that white gel i settle for the night after the one night the night uh, white gel are settled i filtered and wash that uh, gel are formed and uh, i removed the chloride and the ammonia after washing that one then that sole i dried for the 80 degree celsius for the 24 hour then after i grinded that uh, sole after the drying that one and i heated for the 500 degree celsius at uh, for the 4 hour then fine nanoparticles are formed okay then after the nanoparticles are formed uh, for the different concentration uh, pure 2 weight percent 5 8 and 15 weight percent i characterize that one uh, i characterize that one and uh, for the structural analysis so uh, to investigate the crystal structure lattice parameter micro strain dislocation density i use the xrd data and uh, after this xrd uh, if you see the xrd we can see if we match this peak that is a 110 peak position so this closely match with the jcpds data 770452 and it found to be tetragonal rutile structure of the tin oxide and uh, if you see the all sample that is 0 to 5 8% 8 and 15 8% we so we see here there is a no secondary phase we observed so there is a no secondary phase we observed and uh, the tetragonal rutile structure is also not changed this is important means uh, when we add the doping concentration that is a nd we added here at the different doping concentration so what happens so after the concentration are increasing some of the peaks are broaden we see here for the two zero pure and the two here the the peaks are somewhat broaden but if we increase the more concentration that is a 15 at weight percent what will happen the highest peak is observed so this is the very highest peak we observed in this one so this is called the uh, this happen due to some structural disorder but uh, we not observed any secondary phase so uh, i find out the uh, lattice parameter and the crystallized size uh, what is the nanoparticle size for that we use the debesserer formula uh, to investigate the uh, texture coefficient we use this one formula to investigate uh, the micro strain we use this one formula and to find out the dislocation density we use this one formula by that uh, we find out the different parameters by using the xrd data so from the xrd data uh, if you see on the table so the concentration are increasing here the particle size initially at 12 nanometer it is uh, decreasing now but then after from the 8 weight percent it is increasing 18 to 62 it means the particle size are changing from 6 to 62 but here the lattice parameter unit cell volume are not changed and it is a very close match with the jcpds data so here that is a volume a lattice volume here is a not changing it means there is a no effect of the or no secondary phase because of the nd concentration it means it is a very uh, 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 the nd uh, that is neodymium very dispersed with the tin oxide so uh, this is the uh, 
if you see the intensity here the intensity here at the zero uh, pure to the eight weight uh, eight weight percentage the intensity is uh, not the too much change but when the concentration is increases so the intensity the, at the 110 is a uh, very much change so uh, if you study the morphological uh, to study the morphological uh, study uh, we take on the same data uh, from the same image we shown here there is a nano rods are observed for the 2% 5 8% 8 and the 15 so for the first three for this one and this one and this one so clearly visible the nano rods fine nano rods are observed here but at the weight percent uh, 15 there is some spherical aggregates we observed uh, in this one so this affect the optical and the electrical characteristics so this is the tame image uh, of the weight at uh, 5 weight percent and uh, this clearly uh, closely very closely match with the uh, nano size we observed from the Uh, XRD data. So that is a uh, uh, from the XRD data we observed the seven nanometer size, and this one also uh, that is six at is a very nearly match with the XRD data. So uh, to investigate the crystallization process, uh, so this is the thermogravimetric uh, uh, analysis uh, plot, and in this thermogravimetric analysis plot uh, observed. Uh, at the weight percent, five weight percent in the dope SNO2. So we observed here clearly the linear weight loss is observed from this one. From this point, that is that is to the 250 uh, degree Celsius, there is a clearly weight loss we observed. And uh, some of the weight loss then after that is at the 371, 621 is a major weight loss we observed. so uh, it may be uh, because of the sure. removal of the crystallizing water or oh bond associate with the metal plane and uh, this clearly indicates so there is a crystallization process are improved of uh, improved after the 250 degree celsius so then to study the optical uh, characteristics so first uh, we do, we do Uh, we done the ftir analysis in the ir plan uh, from by using the ir so this ir peaks are broadening Hello. if the uh, concentration of the ndr increases so if you see the pure Hello. one and the this concentration me, of the ndr increase you can clearly see here Please. the peaks are broadening okay so this is due to the uh, at the 450 uh, per centimeter you can see here there is a symmetric mode Doctor Bahadur sir, thousand, please conclude. Come to the can, con conclusion of your work. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, from this uh, FTR data, we can uh, we can conclude uh, there is a slight changes are the broadening of the peaks when we concentration and increases. So this may be because of the vibration of the edge of water. so uh, to investigate the luminance study we do uh, we done the photoluminescence analysis and for that at the excitation 400 nanometer at the excitation 400 nanometer and at the room temperature uh, we take on the data and in this one there is a slight shift in the pl peak position before or after the 220 nanometer so there is a slight shift position we observed and there is a oxygen vacancies are the most common defects that play very important role in the luminescence process so there is a slight increase in the intensity of the luminescent emission we observed in this uh, uh, excitation when at the uh, uh, 400 nanometer then at the emission 300 nanometer i, I observed the excitation spectra in that one there is a broad excitation band we observed at the 350 to 450 nanometer and one small excitation band we observed at the 450 to the uh, 500 nanometer and uh, we observed after the 450 to 475 nanometer band there is a very poor intensity bands uh, or the peaks we observed so um, so Hello. in the uh, 15 weight at percent 
फोर सेवेंटी विद इंक्रीज इन द इनिशियल इंटेंसिटी विद द डिक्रीज इन द डोपिंग इफ द सैंपल्स द कॉन्सेंट्रेशन आर इंक्रीजिंग देर यू बी वी प्लीज कम टू द कंक्लुजन इंटेंसिटी इज आर डिक्रीजिंग दैट इज द ब्रॉडनिंग प्लीज कम टू द कंक्लुजन ओके सो then i did the uv vins analysis so from that the we observed here the absorbance when the doping concentration are increases we, uh, from this uh, uh, absorbance uh, we taken uh, by using the talk flat we observed here there is a slight uh, changes in the band gap uh, that is a 3.18 and uh, all are the near to the uh, the bulk material that is a 3.6 electron volt so all are the very closely match with that one very uh, just uh, some slightly less than from the bulk material and again the urbaj energy value is also uh, affected because of the some disorder so this uh, this shows the energy value urbaj energy value are somewhat changing are showing the uh, there is a somewhat uh, energy disorder okay and uh, I, when i study the dc electrical conductivity so this dc electrical conductivity shows at the pure one we seen the highest uh, dc uh, electrical conductivity but when the doping concentration are increases so this dc uh, electrical conductivity sir, directly go to, to the result and discussion sir please directly okay. go to the result and discussion okay so so the structural properties of the nanoparticles <laughs> that Lattice parameter, micro strain, and dislocation okay, are affected by the doping. Is also affected because of the structural disorder, and uh, and the DC electrical conductivity of the field we observed, and it will increase with the sorry DC electrical conductivity are decrease here with the decrease increase in the uh, uh, doping concentration, but increase in the temperature. Thank you. if anyone pa participant can ask the question you may ask one question and then we will proceed further i request any one of the participant can ask the question to the presenter otherwise we will go to the next presenter chat box dr gugre sir chat box नको बेटा ओके नो क्वेश्चन इज देयर सो वी विल प्रोसीड फॉर द नेक्स्ट प्रेजेंटर थैंक यू सर मिस्टर सागर महारे सर ही इज फ्रॉम आर्ट्स कॉमर्स एंड साइंस कॉलेज सिरपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट वाशिम महाराष्ट्र हिज टाइटल ऑफ पेपर इज aeromycological analysis of airborne fungal spore over cotton field from nukti and ghatanji region of yavatmal district sir please this is over to you kuthe hai bada e mahale sir महाले सर हेलो महाले सर प्लीज स्टिक टू द टाइम विद इन सेवन मिनिट यू हैव टू कवर ऑल द टॉपिक एंड आफ्टर दैट रिजल्ट एंड डिस्कशन एंड वी विल गिव द थ्री मिनिट्स फॉर द क्वेश्चन एंड आंसर ओके सर प्लीज माय स्लाइड सर हेलो महा सर प्लीज शो माय साइड सर यस सर आर यू गेटिंग यस सर माय पीपीटी स्लाइड इज सेंडिंग फॉर ईमेल टू द ऑर्गेनाइजिंग कमिटी शेयर द पीपीटी पी 
87. Show, show my PPT, sir. Okay, okay. Wait for one minute. Okay, sir. PPT 8.87, PPP. PP 87. Okay, okay. Mahale, sir, your PPT is okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your PPT is uh, visible. Okay, sir, start, sir. Start, sir. Sir. Good afternoon, all of you, respected sir and madam. Myself, Dr. Sagar Mahale. Uh, this is the presentation for the International Conference on Interdisciplinary Innovation in Socio-Economic Environment, Biodiversity Conservation through Sustainable Development. So, my research topic is aeromycological analysis of airborne fungal spore or cotton field from Nukti. Ghatanji region of Yavatmal district, Maharashtra state, India. Next, the introduction. Next, next slide. Sir. Next slide, please. Next. Introduction. Aeromycology is a branch of biology that studies the organic particles such as bacteria, fungal spores, very small insects, pollen grains, and viruses, which are passively transported by the air. Aeromycology branch of the botany which deals with the study of fungal flora in air. In air, in the ancient times, Michael in 1729 found the clouds of fungal spore liberated into the atmosphere. It is after a long gap. Pasture, 1861, by his germ theory of disease, shows that the airborne bacteria and fungal spore in the air are the carriers of many common germs. Next, the background of aeromycology. Aeromycology study includes not only the fungal spore liberation from the sources, transport, deposition, but also their effects on plants, animals, humans, and even over food building work of art pieces. There are more than 80,000 species of fungi. These have evolved with the elaborate mechanism for their dispersal. Due to the small fungal spore, they may suspend in the atmosphere for a long time and causes the number of plant diseases respiratory disorders, and many other allergic elements. The knowledge of concentration of airborne fungal spore is especially important for agriculture and occupational medicine. Next, aeromycology is one of the ecological science and draws the achievements of the mycology, taxonomy, climatology, and allergology. The studies are being carried out all over the world to study the fungal spectrum. The knowledge can be useful tools in agrobiology, particularly with respect to pathogenic fungi. On the basis of aeromycological data, the high concentration of pathogenic spores can be predicted and proper plant protections means can be applied. Aeromycology has gathered momentum in the new millennium. It has become a very active field, interest of the many researchers throughout the world in the recent times. Next, the applications of aerobiology. The aeromycology having the various applications, that is the plant, animals, phytogeography, human pathology, palynology, air pollutant, entomology, metrology. Air spore monitoring program are routinely used by the plant pathologies to provide the various types of information on airborne fungal spore and pollen grains. Next, the Indian cotton industry. India has emerged as the second largest producer of the cotton in the world and occupies the first position in the terms of the total area under the crop production at over 9.44 billion hectares. Thus, India accounts for around 37.5% of the global cotton area and contributes 26% of the global cotton produce. 
Cotton in India provides a direct livelihood to 6 million farmers and about 40 to 50 million people are employed in the cotton trade processing. The cotton plants subject to infections of various fungi, bacteria and viruses which leads to the reduction in the gross yield and deterioration in quality causing the depreciation of market value. Efforts are placed to increase the current productivity, bring it loser, closer to the closed world. The cotton cultivated state. The various Indian states have the cultivated the cotton plant that is the Gujarat, Maharashtra, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, it is. In uh, Maharashtra, in Yavatma district, the Ghatanji region is the main, uh, main region of the cotton plant uh, in Vidarbha, which is usually sees the most farmer suicide, saw a deep in the taste. Next. Yavatmal is a worst affected district in Vidarbha region where farmers are suiciding since the last seven years. Next. My research site is Nukti Ghatanji region. Ghatanji is a taluka and municipal council in Yavatmal district, state Maharashtra. It belongs to Vidarbha region and Amravati division. The land is mainly basalt type and mixed back black soil. This region has a deciduous flora. Cotton is the main produce agriculture, is the primary way to source of living good. Many cotton ginning and pressing factories located in the city and nearby. Next, topic area of investigation. Keeping in mind such as the huge impact of these dust allergens on living beings and storage material, the present work title, Aeromycological Analysis of Airborne Fungal Spore or a Cotton Field, from Nukti, Ghatanji region, Yotmar was undertaken. The present aeromycological study was carried out over a consecutive four years from the 2015 to August 2018 to find out the occurrence of aeromycoflora. Nukti was selected for the study. Next, material and methods. Material and methods are divided into the following two types. First is the aerobiological survey and second one is the collection of analysis. The survey, the air sampling was conducted of two types, that is the qualitative and quantitative. The study site, that is the location one site, first is Nukti from the south side of Ghatanji, the study of air spora. The present investigation was carried out by the sampler method. In sampler method, the various steps are carried out. First one is the rotor road air sampler technique. The second one is the collection of data. Then third one is the mounting media. Then next one is the preparation of slide and identification. Then the results. Next, 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 next. Sir, please come next. to the conclusion. Next. Yes, sir. Next. 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 These are the photographs of the diversity of outdoor air spora observed in the cotton field in the study region. Next. The table one showing the mean contribution, standard deviation, and variance of various fungal spore or a cotton field of Nukti site from 2015 to 18. This uh, table is showing the main contribution, standard deviation, and variance towards the four year from my study. Next, this is the zygomycotina, ascomycotina. Next, next, this is the basidomycotina. Next, then uh, deuteromycotina. This graph showing the the mean contribution, standard deviation, and variance of various fungal spore or a cotton field of Nukti site. This graph showing the, the various species formation from the percentage. Next. This graph showing the various percentage to observe in the Nukti site. The first one that the higher percentage of ascomycotina, then uh, next one is the deuteromycotina, then third one is the basidiomycotina, then uh, other types and zygomycotina. Next, this is the percentage 
for the various species, the zygomycotina having the 38.49 percent, then then ascomycotina, ascomycotina having the 38.49 percent, zygomycotina 25.93. Deuterium residue mycotina 14.57 percent. Next, next, the present work is outcome over the series of intensive studies conducted by the period 20, uh, 2015 to 19 in study region. The completion of such a comprehensive data was set up prepare the aeromycoflora monograph for the study region. The a total 46 fungal spores were isolated in the air site of the cotton field. The present study uh, revealed the presence of 42 species of fungi, as belong to 37 genera, observed in the aerobiological study in our, around the cotton plant. The Sir, various sites concluded. of the study region, out of 42 fungal species, the four fungal species belonging to four genera from Zygomycotina, 25 species of 21 genera of Ascomycotina. Four fungal spores from the Basidomycotina, ten fungal species of the ten genera of the Deuteromycotina, and two fungal species of two Hello. genera of Maximycotina. Mahale, sir, please conclude. The major fungi observed in. Please conclude. The major fungi. Okay, sir. Conclusion. The present work entitled the Aeromycological Investigation of Cotton Field from Nukti Ghatanji region Yotmar was completed in four years. The above comprehensive investigation and experimental data would uh, stimulate further research in the aeromycological and aeropathological field in the context of the cultivated crop plant. The aeromycological study would be useful to design a long term plant pathology control management plan for agri sector. It is also uh, useful for those human resources who are directly or indirectly concerned with the agriculture work. The plant fungal pathogens play a crucial role in the profitability, quality, and quantity of the plant production. The aerofungi causes an effect on the main production with the economic logic of farming crop like cotton. The study would be helpful in efficient disease forecasting system and preventing cotton crop plant from different diseases and also help to increase the productivity of this crop in Nukti Ghatanji region of Yodmar district. Thank this you very much, sir, for your nice presentation. Then, thank you, sir. Next presenter. Thank you, Mahal, sir. If anyone uh, participant can ask the question, if you have a question, you can post it in the chat box and we will take that uh, question. Otherwise, we will go to the next presenter. If there is any question in the chat box, there is no question in the chat box. Therefore, we go for the next presenter. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now, we have the next presenter is Ms. Firtos <laughs> from Department of Zoology, RTM Nagpur University, Nagpur, Maharashtra. Her title of paper is Studies on aloe vera in induced alteration in corpus gland of albino rat. So please, madam, this is PP-147. Hello. Please share my Hello. Hi, ma'am. Share my PPT. Okay. We have shared your PPT, sir. Please you start, ma'am. Yes, sir. PPT is not visible. <laughs> ma'am. Your PPT yeah. is visible to us. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, myself, Firdos Karim, from Department of Zoology, RTM Nagpur University, Nagpur. My topic of presentation is studies on aloe vera induced alteration in copper gland of a 
first of all brief introduction of my topic aloe vera aloe vera is the uh, any any uh, body from a smoothy plant aloe vera it belong to the family liliaceae it is a perennial plant and it consists of about 9.5% water and 0.5% solid material this solid material consists of vitamins minerals and enzymes polysaccharide sugar lignins and etc although aloe vera has various beneficial effects on human health therefore it is suggested to take it but some worker also reported its adverse effects on some organs of the body including male reproductive system the so next slide please next slide aloe vera the extract have reported to have various pharmacological properties like wound healing anti inflammatory effect anti fungal effect it is hypoglycemic and it is gastroprotective in nature so the urethral gland is one of the important accessory sex gland in male reproductive system so this study is aim to is uh, aim the effect of aloe vera on uh, copper gland which is also known as bulbo urethral gland copper gland is one of the important gland in the reproductive system of the male this gland secretes the pre ejaculate during the sex arousal which contain the glycoprotein and this uh, pre ejaculate is very important it lubricate the urethra for the passage of ejaculation it expels the residue of urine and dead cells and mucus through the urethral meter preparing a clean and lubricated pathway for ejaculation this secretion is alkaline with neutralized residue acidity in the male urethra now next slide please now material method which i have used for this study animal model i have used the rattus norwegicus rat male strain which is backward male about 2170 to 10 g in weight preparation of aloe vera gel for the administration aloe vera gel is prepared from the fresh leaves of the aloe vera it is cleaved and our uh, epidermis is removed and the gel is uh, extracted every time fresh for the administration to the rat next slide please experimental design i have kept uh, group the animals into two group group 1 and group 2 six animals in group 1 and six animal in group 2 in group 1 serve as a control while group 2 is experimental group 2 is administered aloe vera daily orally 25 mg per kg of body weight for 45 days duration and in control group uh, saline solution were given to the control group for the same duration that is 45 days organ weight and body weight was recorded uh, body is recorded before and after the treatment and then uh, after completion of the experimental pro protocol that is 45 days the animal is sacrificed using the ether and then a copper gland is removed out and then study next slide please studied the histological techniques uh, copper gland is fixed in the bones fixative for 24 hours and then dehydrated in graded series of the alcohol then cleared in xylene embedded in the paraffin wax and sections are cut at 5 micron at, at rotatory microtome and stained with he stain that is uh, uh, emetoxylene and eosin for study under light microscope next slide Result which I have obtained after this experimental protocol: the effect of uh, aloe vera on the body weight and copper gland weight. The body weight in the control group is increased. Uh, in this graph, this showing, and the body weight of the group two, that is experimental group, is decreased. This suggests that there may be some deleterious effect of aloe vera on the body of the male rat. In the second graph, it shows the weight of the uh, copper gland. in the uh, control group the weight of the copper gland is increases there is in case of the control group uh, sorry experimental group the weight of the copper gland is decreases next slide histological structure of the copper gland after h staining of the slide i have got the result 
and it is photographed by the uh, specific camera this uh, uh, diagram one shows the ts of the corpus gland of the control rat which shows the number of acini which secrete the secretion in the center and diagram 3 diagram 3 shows the shrinkage of the acini and the secretion is very less less secretion is present in the lumen and uh, alveoli become shrink due to the effect of the aloe vera diagram 2 is the diagram enlarged diagram of diagram 1 and diagram 4 is also the enlarged diagram of in uh, diagram 2 So these are the histological structure which explain the effect of aloe vera on the rat copper gland. Next, from the above results, it is concluded that administration of aloe vera has the uh, alteration in the body weight as well as in the histology of the copper gland. Therefore, it is concluded that aloe vera has deleterious effect or can we say hazardous effect on the copper gland therefore copper gland play a very important role in the fertility of the male if the copper gland is affected by the aloe vera then fertility is also affected so after long term administration of the aloe vera the fertility of male may be suppressed next slide these are the references which i have used for my study next slide these are all the references which i have used next slide okay thank you ma'am thank, thank you very much ma'am for completing your presentation within a time is there any uh, question in the chat box the side, please <laughs> there is no question in the chat box so we may go to the next presenter okay this is the last presenter in this session mr s b nagdev nagdev te sir nagdev te assistant professor department of physics government science college garchhali maharashtra his title of paper is photo activities of sr nb2 o6 nanoparticle prepared by co precipitation method so please this is over to you sir please join hello hello sir good afternoon one and all hello am i audible yes sir hello? yes sir you are audible sir uh, uh, please share my screen ha huh? i have sent uh, an email your screen is visible to us okay i put ha huh, yeah yeah <coughs> okay uh, myself <coughs> dr sanjay b nagyote uh, from pg department amlokshan mahavidyalay yavatmal and uh, my research work on uh, photo activities of srm26 a nano particle synthesis by co precipitation methods now introductions Uh, the photo activities such as photo illumination photo catalysis are highly important applications for inorganic material pl material are very useful in led industry and laser applications pl tendency in many material is generally due to the doping of rare earth elements as they act as a active illumination centers photo catalysis is a tendency of a material to separate out hydro h2 ox and uh, o2 from water or degrade from organic waste uh, from material under irradiations of ultraviolet or visible light the alkaline earth neobeds uh, a2 plus nb2o6 bear tendency of photo illumination and photo catalysis without doping rare earth elements sr n2 o6 as is a um, important member of alkaline earth neobed uh, stabilized mostly in colobite uh, phase next uh, this material has a studied for dielectric property photoluminescence and photocatalysis 
but these properties are very are influenced by the method of preparations of crystal structures and size of the particles there are various methods of preparation such as the electrochemical sol gel uh, combustion hydrothermal solid state reactions and uh, co precipitations methods uh, for the good quality of srn2 6 nanoparticle better combustion control better particle morphology we use co precipitations method for the synthesis with some modifications in terms of uh, reactions rate calcination temperatures and reheating in order to introduce oxygen vacancy for the cell active luminescence. Uh, the reheated temperature was maintained at 800 degrees centigrade. Uh, this higher uh, the higher temperature cannot increase the can increase the size of the particle and uh, material deviate from the photocatalysis uh, property. Next. Now uh, synthesis methods. This um, uh, SR and B2O6 material are synthesized by the co-precipitation methods and uh, chemicals used for this uh, uh, synthesis purpose are um, should be all chemicals should be uh, air gates. Uh, initially, uh, the niobium pentoxide was converted to um, transparent solutions of niobium pentafluorides by heating uh, this uh, niobium pentoxide in HF um, in hot water bath. Uh, then uh, the another because the solutions of SR, uh, SRCl to 6 SPO was prepared by dissolving in distilled water, and these two solutions were added in um, one beaker and uh, mixed well by using a magnetic stirrer for three or four hours. Uh, while stirring, excess quantity of concentrated SCl was added to the above solutions to dissolve uh, the strontium fluoride formed during the reactions of. Um, NB uh, niobium pentoxide and SRCl26 S2. The mixture of um, ammonium oxalate and ammonium hydroxide was added uh, drop wise to precipitate stromium as oxalate and neomate as hydroxide. And during the entire reactions, pH value was maintained to 10, uh, 10 pH value. The precipitate obtained in process was then filtered and washed several times with a distilled water. Then this uh, powder was dry, was then dried at uh, 70 degrees centigrade in ovens uh, for 24 hours. The obtained uh, sample was um, calcinated at uh, six, uh, 615 degrees centigrade for uh, four hours to get fine powders. Then it uh, reheated uh, at, at temperatures at 100 degrees centigrade for six uh, hours. Next. Uh, these are the XRD patterns of the synthesis uh, srn 6 and from the XRD pattern it's clear that uh, this XRD patterns uh, will match with the uh, file number uh, 772431 uh, and it is clearly indicated that the compound is stabilized in monolithic phase with the lattice parameters are as shown in figures. A is equal to uh, 7.719 and uh, strong unit and we uh, and all these years shown here now uh, this uh, morphology sur surface morphology of this uh, sample from the uh, time image of srn 2 6 is shown in the figures it seems that the particles are agglomerated highly agglomerated and they are in a irregular sphere like uh, morphology the average particle size uh, from this uh, term figures, it is clear that the average particle size is found to be of uh, 4 to nanometers. And from the XRD calculations, it is found to be um, 25 nanometers. Uh, it is crystalline nature was confirmed from the sad uh, image and XRD patterns of these uh, samples. In the sad image, the um, uh, sad image as shown in the figure B, um, image the circle circular rings with brings with bright spot can be assigned to the nano crystalline nature of this uh, sample and these are the fpr study and uh, uh, roman spectra of this sample from this uh, uh, from the uh, fpr study uh, it is clear that the band corresponding to 645 uh, per centimeters uh, be assigned to the niobium oxide bond, which is the characteristic bonds of these uh, polybite structures. And also there is a uh, 
469 uh, to be ba uh, bending vibrations of O and B O uh, binds uh, angle, which are characteristic bind up against uh, SR and B2 or Coulombite structures. It is uh, from this uh, Raman shape, it is also clear so, uh, that the um, 400, uh, four, 546. Uh, per centimeter is corresponding to the uh, neobeam oxide uh, stretching bonds, and all these are uh, shown here. Uh, uh, this is the UVS spectrum of this uh, sample, and UVS diffusion uh, reflectance spectrum and corresponding um, KM transfer diffusion spectra. Nagdev, sir, please, uh, please conclude. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, uh, and this uh, band uh, gap is found to be 3.97 electrons hold uh, to uh, corresponding to the absorption set of 327 nanometers. This means ultraviolet photons having wavelength less than 327 nanometers will be uh, absorbed uh, by the uh, compounds. Uh, these are these uh, uh, PL spectra of these uh, samples and from this it is observed that uh, emissions uh, peaks bears highly intense at uh, 461 nanometers, uh, this self-activate PL may be a, a of, um, consequence of the oxygen deficiency, which is the property of the photoluminescence. Uh, this uh, is the graph photocatalysis of uh, S2 evaluations activity of synthesized monoclinic SR and 6 and it is observed here that uh, S2 evaluations tendency of SR and 6 nanoparticle is about uh, 30 to 40 uh, times more than reported value of uh, uh, monoclinic SR and 6 uh, The relative absorbance of MB with uh, without catalysis. And this figure shows that this absorption, percentage of absorption of light by the MB uh, with SR and NBO6 nanoparticles are rapidly uh, without, with a short interval of times. Uh, whereas without catalyst, it's fall to be um, uh, near about a 7.5 percentage in uh, 50 minutes. Uh, this indicates the, the presence of SR NB2O6 uh, NB2 act as the excellent uh, catalyst agent uh, under U, UV ultraviolet light and conclusion. SR NB2O6 nanoparticles synthesized by co-precipitation methods success, uh, successfully. Uh, successfully the SR NB2O6 nanoplastic, um, SR NB2O6 uh, powder stabilized in monoclinic phase uh, with lattice parameter A is equal to 7.719 and strong unit B is equal to and this. Uh, the uh, um, optical band gap, uh, band gap energy as estimated by the UVS spectrum and KM theory was found to be uh, 3.79 electrons volts. Um, the nanoparticles bear absorption group uh, NP206 from which self-activated uh, photoluminescence or originates. Uh, the present nanoparticles of the SR NP206 excellent S2 evolution tendency uh, for pure water under ultraviolet light. And uh, thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Hello. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. Uh, because of the time constraint, uh, we will not take any uh, questions. So we will proceed for the next presenter. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sorry, sir, there is no any uh, participant. Okay. Now, this Now this is the time to have a vote of thanks. So I am so grateful for this opportunity for vote of thanks. I would like to express our deep gratitude to the honorable cha chairperson SR Gauri sir for his presence in this session. Also I would like to express my Heartfelt gratitude to all the participants for showing their interest in this session. I also thanks to our technical team to make this session successful. Once again, I thanks everyone for making this session successful. Now, I request Dr. Bina Mumam to conduct the next session for the e-conference.
Thank you, sir, for giving me a chance to uh, preside this uh, session. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The Galaxy of Intellectual, invited guests, teachers, and my dear friends. It's give me immense pleasure to extend to very, very warm welcome on behalf of Dr. Ambedkar College of Arts, Commerce, and Science, Chandrapur, to the International Conference, seventh technical session, e-paper presentation. I'm going to invite chairperson, Dr. M. Subhas, sir. Sir, please join. I kindly request Dr. M. Subhas, sir, to chair this session. Thank you I so welcome much. Chairperson, Honorable Dr. M. Subhas, sir, Principal, Janta Mahavidyalaya, Chandrapur. He is working as a principal in Janta Mahavidyalaya, Chandrapur, last 16 years. He published 26 research papers. He worked as a Senate member, RTM University, Nagpur, and member of Prospective Plan Committee, Gondwana University, Gadjiroli. Working as an academic counseling member of Gondwana University, Gadjiroli, working as a member of University, BCUD Committee, Adult Education Committee, and NSS Committee. His college magazine, Mohar 2006 and 7, Consolation Prize at Rashtrasant Tukroji Maharaj, Nagpur University, NSS Best College Award received by RTM Nagpur University and Gondwana University, Gadjiroli. Principal Award received by Chanda Shikshan Prasarak Mandar, Chandrapur. This is a short introduction of chairperson. Welcome, sir, and thank welcome you, so all dear participants. Now it's time for presentation. There are four yeah. present, uh, presenters in this uh, technical session, namely Sangeeta Nankar, madam, Ajay Murkute, sir, Sanjay Patil, sir, Dr. T. Navnita, madam. I request all of them to be ready the, to present their paper. There will be allowed 10 minutes for presentation, including question and answer session. So I would like to invite Sangeeta D. Nankar, madam, to start her presentation. Please share PPT of Sangeeta, madam. Good afternoon to everyone. I am Dr. Sangeeta Dean Ankar, going to present my paper on algae used as a bioindicator bio of organic pollution. Then I was, I was selected this topic in that time because uh, the Rajura Taluka, which is present in Chandrapur district, it is highly polluted. So for that reason, uh, I uh, made paper on that, uh, in that play. Uh, then, uh, in this uh, study. Madam, uh, madam, one minute. Madam, you tell me your paper name. The Title present the study paper. deals with the water pollution and uh, water pollution that highly affected in that uh, Rajura Taluka. And in that Rajura Taluka, when, we, uh, when I um, uh, do research on that algae, that algae, algae indicate the uh, organic pollution in that uh, particular place. So for this study, I use the farmer, uh, which is one of the botanists, uh, according to that farmer, uh, I calcul calculate the organic pollutions uh, in that Rajura place. Then pollution was one of the most serious crises that are facing today. So due to increased urbanization and industrialization, surface and water pollution has become crucial problem. So, uh, due to constant growth, growth of population and industrial progress, the nature of aquatic environment undergoes numerous changes and deteriorating its quality. So, bioindicator are taxa 
or groups of organism that show signs they are affected with environment. So uh, for this reason, the algae which is grow in that place that is affected. So due to organic pollution, number of algae that become less. <coughs> for to study uh, for the, this uh, study, I uh, I um, uh, collected the samples from these uh, three sites. I selected three sites of Vardha River, which is located that river which is located in Rajura Taluka. For that, uh, the three sites of Vardha River, I was uh, I selected. Then Rajura, uh, which is highly polluted by uh, WCL coal mines in Ballarpur and Rajura area, MS Ballarpur Industries, reduces effluents from 92 MLD to 43 MLD using water. So effluents after treatment discharge into river Vardha. Then uh, water samples collected monthly, water samples collected monthly, uh, in that time, June 2009 to May 2011. Uh, in that time, I, I was done this work. The water samples and algal samples analyzed by Palmer uh, 1969 uh, pollution index uh, show high or low organic pollution. The algal species which shows pollution tolerant were noted. Then according to Palmer, 1969 made first attempt to identify and prepare the list of genera and species of algae tolerant to organic pollution. Then algae used as a uh, bioindicator of pollution has been studied by rating pollution tolerant algae in Vardha River based on the report of Palmer, 1959. Then uh, in this work, uh, I got total of uh, 77 genera and 163 species of algae were recorded from three sampling sites of river Vardha. Uh, then uh, uh, the phosphate, phosphate which is present in that uh, uh, polluted site that promo promote the uh, abundance of diatoms. Uh, Harish 2002. Then uh, blue green algae occurs at site two while in site one and three it uh, occurs uh, in uh, lesser form. Um, then uh, according to Palmer, uh, the, there is a calculation uh, like, uh, like that calculation or according to uh, uh, him, I calculate the number of algae which is present in three different sites. That is our uh, zero to 10 means there is a lack of organic pollution. Then, 10 to 15, that means the, there is a moderate pollution. Then 15 to 20, that means probable high organic pollution. So accordingly, this when I collected that algal samples and when I see and calculate. So, so uh, in this uh, uh, table, I calculate the number of polluted sites. Uh, in, the, in which sites there is a uh, less number of algae and in which site there is a high number of algae. Then uh, all this study, in, in my study, uh, that show the sites one, two, and three, the river were showed confirmed high, high organic pollution. Uh, the Palmer 1969 suggested that algae are reliable indicators of water pollution confirmed by present research work. The diversity change in algal community analyzed by Palmer G algal genus and species index to compare the water quality in respect to environmental pollutions of Vardha River. Thank you. Okay. Now paper is open for discussion. Yala. Any questions, please ask. Any questions? Can I audible? Hello, Sangeeta, you can audible? Yeah. Hello? Yes, Hello, sir. Any, any questions? Hello? Yes, sir. You are yes, audible, sir. sir. Yeah, any questions from participants? No question is there in the chat box, sir. Okay, okay. It's okay. So, Carry on. Take second paper. The next presenter, I would like to invite Ajay Murkute, sir, to start his presentation. Please share PPT of Ajay Murkute, sir.
प्रमोल चरा गुड आफ्टरनून सर माइसल डॉक्टर मुरकोटे फ्रॉम आर डी कॉलेज मुलचेरा आई एम गिविंग जस्ट प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन ग्लोबल वॉर्मिंग एंड एनवायरमेंटल इम्बैलेंसेस आई हैव ऑलरेडी सेंट दैट पीपीटी सर इफ यू कूड शेयर देन इट विल बी वेरी स्पीकर पार्टिसिपेंट रिमेनिंग पार्टिसिपेंट The... Your PPT is visible, sir. Murkute, sir, your PPT is visible to us. Okay, sir. Thank you. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry on. Okay, sir. So, as a, this is very uh, burning topic, I chose. I have chosen. So, this is a. Nowadays, we are facing a great problem. Just. Uh, in last week we are we were facing the problems of floods and again coronial that pandemic corona is again going on sir so all this happening because of the global warming effect so that's why i have chosen sir so here the average global temperature had increased day by day at the fastest rate in recorded history and uh, all those things happening due to the green house effect so actually green house effect is a screen acha ha is a warming of climate that results when the atmosphere traps its heats radiating from the earth towards the space certain gases in the atmosphere responsible gloss in a green house allowing sunlight to pass into the green house but blocking or heat from escaping into the space so that's again the problem create of the green house effect the green uh, idea of green house effect has come to know since 1824 uh, a scientist joseph furier said that earth would be much older if it had no atmosphere this natural green house effect kept earth climate livable if there is no green house then certainly it would have been like a venus planet it would be very cold and uh, there would be uh, there no uh, there uh, would not be livable or no any human beings so that is important when it is in limit if nowadays what happening day by day we are increasing the temperature and that problem is creating now so rapid rising greenhouse gases is the great problem because climate is changing very fast in greenland if you take example of that greenland and uh, antarctica ice sheets are melting fastly extra water from the same can raise sea level these are the uh, effect perhaps 2050 sea level will be uh, will rise up to 1 to 2 feet more so it would be again uh, very much a disaster for you harmful for you uh, for us so no doubt human activity raises the temperature but some natural activities such as volcanic eruption i mean uh, as a man is uh, responsible for that but some natural calamities also responsible to increase the temperature no doubt human activity raises the temperature but some natural activities such as volcanic eruption variation in solar radiation from sun spot solar solar wind and earth's position relative to the sun also play the role in increasing temperature so here volcanic eruption emits particles when it uh, takes place volcanic eruption that temporary cool our surface but their effect lasts just few years even like il nano also works on fairly sharp and contributed to ice ages occurs on the cycle of hundreds of thousands of years burning of fuels to make electricity in the largest source of heat trapping pollution coal burning power plants are by far the biggest polluter the country's second largest source of carbon dioxide pollution is the transportation sector so curbing dangerous climate change uh, require very deep cut in emissions as well as alternative to fossil fuels in some extent we have started the turn around co2 emission which are decreased from 2005 to 2014 because of new energy efficient technology and use of cleaner fuels 
scientists are trying to develop new ways to modernize power plant generate cleaner electricity and burn less gasoline while we drive actually just before uh, uh, two weeks uh, ago our uh, central minister nitin uh, nitin uh, gadkari has started e vehicle service and the intention is behind uh, that only the we have to just curtail or minimize the uh, green gas of green house effect so that's why this is an uh, important steps that we have taken nowadays and this is the only solution another will uh, 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 organization generally i uh, uh, take here for an example an international environmental treaty unfcc it's uh, stand for united nation framework convention on climate change was formed in 1992 it's a uh, intention just to stabilize greenhouse gas concentration in the atmosphere at level that would prevent dangerous anthropogenic interferences and another uh, actually i mean in uh, 2015 the paris agreement was also adopted governing emission reduction from the from 2020 to through commitments of countries in re, uh, nationally determined contribution with a view to lower the target of just we have to achieve that target 1.5 degrees celsius of the greenhouse effect the paris agreement enter into force on 4th november 2016 that uh, is an agreement within unfcc unfcc dealing with greenhouse gas emission and then mitigation then adaptations and finance these are the objective which uh, was uh, in front of that uh, uh, treaty that was the paris agreement so steps have been taken that uh, started to implement again the cof 25 is the 21st conference of the parties both parties cof on climate change sponsored by the un it serves as a formal meeting of un fcc then uh, according to world meteorological organization wmo greenhouse gas concentration in atmosphere have uh, increased to record level during the 2015 to 2019 we show sea level rise and ice loss so it makes uh, a greater again great problem for us then so here i i have detected here some natural disasters occur in environment due to global warming Be because of uh, that uh, global warming melting glacier early snow melt and severe droughts will cause more dramatic water shortage and increase the risk of wildfire some somewhere we find uh, drought somewhere we find uh, flooding as in last week we have experience that of the in the raigad and sangli district so this happens generally because of that the rising sea level will leads to coastal flooding yes it's happening nowadays again forest farms and cities will face trouble some new parts heat waves heavy downpours and increased flooding all those factors will damage the dis, uh, uh, damage or destroy agriculture and fishing so its affects on both then disruptions of habitats such as coral reefs and meadows could drive many plant and animal species to the extinction so that is the problem again in the biological area also so species are going uh, going to extinct allergies asthma and infection disease outbreaks will become more common due to increase growth of pollen producing ragweed higher levels of air pollution and the spread of condition favorable to the pathogen and mosquitoes although it is a, a fact that uh, it is not a, uh, i mean there is not no uh, proper evidences regarding the uh, corona virus but uh, we may say confirmly that it is because of climate change yet it is not uh, confirmed but we can't say confirmly but because of climate change i mean uh, most of the peoples are dying so because of that corona and this is also a climatic change uh, examples of the climatic change another uh, problem sea level here i can uh, state from 19, uh, 2014 to 19 Rate of global mean sea level rise. Please conclude your presentation. Murkute sir, due to time limit. Time is over. Please conclude okay, your okay, presentation. Right. Okay. So uh, again, the wildfire-like problem, sea level. So most of the problems are there. We are facing. Then there are many uh, travel trans. Gases are there. Travel transportation, industrialization, then deforestation. Uh, then so uh, here. in two lines i i i will conclude 
so global warming is becoming a great problem for us it has been increasing continuously day by day uh, about 0.8 degree celsius temperature in average in getting rise annually the rate of co2 no2 and methane uh, which are being released to atmosphere really very hazardous to human being so to mitigate all these gases capturing and sequestration methods must be applied some clean development mechanism must be developed to promote greenhouse gas emission reduction in developing world development side by side environmental enrichment should be our agenda this is the time for each and every country to go a step ahead to revise their policies regarding the environmental imbalances development in all departments of the country and protections of our environment should go hand in hand okay thank you sir okay okay now the presentation is open for discussion please ask any questions participant are requested ask if any questions sir please uh, we have because of the time constraint we will skip over the questions hour okay okay madam continue please the next uh, presenter i would like to invite sanjay patil sir to start his presentation please share his ppt good afternoon and a very warm welcome to this technical session of international aid conference we have the chairperson honorable dr m subhash sir principal janta college chandrapur like that we have honorable eminent paleo botanist dr dk kapgade sir kaningo sir my name is mr sanjay patil assistant professor at department of botany dr ambedkar college chandrapur and my topic name is a further contribution to the knowledge of sahani pushpam flower from the new locality of deccan intertropian beds of pudial modap chandrapur district maharashtra india next next please next slide please so we are not able to see the slide okay now right it's okay i have the two other honorable dr rajesh daigavkar sir principal and head department of botany dr ambedkar college chandrapur and mr sudhakar d petkar sir head department of botany anand niketan college varra chandrapur introduction the present specimen incorporate the detailed morphological and anatomical description of monocotyledonous flower from the deccan intertropian bed of pudial mohda taluka jyoti district chandrapur maharashtra india now the material and method the material was very well preserved in the black chard collected from the deccan intertropian bed of pudial mohda then uh, it was uh, i break that uh, chart then uh, found the material then peel it and uh, made the slides and uh, prepare the slide it with the canada balsam and study it its morphological and anatomical detail i use sony camera and capture pro 4.6 exc software for photography and measurement of material now the description the flower is sessile e bracted ectomorphic monoclamadus septate ovary with pelted stigma it has flower which is actinomorphic bisexual it has a length of 2.5 mm and width of 2.09 mm it has a perianth which is tubular monoclamadus quadrangular then androsium are found in weakly preserved condition it has two stamen with anther and filament are seen at one side of flower beside the stigma then anther one anther is large and another one is small then gynosium ovary singing carpus singing carpus commonly tricarpellate three ovules at upper end and three ovules at lower end of the ovary then ovary is superior it has a size of 1.65 mm 
6.5 mm long and 1.95 mm diameter then uh, next next slide is then it has a style which is stout thick and measures about uh, 5.8 mm and length of 1.19 mm then it has a stigma which is umbrella, umbrella shaped next then discussion and identification the following important character are considered for identification of flower the flower is sessile ebracted actinomorphic monoclamidous it has a period which is tubular the globus lysigenous cavities are found on the epidermal wall of the perianth two stamens with anther and filament are seen at one side of flower beside the stigma one anther is large and other one is small in size anther is elongated dumbbell shaped structure these are the discussion and identification then i compare it with fossil flower it is compared with a sani pushpam which was described by shukla 1950 and sani pushpam shukla it was well described by dr kapgate sir uh, it was uh, in a uh, 2011 2011 ngs and it has the same character that than that of flower but it is from a new locality and it shows some differences from that that is it has three oval styles without stylar canal and only two stamens are present so i use uh that uh, flower then i compare it with modern families it compare with family arc which has similar character that's why thus in the light of comparison with fossil and living genera the families it become evident that the flower belong to sani pushpam shukla 1950 and modern fam family arc with some minor differences hence it is named as sani pushpam pudialai sp anov the generic name is after sani pushpam shukla 1950 and spe specific name is after the locality from where it was collected then its diagnosis showing same character and these are the next next these are the slides showing the details of that flower then next slide the flower which is in uh, 20x total flower then perianth in 40x then a perianth with lysonous genus cavity 40x ovary wall with oil cell 80x then ovary wall receptacle all this detail next these are the references thank you okay thank you very much now now the paper is for open for discussion any question any question please ask any question sir go okay, for thank you paper. there is a no question in chat box okay the next presenter I would like to invite Dr. T. Navneeta Madam to start her presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Please okay, share, please madam, share my PPT. Please share my PPT. My title is uh, Green Marketing and its effect on customer satisfaction, with reference to four-piece approach. So actually, uh, nowadays, so business yeah, strategies. Please, please uh, nowadays, business, sta business strategies are changing regularly without much concern for the money which is invested in doing that, in, in doing it. So most of the companies. so they need new strategies to get success and attract the market so in this concern 
So in the market, a new concept called as green marketing came into existence. So it deals with producing the products without harming the environment. So consumers, so they too, they are expecting uh, products that are good for their health as well as to the society. So here, the concept of green marketing, it is also called as environmental marketing. So it is also called as uh, ecological marketing. So it deals with marketing of products so that are presumed to be environmentally safe. So here, um, in this green marketing, so especially, so there is a term called as marketing mix, so which consists of four P's. So uh, let us see what are those four P's, that price, product, place, and promotion. So the first P, that is green product. So this green product, it deals with producing so energy me, efficient, water Excuse efficient, me. low hazardous emission Excuse products. me, ma'am. So, Your PPT is visible to us. Yes. If you have to, uh, uh, if you want a next slide, then you should okay. tell me the next. Okay, okay, right. You are not able to see the uh, screen. So my PPT is not visible, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Can you give permission to share my screen, sir? No, no we are, are, are. Can you display my PPT? Ma'am, no, ma'am, no, we are, ma we are uh, I, sharing your able. PPT. Yes. We are sharing your PPT. Yes, we are yes. able to right. see your PPT. Okay, now it is visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is so go to slide, carry back on, slide. So here, green product. So four piece. So in that, the first piece, green product. Green product it deals with producing energy efficient, water efficient, low hazardous emission products. So it includes uh, producing safe and healthy products so that are often recyclable uh, to the manufacturers. And green price. So green price it deals with uh, providing additional income or discounts or offers or rebates to the customers who are using or showing preference towards purchase of green products. Whereas green place, it deals with managing logistics. So that decreases transportation emissions and that reduces carbon emission in order to protect the planet. Green promotion, it deals with providing advertisements and using marketing materials in order to safeguard the environment from hazardous effluents. Next slide. So research methodology. So here, uh, coming to the objectives of the study, so the first objective is to know the relationship between green marketing and marketing mix elements. And second objective is to analyze the influence of green marketing on customer satisfaction. Next. So in research methodology, so here, uh, I have used primary data, especially with the help of a structured questionnaire. And here the sample is 108. And I have, I have used four hypotheses. So first hypothesis is green product has negative effect on customer satisfaction. Second one is green price have negative effect on customer satisfaction. Third one is place. And fourth one related to promotion. Next, next slide. Coming to the data analysis, I have done reliability test. So here I have used uh, a few questions in the questionnaire. So I have tested that whether all the questions are reliable or not for the further study. So here, whatever the questions I have used for the study, they said that, so by, with the help of this Cronbrax Alpha, so it showed that, so it revealed that 0.947%, so the questionnaire is reliable. It means that 94.7%, all my questions are reliable for the further study. Next slide. So here I have used simple correlation test. So this simple correlation test, it said that, so I use a correlation test uh, to analyze the relationship between green marketing and customer satisfaction. So it revealed that green marketing and customer satisfaction have positive association. So therefore, so it is very clear that, so green marketing is going to influence the customer satisfaction. Next, next slide. So here, I used chi-square test to analyze all the assumptions, uh, especially 
so from from this table it is very clear that so green product so it is having uh, it, it is showing positive effect on customer satisfaction so the chi square value for the green product is 16.70 and the uh, degree of freedom so the significant value it is going to specify that so p value it is equal to 0.010 so which is going to which is always less than 0.05 so which says that so green products are showing positive effect on customer satisfaction next slide so green price so green price so it is concluded that so green price is having negative effect on uh, negative effect on customer satisfaction so why green price is having negative effect on customer satisfaction so here the uh, the value so p value so it is 0.1187 so the p value is greater than 0.05 so it, it says that so there is negative association between green price and customer satisfaction so it it reveals that so even though the price of the product is very high so if it is green product so customers are ready to buy and they will, they will be satisfied next third important thing is so green place so green place so it shows that so the probability value so the significant value is 0.018 so it reveals that p value is less than 0.05 so it means that green place shows positive effect on customer satisfaction next slide so here the last thing is related to green promotion so green promotion it also reveals that there is positive effect on customer satisfaction so and finally i conclude that green marketing it is entirely a new concept so which is unknown to many of us even in the society being as an educated person so here so people they are ready to buy environmentally friendly friendly products so even especially women so they are ready to purchase uh, the products so that are hazardous free so that are environmentally safe so that's why this green products so they are very important and they are making an important role in the society so that is about my presentation thank you for giving me uh, time okay. uh, any any questions i request all the participants any questions please ask sir there is a no question in ch chat box okay okay, okay. i thank all the presenter for their excellent presentation looking forward to your active participation in our upcoming events once again thank you thank you very much i would request to chairman of this technical session honorable dr m subhas sir principal janta mahavidyalay chandrapur please conclude this session okay. thank you so much madam first of all uh, i'm very happy that uh, ambedkar uh, college chandrapur is organizing an uh, international seminar on interdisciplinary innovation and socio economic environment and biodiversity and the conser conservation through the sustainable development uh, 2020-21 and uh, i'm very happy that uh, ambedkar college is given opportunity Uh, for conducting the as a uh, i think as a chairman for the technical session 7 and uh, have they are given four papers for me and uh, first of all the mr ajay murkute is uh, explained and the paper presentation given on a uh, uh, global warming and environmental uh, imbalance very good paper and he explained very nice and uh, this paper may be helpful for the society and second uh, another paper is namita madam uh, she is topic is uh, green marketing and uh, its effects on the customers satisfaction with uh, reference to the 4.4 ps approaches and well uh, this paper is also very nice and uh, in, during this uh, presentation we are not able to see the Uh, with the uh, uh, monitor, and even though they have listened that uh, audio and uh, very excellent work she did, uh, and uh, this paper also helpful for the uh, society. Another paper is uh, Mr. 
संजय पाटील संजय पाटील राजेश देवगावकर सर अँड शेतकर सर अँड दे आर प्रेझेंटेड द पेपर ऑन ए फर्दर कंट्रीब्युशन टू द नॉलेज अँड संचिन पुष्पम फ्लॉवर फ्रॉम द न्यू लोकॅलिटी ऑफ द डक्कन एंटरप्रेन बेट्स ऑफ पंडियल मंडा ऑफ चंद्रपूर डिस्ट्रिक्ट महाराष्ट्र अँड दिस पेपर ऑल्सो इज व्हेरी नाईस अँड अनदर पेपर वॉज द Uh, by the sangeeta madam and the paper was uh, the study of the algae used and uh, bioindicator determine the water quality of varga river with uh, reference to the environmental pollution from the rajura of chandrapur district all the papers are very nice uh, presented and uh, i think uh, being a zoology subject i'm not able Uh, to discuss regarding the uh, botany and uh, yeah, i am very thankful uh, to dr daigokar uh, sir for uh, giving the opportunity uh, for the chairman uh, as a chairman uh, for this session and uh, really the from morning i am seeing this uh, seminar the uh, workshop and i am very happy that uh, we are organized very nice and uh, good hospitality for all the participants thank you so much thank you sir on behalf of organizing committee of this international conference i thanks chairman honorable dr m subhas sir thanks to all participation participant for attending e paper presentation session that to all the people who help directly and indirectly to make this session successfully thank you thank you thank you so much now i hand over mic to dr dm pimpal shinde sir physics department for valedictory functions thank you madam good afternoon one and all thank you for all your active participation in this e conference dear friends the last but not the least the part of the function is the valedictory function once again i welcome you all in this conference for this valedictory function for this valedictory function i would like to call honorable rahul ghotekar member of dr baba saheb ambedkar memorial society chandrapur on the dais to preside over the function i request him he will arrive soon in the hall the next guest of this chief guest of this function is dr sriram kaude pro vice chancellor and dean faculties of humanities gondwana university gadchiroli i request him to join virtually online for this function डॉक्टर श्रीराम कावडे सर आय ऑल्सो रिक्वेस्ट द गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर ऑनरेबल श्री अशोक घोटेकर वाईस प्रेसिडेंट डॉक्टर बाबासाहेब आंबेडकर मेमोरियल सोसायटी चंद्रपुर टू ऑक्युपाय दि सीट ऑन द डायस अशोकजी घोटेकर सर थँक्यू आय ऑल्सो रिक्वेस्ट द अनदर गेस्ट ऑफ ऑनर डॉक्टर सुनील साकोरे सर डीन फॅकल्टी ऑफ इंटर डिसिप्लिनरी स्टडीज गोंडवाना युनिव्हर्सिटी गडचिरोली टू जॉईन विथ अस ऑनलाईन ही विल जॉईन ऑनलाईन आय रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर राजेश दैगावकर सर अवर रिस्पेक्टेड प्रिन्सिपल अँड कन्व्हिनर ऑफ दिस इ कॉन्फरन्स टू ऑक्युपाय दिस सीट ऑन द डायस थँक्यू सर 
I also request Dr. Amlut Lange, sir, organizing secretary of this e-conference to occupy this seat on the dais. Dr. Lange, thank you all and I welcome all of you on this dais. Now it's a part of welcome the dignitaries on the dais. I also request the vice principal of this institute, Dr. Sanjay Bele, sir, to come on the dais and occupy his seat on the dais. Dr. Sanjay Bele, sir. Thank you, sir. Now it's a part of welcome the dignitaries on the dais. I request Dr. Rajesh Daigaukar, sir, to welcome the president of this function. Honorable Advocate Rahul Gotegar, sir, he has to come. He will arrive soon. Sir, will welcome after his arrival. I request Dr. Amrut Lange, sir, organizing secretary of this e-conference, to welcome the guest of honor, Honorable Sri Ashok Gotekar, the Vice President of this Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Memorial Society, Chandrapur. <laughs> Dr. Lange, sir, will welcome the guest of honor, Sri Ashok Ji Gotekar. Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Bina Moon, madam, to welcome our respected principal, Dr. Rajesh Daigaukar, sir, by offering a bouquet. Dr. Bina Moon will welcome Dr. Rajesh Daigaukar, sir. Thank you, ma'am. I request Dr. Mrudula Raipure, madam, to welcome the organizing secretary, Dr. Amrut Lange, sir, by offering a bouquet. Raipure, madam, will welcome Dr. Amrut Lange, sir. I request Professor Bhalachandra Atkulwar, sir, to welcome our Vice Principal, Dr. Sanjay Bele, sir. Atkulwar, sir, will welcome Dr. Bele, sir. Thank you, sir. With over of this welcome, to know about the functioning of this e-conference that we had today, I would like to request a few of the participants to give the feedback about this e-conference from the participants. As Dr. Puranik has raised his hand in a chat box, I request Dr. Puranik to give the feedback about this e-conference. Dr. Puranik, now another participant, the Sudhakar Petkar sir, he will express his views about this conference. As there is no any participants, anybody else from the available participants in the hall, I request. I request Kapgate, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. To give feedback about this e conference. Hello. 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 
हेलो हेलो शकुप्ता शेख मैडम इज देयर फॉर दी फीडबैक प्लीज Uh, I am very happy, sir, that I am a part of this conference. Fantastic conference! Please. Thank you so much for all your thoughtful yes, and respectful Yes, madam. Please share your video. Please on your video. Not possible. Share your your views with video. Hey, can you can you share? Not possible, sir. Video. वीडियो पॉसिबल नहीं हो रहा है सर ओके ओके कंटिन्यू मैडम ओके ओके थैंक यू सो मच सर दैट आई एम अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस कॉलेज एंड आई एम अ पार्टिसिपेंट इन दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस सो दिस इज फैंटास्टिक कॉन्फ्रेंस थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ऑल योर थॉटफुल एंड इफेक्टिव ऑर्गेनाइजेशन आई एम ऑलवेज इंप्रेस विद द कमिटमेंट एंड एफिशिएंसी ऑफ दिस हो प्लान दिस कॉन्फ्रेंस आई रियली एंजॉयड सर आई एम लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू द नेक्स्ट ईयर कॉन्फ्रेंस Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Puranik sir is there to express his views about this conference. Please join, sir. Puranik. So there is. No any participants sir, here like to express my feedback, sir. Yes. Ha, Manik sir. Yes, sir. Ha. Yes, chairman of this valedictory function, Dr. Gotekar sir, our principal Rajesh Daigavkar sir, Dr. Kapgate sir, all the resource persons and the participants who have joined in this virtual platform. Right from the morning, I have been here. and i am very happy that this particular conference on virtual platform has been organized very graciously and very timely there was no any time gap and every event every uh, participation was very good and uh, it has given me an opportunity to hear from the giant personalities academicians like mohbe sir and uh, manohar acharya sir dr bonde and uh, dr steven manchester who has worked on the indian flora so it has been a very uh, good feast academic feast i must say to all us all of us that this particular conference has been organized on the e platform i am really thankful to rajesh daigavkar sir and his team for organize such a beautiful conference even in these uh, constraints he has uh, taken every effort to give his a uh, uh, full concentration on the organization of this conference i am very much thankful and i am very much uh, i congratulate uh, dr dehgaukar sir dr kapgate sir uh, the members of the society for giving such an opportunity and for organizing such a beautiful conference thank you thank you very much sir thank you sir here on the dais dr kadbak kapgate sir is there i request our respected principal dr rajesh daigavkar sir to welcome dr kapgate sir by presenting a bouquet thank you sir to show our appreciation and gratitude it's our tradition to felicitate our distinguished guest by presenting the memento as a token of love i request our principal dr rajesh daigavkar sir to felicitate the guest of honor honorable sri ashok gotekar sir vice president dr baba saheb ambedkar memorial society chandrapur by presenting a memento as a token of love डॉक्टर दैगोकर सर विल फेलिसिटेट द ऑनरेबल श्री अशोक गोटेकर सर द वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ दिस
So the president of this function is arriving here. Please welcome by clapping, Dr. Advocate Rahul Gotekar, sir. The president of this function is arrived here. I welcome Advocate Rahul Gotekar, sir. As the president of this function has arrived here, I request Dr. Rajesh Daigaukar, sir, to welcome the president of the function, Advocate Rahul Gotekar, sir. Thank you, sir. I request Dr. Kapgate, sir, to express his views about this e-conference in a few words. Dr. Kapgate, sir. Thank you for giving me a chance to express my views. Organizing, organizing and conference is a great job. First thing is that the, it should be a, a, from the basic that it should be a, a global idea. And uh, uh, today, really, I am so enjoyed because after my retirement, I just two or three years, I am just attending a, such a, a valuable and good conference. I am really express my gratitude to the chairman of this uh, society who is having that the patron under that the able team under that principal Dr. Daigauka sir and his temple. It is so hard work from yesterday. I came yesterday and see today. I was thinking to go back at two or three o'clock, but Due to you only, I stay here and uh, seen that that the, the topic is a very so nice. We have that the I think 600 participants jai by that the YouTube and many a expert dignitaries starting from that the past time that paleo biodiversity including Dr. Manchester, to that the present day forward. There is a need. If you, in our, uh, that uh, geological scale, there is a one clock of 12 hours, starting from midnight to again that come to that the midnight. What happens that this Earth planet is just separate from that sun, it was so hot, and from midnight to 10 o'clock, that cooling effect is there. And uh, the first genome of you may call it as the simple unicellular bacteria come on that, the earth. And uh, at that time there was no oxygen. The oxygen was released by that, the uh, bacteria, and uh, from simple to complex, the biodiversity is increased. It is so fast. And uh, this happens from 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, that just a unicellular uh, microbacteria, and then the simple to complex, and 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 59 minutes, and only one minute was there. And in that one minute, 30 seconds also left, and only 30 seconds was there. And for that 30 seconds, the man is come up, the human being is come up. And he is responsible for destroying that, the nature of biodiversity. And that's why now it is necessary to that conserve that biodiversity. So there, there should be a, awareness so that the public awareness 
educational awareness, academic awareness is done by Dr. Daigaukar and he, in this that the many new ideas have come regarding that the biodiversity. Then in uh, Manchester, uh, that in his speech, he told India is the only, what is now you are finding all these vegetations. See that the origin of that vegetations, that from angiosperms, that is from this India. He told the grapes, Daksasi family, the, that was that, he was regarding that it was from that, the Brazil and Europe. But when he came here, he visited Sandrapur and MP and other, and he, he mentioned that it is not from that Africa and Europe, but India is the origin of the species. So such a huge work is there, and uh, other countries uh, are there. Now you have, you have seen that in his lecture, that Patan, Devi Patan, I visited her so many times, then Puriya Mauda. So here that the many specimens are that now the reported, they are dipped, uh, deposited in that the Florida Museum and the world scientists are working on there. So I am so glad that Dr. Daigauga and his student Patil Sanjay Patil is working on this. So this work is going on. So such a nice work is there. So lastly, I am again thankful to all of you, give me a chance to express my eyes. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. I request Honorable Sri Ashok Ghotekar, sir, to say a few words about this conference. Honorable Ashok Ghotekar, sir. तथागत बुद्ध अनि परम पूज्य डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अंबेडकर या महान विभूतिन्ना या इंटरनेशनल ई कॉन्फ्रेंस या निमित्त ने अपना सर्व विद्वान आचार समूह या महामानवना नमन करूं अनि आमचाया डॉक्टर अमेरिकर कला वाणिज्य व विज्ञान महाविद्यालय चंद्रपुर जी दिशा भूमि चा परिसर मध्य आहे त्या परिसरातील या महाविद्यालय मध्ये या महाविद्यालय चे प्राचार्य डॉक्टर राजेश दहेगाव का सर हे मागिल एक वर्षा पासना या इंटरनेशनल ई कॉन्फ्रेंस चा प्रयत्ना मध्य होते या कॉन्फ्रेंस साथी तन्नी या महाविद्यालय अत्ला अशा चांगला प्राध्यापकान्ना सोबत घ्यून हे कॉन्फ्रेंस आज खरे अर्थाने यशस्वी केला है साध्या एखाद्या कार्यक्रमा मधे आयोगाची किती धड़पल होते 
ते आपल्या सर्वांना माहीत आहे आणि एवढ्या मोठ्या या इंटरनॅशनल लेवलच्या कॉन्फरन्सला त्यांनी किती प्रयत्न केला असावा ते आपण समजून घेऊ शकतो या कॉन्फरन्सच्या निमित्ताने ते आता सांगत होते देशभराचे अनेक विद्वत या जिल्ह्याचे या शहराचे या देशाचे अनेक विद्वत प्राध्यापक त्यांनी आपलं रिसर्च पाठवलं त्यांना सुद्धा या निमित्ताने संधी मिळाली आणि अशी ही संधी उपलब्ध करून देण्याचं काम आमच्या महाविद्यालयाचे धळाडीचे प्राचार्य डॉक्टर राजेश दहेगावकर सरांनी हमखास करून घेतलं याकरता त्यांना आमच्या संस्थेचे सन्माननीय अध्यक्ष एकंदरीत संस्थेंनी त्यांना बळ दिलं त्यांना उत्साहित केलं आणि अशा कार्यासाठी आमचे सन्माननीय अध्यक्ष साहेब हे अतिशय म्हणजे ते काम करायला मान्यता देतातच त्यांनी दिलं मान्यता दिली आणि प्राचार्य साहेबांनी हा कार्यक्रम यशस्वीपणे घडवून आणला मी माझ्या वतीनेही त्यांचं खरंच तरी मनापासून अभिनंदन करतो त्यांच्या टीमचं अभिनंदन करतो आणि अशाच प्रकारचे कार्यक्रम त्यांनी पुढे भविष्यामध्ये आयोजित करावं त्यामुळे शहरातच नाही महाविद्यालयातच नाही तर प्रत्येकांना ती संधी मिळते नाव होतं महाविद्यालयाचंही नाव होतं संस्थेचंही नाव होतं आणि तुमच्या विद्वत्तेला चालनासुद्धा मिळते मी पुनश्च त्यांना एकदा धन्यवाद देतो आणि आजचा विषय या विषयाच्या निमित्ताने दोन शब्द मी बोलू इच्छितो वातावरण पर्यावरण बोलावं यासाठी वाटत आहे की माणसांनी निसर्गाशी भयानक अशी छेडखाणी केलेली आहे आणि त्याचा विपर्यास त्याचा परिणाम संपूर्ण जग भोगत आहे कोविड नाईन्टीन अजूनपर्यंत गेलेलं नाही आहे त्याचा प्रादुर्भाव अजूनही आहे कायम आहे आणि हे कशासाठी झालं हे का झालं निसर्गाने एक प्रकारचा मानवाला दणका दिला आहे त्यांना सूचित केलं आहे की तुम्ही निसर्गाशी छेडखाणी करू नका तुम्ही आपली विद्वत्ता परिपूर्णपणे निसर्गाशी एकरूप होऊन निसर्गाशी सानिध्य साधून जे काही करता येऊ शकतं ते निसर्गाला अनुसरून करा तुम्ही निसर्गाच्या विरोधात काही गेलेत तर आज आपल्याला तो परिणाम दिसतो आहे आणि निसर्गाशी प्रत्येकाने प्रेमच केलं पाहिजे 
आज जगभर तथागत तथागत बुद्धांच नाव आहे तर सर्वप्रथम ती व्यक्ती तीच व्यक्ती आहे ज्यांनी निसर्गाला ओळखलं निसर्ग म्हणजे काय निसर्ग म्हणजे सत्य संपूर्ण जगात असलेलं सत्य त्या सत्याचा शोध तथागत बुद्धाने घेतला आणि आपण पाहतो तथागत बुद्ध कधीही असे एकटे आपल्याला दिसत नाहीत ते निसर्गाच्या सानिध्यात दिसतात त्यांनी बुद्धत्व प्राप्त केलं ते सुद्धा निसर्गाच्या सानिध्यामध्येच केलं म्हणजे त्यांना निसर्गाचा महिमा माहीत होता त्यांनी ते ओळखलं होतं आज आपण पर्यावरण 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 म्हणतो पर्यावरण हे निसर्गाच्या छेडखानीमुळे त्या पर्यावरणाची निर्मिती झाली असं मी स्पष्ट म्हणेन पर्यावरण व्हायची काही गरजच नव्हती निसर्गाशी तुम्ही एकरूप असते असाल असता तर असं वेगळं काही घडायची गरजच नव्हती पण मानवाने भयानक असं छेडखानी निसर्गाशी केली आणि त्याचा परिणाम आता मानवच भोगत आहे या निमित्ताने या कॉन्फरन्स मध्ये सहभागी होणाऱ्या सर्व विद्वत लोकांना एक सूचित करू इच्छितो की त्यांनी निसर्गाशी प्रेम करावं सुखद असं वातावरण निर्माण करासाठी आपल्या विद्वत्तेचा बुद्धीचा वापर करावा एवढाच या ठिकाणी संदेश देतो इथे थांबतो सर्वांना सासने जयभीम करतो आणि शेवटी जाताना पुन्हा आमच्या प्राचार्याचं आणि टीमचं धन्यवाद करतो धन्यवाद Thank you, sir, for your valuable speech. Now it's a time to felicitate our president of this function. I request respected principal, sir, Dr. Rajesh Daigavkar, to felicitate the president of this function, Advocate Rahul Gotekar, by presenting a moment to Dr. Rajesh Daigavkar, sir. will felicitate the president of this function advocate rahul gotekar sir thank you sir now i request honorable advocate rahul gotekar sir to deliver the presidential speech एडवोकेट राहुल गोटेकर सर थैंक यू सो मच फॉर गिविंग मी दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी टू शेयर सम वर्ड्स विथ यू a very good evening to all the dignitaries as well as all the eminent speakers who are present online as well as offline for this inter one day international e conference on the topic of interdisciplinary innovations in socio economic environment biodiversity conver conservation through sustainable development i really appreciate the great team work which the institute has shown in conducting this one day international e conference this seminar it is really a proud moment for every one of us because the year 
is the golden jubilee year for this institute. And on the occasion, on the eve of this golden year, this international e-conference, basically this conference was supposed to be held in the month of February and March. But just because of the reason of, as we have all faced it, the reason of Corona, COVID-19, this conference is now being held offline and online in this month. When we talk about biodiversity, when we talk about sustainable development, we all are aware, we all know, because since childhood, we have heard these terminologies. What is biodiversity? Biodiversity is an amalgamation of two terms, basic two terms, that is biology and diversity. Now this biological diversity is, what is biological then? Biological in concludes, includes everything. It includes all the species from genes to environment. It's environmental processes. Everything is included. All the plants, animals, microorganisms are included in biodiversity. And this is called ecosystem. All the eminent speakers, like I just got the list of all who were online and offline present for this international e-conference, I would rather, with all due respect, take their names and read out. The chairperson of this international e-conference, Honorable Shri Arun Ghotekar, sir, who is the president of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Memorial Society, Diksha Bhumi Chandrapur. The inaugurator of this one day international e-conference, Dr. Shri Nivasa Varkheri, sir, who is the vice chancellor of Gondwana University. Then the keynote addresses, the key speaker of the second session, who were Dr. Steve Manchester, the curator of Museum of National History, University of Florida, USA. And for the third session, the technical session, Dr. Ashwin Kumar Srivastava, who is the retired scientist of G. Birla Sahani Institute, Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. Technical session two, the speaker, Dr. Asha Gupta, professor in charge, Life Science Department, Manipur University. Then chairman, Dr. Nikhil Kangao, sir, from Chindwada, Madhya Pradesh. The speaker, the eminent speaker of session three, technical session three, Professor Manora Chari, Chairman Dr. D.K. Kap uh, Kapgati, sir, who literally showered his knowledge on all of us some few moments ago. I really thank you, sir, for sharing your knowledge with us, sir. Then the eminent speaker and the chairman of uh, technical session four, Dr. Bonde, Dr. Manik, session five, Dr. Dhananjay, sir, Dr. Sushma Borkar, and now we are here on this farewell session, which is called a valedictory session of this One Day International League Conference. It's really a privilege. We have heard like our forefathers, they were in harmony with the nature. पहले होता था ना कि एक बार्टर सिस्टम होता था एक हाथ से देना दूसरी चीज एक चीज देना दूसरी चीज लेना तो अवर फोर फादर्स यूज टू डू इट इवन विद द नेचर अगर वो नेचर से कुछ लेते थे तो उनको वापस देना भी जानते थे बट जैसे जैसे टेक्नोलॉजिकल जैसे जैसे इंडस्ट्रियल एडवांसमेंट होता गया इंसान पैसे कमाने के पीछे इतना भागता गया कि वो नेचर के साथ खेलना शुरू कर दिया दे स्टार्टेड प्लेइंग दे स्टार्टेड स्क्वीजिंग द नेचर फॉर जस्ट देयर पर्सनल बेनिफिट्स एंड आई पर्सनली फील सो कि जब कोविड 19 शुरू हुआ था तो इट वाज जस्ट नोन दैट इट केम फ्रॉम अ बैट अगर वो कॉन्सेप्शन को और परसेप्शन को अगर हम सही भी मानते हैं तो ये उसका ही नतीजा है कि हम नेचर के साथ खेल रहे हैं वी आर प्लेइंग विद द नेचर वी आर स्क्वीजिंग इट फॉर अवर पर्सनल बेनिफिट्स विच इज Ethically, which is morally wrong. Our forefathers said that what nature can give us, it can't give us another one. We have to believe that principle. Now the education level, now our upgradation level has increased so much. It's increasing, it has increased with a tremendous speed. 
we are are we are all technologically advanced people now we are all educated people now but i feel education your knowledge is not at all powerful unless it is applied and this is the right time to apply our knowledge right time to apply our knowledge in all spheres to conserve the biodiversity to conserve the ecosystem all ecological processes क्योंकि होगा क्या अगर इसी तरह से हम इस नेचर को इस एनवायरनमेंट को इस इकोसिस्टम को अगर एक्सप्लॉयट करते गए तो वो दिन ज्यादा दूर नहीं कि जिस तरीके से अभी हम मास्क हमारे चेहरे पे परमानेंटली बांध रहे हैं ना ऐसे मास्क कहाँ कहाँ लग जाएंगे हम बता नहीं सकते और ऐसे मास्क जब लगेंगे तो अभी तो हम कम से कम कुछ देर के लिए सांस लेने के लिए मास्क निकाल सक रहे हैं ना वो मास्क ऐसा रहेगा कि उसमें ही हमको आर्टिफिशियल ऑक्सीजन लेना पड़ेगा है ना तो हम ये हम ह्यूमंस जो सेल्फिश नेचर है हमारा उसको कहीं ना कहीं हम अवॉइड कर सकते हैं एक छोटी सी शुरुआत तो हम आज से ही कर सकते हैं वी कैन स्टार्ट इट फ्रॉम द डे टुडे इट सेल्फ कि जब हम हाथ भी धोते हैं हमारे घर में तो एक हाथ में जब अभी तो सबने कहा है कि कोरोना सीजन है तो वॉश योर हैंड्स रेगुलरली फोर्टी सेकेंड्स तक हाथ धोना है पर वो जो फोर्टी सेकेंड्स हम हाथ मलने के लिए लेते हैं ना उस टाइम पर हमारा टैप वाटर शुरू ही रहता है हम ये छोटी छोटी चीजों में ही कंट्रोल करके ऐसे हम पानी बचाकर इस नेचर की हम कहीं ना कहीं सेवा कर सकते हैं क्योंकि नेचर ने नेचुरल रिसोर्स के माध्यम से इट हैज गिवन अस सो मच वी जस्ट कैन नॉट इवन इमेजिन वी जस्ट कैन नॉट इवन थिंक व्हाट नेचर हैज गिवन अस वी कैन नॉट पे इट बैक बट एटलीस्ट वी कैन कंजर्व इट वी कैन प्रिजर्व इट फॉर अवर नियर फ्यूचर हमारा जो नॉलेज है हमारा जो एजुकेशन है कम से कम इस इस बेस पर तो भी हमने अभी अपने आप में एक अवेयरनेस लाना बहुत ज़रूरी है मैं जानता हूँ कि व्हाट इज़ बायोडाइवर्सिटी व्हाट इज़ बायोडाइवर्सिटी कंजर्वेशन व्हाट इज़ इकोसिस्टम व्हाट इज़ सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट इस टॉपिक्स पे तो हमारे जितने भी एमिनेंट स्पीकर्स उनको हम कितना भी थैंक करेंगे तो वह कम है क्योंकि उन्होंने इस बारे में हमको इतना एनलाइटन कर दिया है अभी तक इस सेशन में कि आई फील सो दिस इज़ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट एनर्जेटिक दिस इज़ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट पावरफुल सेशन ई कॉन्फ्रेंस सेशन विच इज़ बींग कंडक्टेड बाई दिस ग्रेट honorable dr baba saheb ambedkar college of arts commerce and science and which was definitely being very much cooperated by dr baba saheb ambedkar memorial society diksha bhumi chandrapur so i feel so now we should make a pledge that we should also take some initiative we should also take some steps to conserve the nature to conserve our biodiversity to protect our ecosystem i know you have been waiting for this farewell session since so long you are here since 9:30 in the morning i know it and i would i won't take much of your time and i would like to stop here but before i stop i have quoted certain lines the lines which i like the most that i'll just read it out for you all that education is not the name of any degree or any certificate which can be shown to others as a proof but education is the name of our attitude our actions our language and our behavior towards others in the real life so now we all being because this conference was basically like we all people gathered over here are i guess all our phd holders all our professors all our assistant professors so we all educated and knowledgeable people should take a pledge that we will take from this time we would take some steps to conserve the nature to preserve the nature of our biodiversity i won't take much of your time and i would rather stop here thank you so much for bearing with me thank you thank you sir for your boosting speech we will definitely boosted by your speech now we are the last part of this function of this conference but which is important part of this function the vote of thanks i request dr amrut lanje sir the organizing secretary of this e conference to propose a vote of thanks dr amrut lanje sir first of all i pay my homage to lord buddha 
and our inspiration, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. Good evening to one and all present here. Honorable Chairperson, Advocate Raul Ghotekar. Honorable Chief Guest, Dr. Siram Kavade. Pro Vice Chancellor, Gondwana University, Gatsurili. The Guest of Honor, Honorable Mr. Asokji Ghotekar. Vice President, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, Memorial Society, Chandrapur. Dr. Sunil Sakure, Dean, Faculty of Interdisciplinary Studies, Gondwana University, Gatsuri. Honorable Principal, Dr. Rajesh Daigaukar. And by luck, we have one eminent scientist, Dr. Dasarath Kabgate, J.M. Kautil Garis Bhandara, and Dr. Kanungo, Chinwara MP. Also, we have with us Dr. Sanjay Bele, Vice Principal of this institution. Resource persons, distinguished academician, scholars, and all the participants of this international who are linked with us offline as well as online. First of all, I extend my heartiest gratitude to all of you for being the part of this conference. It gives me a great pleasure to announce that this conference has been organized to mark the Golden Jubilee celebration of our institute. As all of you know, this conference was scheduled last year in the month of March, but due to COVID-19 pandemic restrictions, we could not conduct it. I express my apology for the inconvenience caused to you, but throughout the year, we were in touch with all the participants and committed to organize this conference. All the participants responded very positively, and because of their wholehearted support and cooperation, we could conduct this conference. Over 400 participants have been registered for this conference, and about 200 researchers have been sent their research papers. I expect such a huge response in our upcoming events also. The theme of this e-conference, Interdisciplinary Innovations in Socio-Economic Environment, Biodiversity, Conservation through Sustainable Development is a very relevant in today's rapidly changing climatic conditions and social patterns. Our Chandrapur district, one of the most polluted cities in India, but at the same time, Chandrapur and adjoining Garchurili district are full of biodiversity and natural resources. Keeping this in view, the conference will prove to be a milestone for sustainable development of biodiversity. I am sure that this conference has helped in providing a platform for academician, research scholars, and students from all over India and abroad to exchange their thoughts, ideas, and emerging issues in socio-economic environment. On the behalf of organizing committee, I extend my thankfulness to all the dignitaries, keynote speaker, invited resource person, 
chairperson of the technical session, international, national and local advisory committees members and all the participants who have joined us from different part of the country. I express my gratitude to Honorable Arunji Gotekar, President Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Memorial Society Chandrapur for his financial assistance and motivation. I am also very much thankful to our principal and the convener of this conference who was the driving force behind us all. I would also like to thank to our sponsors for their contribution. I am deeply thankful to all the members of organizing committee, joint organizing committee for their consistency and hard work to conduct this event successfully. I extend my special thanks to technical support team and Rajni Publication Napur for timely for for the timely compilation of the conference proceedings. Last but not least, I thank all the teaching and non-teaching staff members of this college and all those who are directly, indirectly involved to make this conference successful. And very, very specially, I thanks to Mr. B.V. Atkular, sir, who is, who is with me from last 15 days from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and supported me for success for the successful of this conference. Finally, I thanks to all. Thank you once again, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We all made this conference, e-conference, the grand successful. We will conclude the e-conference function with the national anthem. I request you all to please stand up at your own place for the national anthem. Attention, please. I request the technical assist to play the national anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Utkala Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Utchala Jaladhita Ranga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Aashish Maage Gahe Tava Jaya Gaga Jana Gana Mangala Daayak Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Thank you. Thank you all dignitaries on the dais and so uh, here after this the feedback link will be sent on the group or on email for all the participants and all participants are requested to give the feedback on this link. <laughs>